The bright moon illuminated the beautiful snow-white palace. A voice announced, Enter Mr. Felix and Lady Claudia Chamberlain. Some guests were indifferent to the appearance of the couple. One of the girls extended her hand, whispering to the arriving lady. She listened to her attentively. Claudia, now you have to choose. The white-haired lady with blue eyes did not understand what was being discussed. The chestnut-haired interlocutor added, The groom, of course. Claudia still didn't understand, asking with interest. Why? If you don't choose, these three men will kidnap you and lock you up. But how can I say that? There are reasons for everything. First, please hear me out. The first is the crown prince, who will take the place of the ruler of the L'Occitane Empire. If you choose Lucas Darian, you will become the mother of the empire. It was obvious that this man was not Claudia's favorite. The interlocutor looked at the lady in bewilderment, mentally calling out to her, His Highness the Duke is also a good option. Carlisle is a city of chaos, known for all sorts of crimes. They say that all power there is in the hands of Benjamin Lemberg, and he is in charge of everything. In wealth and influence, you are not inferior even to the crown princess. It would be more correct to hear the girl's own opinion about who she belongs to, Claudia said with displeasure. I'm not interested in criminals. Her interlocutor was even more stunned, mentally screaming. Then, how do you like the hero of the empire, the holy knight Constantine? After the reform, even clergy can marry. The man with long blue hair said, I think you've already heard the answer. A priest who dedicated his life to God renounced his faith and got married. What outdated views? Choose, I tell you. Suddenly Claudia became serious and said, I didn't want to say it, but I'm going to spend my whole life with Irene. Everyone present immediately froze in place, looking at the girl. The words they had just spoken echoed in their heads. Their faces were full of shock and incomprehension. They did not want to believe what they heard. The girl, whose name was Irene Amber, was the most shocked of all. Real name, Kim Hee Soo. A year ago, I moved into a fantasy novel. No matter how you look at it, I seduced the main character. By the way, this novel is a drama filled with cruelty. Kim Hee Soo had the ability to attract people to her. However, it only applied to women of the same sex. That's why Irene was surrounded by only girls. She had a novella that she loved from school, namely, a flower growing on a withered branch. Briefly, Sarav. However, it is known for more than just being a violent drama, but also like a book that you just have to open and you can't help but read it to the end. However, this does not mean that I want to be reborn as the hero of a novel and live in it. Irene, being the eldest daughter of the debt-ridden Viscounty of Amber. In Sarava, she became the heroine's friend and then got into an accident and died. If I want to survive, I need to avoid the main character. However, when the Viscountcy of Amber was almost buried under a pile of debt, Claudia became my light. She found me and saved me. It was only because of our friendship that she fully repaid her debts and I made the decision to remain a doormat for Claudia for the rest of my life. And now the three candidates were recovering from the shocking news. Claudia, isn't it dangerous to say that you won't get married? The girl asked again with a naive expression on her face. Why? Irene screamed desperately in her head. For my life! Your mouth is now triangular in shape, like a chipmunk's. While Claudia was squeezing Irene, she screamed, Focus already! By the way, I found a dress in the Karandi boutique that would suit Irene perfectly, the white-haired girl said and I want to give it to you. You will accept it from me, won't you? Irene is so kind to me. I will survive only if you link your life with one of them. But why do you always cling to me? Do you want me to accept my fate and die according to my role? Despite everything, Claudia continued to squeeze Irene's cheeks. The crown prince said angrily, Do you want to spend your whole life with this? I hope I heard you wrong, Claudia. Otherwise, I won't be able to resist it, so as not to break the neck of your small and fragile bride. Suddenly, he extended his hand to the deathly frightened Irene. However, his hand did not reach its target. A slap was heard. Claudia screamed, Don't touch her, your highness. I will not sit idly by, even if the crown prince is in front of me. I dare say you have some rather unusual preferences. After all, she almost became my slave as a loan for a debt. The white-haired girl screamed, Are you threatening Irene now? Benjamin replied, And you are clever. Is this the power of love? Suddenly, Irene felt a pressing aura behind her. She turned around and froze in another surge of fear. If you use force correctly, you can even kill a person. The girl called out to Claudia, who immediately hugged her, protecting her. She said, don't worry, I won't let anyone touch you. I don't understand why you're trying to defend your right to have Claudia. She is not anyone's property. Respect my sister's opinion. Shouldn't we hear what Claudia herself thinks about this? Well, of course, only Irene and my brother respect my opinion. I hate all three of you. Do you think it's enough to say that you like me? Despotic, frightening, and unwilling to take my opinion into account. You are all like savages. 
Only Irene can possess me completely. As Claudia screamed, Irene's spirit was released from her body. Then she demonstratively took her friend's hand. Let's go! What kind of love is this that they all talk about so passionately? Is disrespecting your partner love? It's just a feeling of selfishness and possessiveness. Just the desire to win and get the precious trophy. If only they would stop being greedy and leave me alone. I can never love such people, even if I die, Irene asked carefully. Do you hate them that much? Yes, they are simply disgusting. Each of them disgusts me equally. I give love. How dare you refuse? This is their attitude. Because those three are the main male characters in the novel. I thought she would have to link her life with one of them, knowing full well what kind of people they really are. It turns out that I was going to survive by killing Claudia. I'm sorry I keep making you choose. Irene is not the kind of person who would do something like that without reason. Surely you had your reasons. But if you really feel sorry, let me hug you. Irene smiled, answering, Okay. The joyful aristocrat immediately pounced on her interlocutor. She said, smiling, I really love Irene. Oh my God. Now I've done something disgusting too? I didn't get Irene's permission. What happens now? The stunned brunette asked again, Did you just understand now? Everything is fine, since such a situation required it. Claudia asked again, Can you be my friend for life? Smiling, Irene replied sweetly, with great joy. In her head, she was crying. It seems I am destined to die. Felix Chamberlain, Claudia's only older brother, the eldest son of the noble and influential Chamberlain family, and also the youngest deputy minister of the Ministry of Magic, a genius born with a huge amount of mana and talent. He has a reputation for being a sincere and kind person. And also, like many older brothers, he has a sister complex. You could say he's something like a unicorn, which doesn't exist in reality. Suddenly, Irene ran out into the street, throwing the door open loudly. But why is there a unicorn standing on the porch of our house? While playing with the cat, Felix noticed a girl running out. Sorry, I didn't mean to violate the rules of decency by barging in on you. Frozen, Irene replied. It's okay. Everything is fine. I have a disease. If there is a peer of the opposite sex next to me, my face turns to stone and my speech becomes dry and emotionless. Girls high school, girls high school, girls university. Because of this, men always asked, Are you angry? Is this possible? I don't get angry at beautiful people. There was an awkward pause. Irene realized she had said something stupid. For this, I have to thank my parents who gave me life. These brother and sister are definitely an equal pair. By the way, we haven't seen each other for a long time. Are you still training in magic? The guy thought out loud. Yes, this is resistance magic. In the original story, Felix was the scapegoat. The heroes who wanted to get Claudia when everything was heading towards the climax. Together, they decided to isolate her using the relic, in which is sealed the magic of a demon capable of destroying the world. Felix finds himself at a crossroads between destruction and self-sacrifice. As a result, he took all the power of the ancient demon upon himself. And once in his power, he destroyed the Chamberlain family. After the heroes dealt with Felix, they saved Claudia and pretended to be her saviors. I wanted to prevent this tragedy. Please don't tell anyone and study resistance magic. I could only ask him about it, trying to protect him. However, he happily agreed to fulfill my request. Thank you for pointing out my shortcoming. There is always something to learn. If you think about it, it was pretty rude of me. Irene, what a relief. I didn't mean to wake you while you were sleeping. The girl didn't quite understand why he said this, so she asked again. She screamed. There seems to be a hidden meaning in this. If I'm not mistaken, you recently hired a new servant. Irene replied. What are you trying to say? You keep changing the subject, Felix said. It looks like your maid has been bribed. Did you know that you are poisoned now? The dose has been exceeded, so you will die soon. The girl thought in shock. What does all this mean? Will I die? Then she asked nervously, How much time do I have left? They answered her, A quarter of a day. These madmen have already taken up the matter, but you still have a whole quarter of the day at your disposal. If I hadn't been here, Irene wouldn't be here anymore. The girl was horrified. Could it be that assassins had visited here? He replied, smiling. Stay calm. I've already sent them away, Irene thought. Where did he send me? Although it doesn't matter. I'll die soon. So don't stand so far away and come closer. I will heal you. What? You can heal? Why did you scare me then? The girl took a couple of steps, saying, Thank you for your help. You are too far away. I can heal if I can touch with my hand. Irene took a few more uncertain steps. Oh, really? Felix took the girl by the hand, saying, I understand. Chloe is the same way. She also gets upset when I look down on her. She was beautiful since childhood, so she was kidnapped several times. When people saw her, they began to fall in love with her and court her. If this was not enough for them, they resorted to force and power. 
I usually figured things out on my own when I encountered something like this. I still told Chloe that I would sort things out and she had nothing to worry about, Irene asked. And then because of me, everything fell apart? No. I should have told Chloe not to hold back. It's my fault. However, she has changed too. Thanks to the fact that she stayed by your side. The girl was surprised. I thought I was already dead to society. Chloe seems happy now. I haven't seen her so radiant since she was a child. There, it's done. Does anything hurt? Irene thanked the guy. He added, You are also completely defenseless. I am worried. I think I understand why Chloe was in such a hurry to bring you here, Felix said in a more questioning tone. Because you're cute? By the way, would you allow me to kidnap you, Lady Irene? A little later, Claudia flew up to Irene, hugging her. I've already heard the news. Those worthless rogues have already started to act. They dared to get to my Irene. I will find them right now. I'll twist every bone of theirs in the opposite direction. They have lost the last of their common sense. We need to deal with them. Chloe, maybe you should first console Irene, who is in trouble. The sister shuddered, speaking worriedly. Exactly! What is it, I? She ran up to her friend again. Were you very scared? I became an enemy to many and expected this. But it all happened so quickly. Well, don't say that. It's not your fault at all. They are the only ones to blame here. I am busy enjoying life. Therefore, there is no need to waste feelings on unworthy people. Then she turned happily to Claudia. Let's have some fun together? The girl immediately rejoiced, grabbing her friend's hand. I want to show you something. Come with me. The brunette was glad that she was able to calm her friend down. Felix watched as the two girls left the room smiling. Claudia immediately led Irene to the palace's ceremonial hall. There the servants were already hard at work, preparing food and drinks. In the middle of the hall, there was a huge carousel with horses. Shock washed over the brunette. She asked, what is this? A beaming Chloe said, gifts for Irene. She thought in shock. I have been shown such great mercy. Suddenly the white-haired girl said, don't like it? Is something missing? Irene answered, too much even. Claudia did not back down. I also prepared a separate dressing room. Maybe we should start with it? Wouldn't the best solution be to make a river with an artificial waterfall and put a boat in the center? Felix was thinking too seriously. It looks beautiful, but it's a hassle. It was necessary to build tracks for trains to run on. First, you need to order a high-speed train that runs on magic. While the brother and sister were solving this problem, Irene was confused. She couldn't stand it any longer and shouted, Stop! I don't dislike it at all! While the girl was thanking Claudia, she interrupted her. Did you know? I actually know almost nothing about you, Irene. You know so much about me, but you tell me nothing about yourself. The white-haired girl whined. I also want to know what you like. For a second, Irene thought about what would be the best answer. My best companion in life is money. I love it. There are separate stomachs for food and snacks. I like to eat too. And I like beautiful people, even just looking at their faces. I also love to have fun and get together with friends. And I love toys, sleeping hugging something soft. And as a child, I dreamed of becoming a lazy person with a lot of money. Then she thought with disappointment. Failure, I told everything, Chloe said. Why were you worried? I don't need anything as long as you're around, Rin asked. And isn't it scary that I'm a lazy person who wastes money? What kind of lazy bones are you? It's enough for me that you're nearby. And since I'm a beauty with a lot of money, am I your ideal type? Is there any need for these words? Of course you are right. Claudia asked, When will you stop addressing me so dryly? Rin hugged the girl, screaming, Chloe, you're the best! Nice things are valuable simply because they exist. In the evening, Rin was talking on the phone. She was asked, Are you staying? She answered, Yes, perhaps for the rest of her life. A question was heard, Sister, how old are you to run away from home? This is not an escape. I am simply leaving the estate and saying goodbye to it forever, brother said. She interrupts nonsense. Do you think you are the center of the universe? How did you even manage to get into the Chamberlain house? Although I assume so, Rin said proudly. It's all because I'm cute, the guy asked. I thought you were weird, but when did you become so crazy? Our father is the one who is abnormal. He sold our family as collateral. Since this is the case, I will take advantage of this to sever all ties. You too come after graduation. You can even stay here to live. Felix also says that he is always glad to see people like you, brother answered. In general, my sister is capable. I'll call again later. After hanging up, Rin turned to Felix. Have you gone to bed yet? I was reading a book. And who were you just talking to? Irene answered awkwardly, looking at the guy. With Liam, Felix thought for a moment, then said, Liam is the younger brother then? Yes, he is quite energetic and brave. By the way, do you have any business with me? I'm talking about resistance magic. 
you don't have to worry. Let me get down to business. May I ask why you asked me to do this? You won't believe it, but a year ago I saw a similar prophecy. I really didn't expect that. But if I were you, I would do the same. They sat down on the sofa. The guy said, A small sacrifice for a big goal? Since you say it like that, it sounds absolutely grandiose. Would you do it even if no one remembered your sacrifice? Even if not only your achievements, but your whole life are distorted? He agreed. Rin asked again, Even if your choice will hurt Chloe? Felix had already decided to think seriously about these words. Even if I have to make a sacrifice, I hope she will live her life for me. I knew it. That's why I asked you to do resistance magic. The demon's power will not disappear because I am able to resist it. Irene froze in shock and asked again, What? It won't disappear? How could I, having read Sarav more than twenty times, have missed this? If you have resistance, you can neutralize the spells. However, demons divide and move their soul when they carve out their power. After accepting it, even with resistance, the demon will half take over your body. Rin grabbed her dress and asked, What should we do then? It depends on the demon's strength, but they have one thing in common. Upon hearing about this trait, Irene was shocked and confused, and it consists in the fact that they do not restrain their desires at all. Rin expected something more terrifying when she asked, Is that all? Felix answered casually, But they are still dangerous. Rin asked again, Desires, then? What kind of desires? Depends on the artifact, so even I don't know about it yet. After all, desires are embedded in their essence. They do not restrain instincts. An aura of misunderstanding hung over the two of them. Too complicated. Suddenly she remembered her desires. Wasn't I also possessed by a demon? But surely all people experience something like this at least once. The desires of humans and the desires of demons are very different. Because demons can kill a person simply on impulse, Rin asked. Compared to those three, the demon's desires are stronger? The guy hesitated. Irene pressed. Could it be even worse? Haven't they themselves been consumed by evil demons long ago? Although I understand what you are trying to tell me. Irene decided to clarify. No, it seems you don't understand at all. Why do you think I told you all this? I came to prevent a tragedy, in which Felix will stand up to everyone alone and die. I don't want you to be the one who sacrifices yourself and dies. If you become a demon, I will hold you in my arms until the end. Would you like to listen to me with such determination? The guy said, I think I understand why God showed you the prophecy. The surprised girl asked, Do you really believe me? Felix replied, smiling. I believe you, because you are Irene. That's why I don't want anyone to hurt you even more. Demons awaken all the most secret desires of people. Rin clarified. So you want me to get hurt? The man answered in a gentle tone. Yes, something like that. So I ask you to let me go when my time comes. And I would appreciate it if you could ease up on your hand. The girl refused with displeasure, squeezing his hand tighter. She glared at Felix, asking, Do you think I'll let you go? I will find a way for all three of us to be happy, so don't go. Yours seemed to mean that you wanted to make fun of me? The guy got a little nervous. You're not far from the truth. Don't hold back. You can just get rid of the desire, right? Looking at the trembling girl, the man answered, It's complicated. Irene screamed, Why, just go ahead and do it! Felix said sternly, Don't provoke me or I'll get angry. Then he smiled. I will try my best too, Rin asked suspiciously. And what will you try to do? If I continue to hold back somehow, will it work? The girl said discontentedly. How many more times do I have to repeat myself? If you hold back. But she didn't finish, seeing Felix's hand. In one fell swoop, he grabbed Rin and placed her on his lap. Irene, don't worry about anything and just rest. She said in shock. I am grateful to you, but my neck hurts. Too high and hard. The guy perked up. I apologize. However, the girl continued to lie on his lap. Why doesn't he do anything? Is he planning to mock me like this? It was uncomfortable at first, but thanks to Felix's pats, it went away. I soon fell asleep. He's always caring and accommodating. But looking back, in the end, everything turns out the way he wants again. While I was sleeping, you two were doing something. This is too much. A confused Irene noticed Claudia crying. When she realized what Chloe had said, she immediately went into shock. She started crying again. I want to be Rin's pillow too. I can give my head at any time. Felix's knees hurt. It hurts, then. It's a shame to hear that, because you slept so well. Suddenly, Claudia asked, Brother, aren't you working? The sun has just risen. It's too early for work. What about your lessons? Today there will be only day shifts. Deputy, come to work. He replied, Even if the deputy is late, no one will blame him. Of course, unlike Chloe, who skipped class yesterday. If you don't study, Irene will be disappointed in you. He stroked his sister's head, saying, See you, then. What kind of man is he? He just went and put all the blame on me. Rin said, 
I like people who work hard. Irene, you know I'm not that kind of person? She agreed. I will try, so please don't hate me. Even if I die and come back to life, I will never hate you. The girls grabbed each other's hands, looking into each other's eyes. Suddenly, a man's cough was heard behind her. Rin flinched. Chloe asked, Father? When did you come? He answered. Long before you. Really? I didn't know you were here. You could have at least given a sign that you were here. Hugo replied with a sigh. Your brother said the same thing. He put his finger to his lips and hissed, afraid that someone would wake up. Suddenly he tried to address Irene, but he couldn't find the right word. She said, speak, he said. Let's talk alone. Is it really time? A conversation with the man who stole the heart of a son and daughter. Having entered the office, the girl immediately apologized. The man asked again, for taking away your only precious daughter? And lately there have been a lot of bad rumors about Claudia. Lady, you don't need to apologize for this. Rather, I should thank you. Besides, she was so happy that she didn't have to go to that boring evening. It doesn't matter what others say as long as my child smiles. Then what was it that you wanted to talk about in private? The fact is that His Highness the Crown Prince is looking for Claudia. I refused him, coming up with different excuses, but I was already at my limit. Maybe he doesn't want to be human anymore, but rather rages like an animal. It's clear from whom she inherited this manner of speech. In short, I can no longer resist His Highness. I understand. So first of all, we need to calm him down? Yes, please. Chloe is simple and innocent, so she acts first. And then he thinks. That's why I wanted to talk to you alone, Irene screamed. Of course I will definitely protect your daughter, Hugo asked incredulously. Protect? Who? The lady? Just watch her closely and stop her if she tries to get out. If you think about it, it's stifling to be stuck in the estate all the time. I was careless. I didn't know Rin wanted to go out. What would you like to try? I'll buy whatever you say, Rin screamed, taken aback by this statement. Really? And then he said to the waiter. Then from here to here, the man asked again in shock, not believing his ears. Up to here? Irene replied. Bring it all. I can, right? This is my longtime dream. Smiling naively, Claudia said happily. Of course you can. Suddenly, Rin's eyes widened. What's wrong with the price? Don't you like that everything here is too cheap? The prices here are so high that they give me goosebumps. Don't worry. This is a great place. Order whatever you want. Then I need to prepare my heart a little for joy. A voice was heard. They say she rejected those outstanding people. The rumors are true. That lady? I thought she was a maid. I thought about what kind of person the one who would win her heart would be like. But Viscountess Irene Amber is very, very popular. She herself knows very well that she is worth nothing on the marriage market. With nothing but debts to her name, is there any other way out? The only way to survive is to get your hands on Lady Chamberlain. No matter how much she liked her friend, how could she disgrace those gentlemen? For some time the phrase she is no one's property was popular. If I heard such words from them, I could not dream of anything more. Suddenly, Claudia turned to the waiter. It's noisy here. I would like to enjoy everything alone with my companion. The guy bowed and replied. Forgive me, but I ask for your understanding. Chloe stated, no. Can I rent this place for the day? The guy replied in shock. Only those who booked in advance. Then I'll buy the whole cafe. How much will be enough? Why did you stop me? You didn't manage to do what you wanted. Irene tried to calm her down. We can just go to the boutique. Can you tell me? Buy everything I looked at earlier? How sweet. Maybe we should go get something to eat then. Rin already had some options. A few minutes later, Claudia handed her friend some cotton candy. Taking a bite, Irene said, It's so delicious it just melts in your mouth. A voice was heard. Is this a human or an angel? Maybe a fairy? The plump, staggering man added, It's blinding. He didn't calm down. Even your scared face is cute? However, the aristocrat only asked gloomily, What business do you have with me? Let's take a closer look at the young lady's face, and not at the little things. What? It feels like there's a shield between Chloe and me. The girl said, My face is really beautiful, but there is only one person in this world for whom I can look beautiful. Irene was taken aback by Claudia's behavior. It boded ill. Listen, madam, you express yourself in a rather rude manner. Do you even realize how much trauma you're causing people with your mug? Do you think you're the only one who can look at beautiful things? Suddenly, a man passing by heard a familiar voice. If Rin is an underdeveloped little thing, then you are just an ordinary old man. How shameless. Who do you think you're talking to? Do you think you can get away with anything just because I called you pretty a couple of times? What Irene feared so much could happen now. The man had already reached out his hand towards Claudia to grab her. Suddenly, Lucas, who was passing by, immediately reacted to this. The drunkard's hand was too close to the girl, but she didn't even flinch. 
Not daring to hesitate, Klaus reached for his sword, shouting at the girl. Suddenly the guy froze, and the man was surrounded by a dozen people in cloaks. Their faces were hidden by hoods and masks. The drunkard immediately felt uneasy. He was dumbfoundedly coming up with a plan of retreat in his head. Deciding to simply run away, he failed. He was captured. Several men tied him up while shouting, Have mercy! Looking at the girls, the old man screamed desperately, asking for help. Klaus, watching from the side, asked himself, Is it all over? Then Claudia noticed Klaus looking at them awkwardly. The irritated girl asked loudly, And who is this? The shocked guy didn't expect to hear this instead of a name. Chloe asked again, Why is it here? Rin answered, Who knows? Suddenly Irene smiled, thinking, Everything is going according to plan. What should I do to get those three to leave Chloe alone? I spent several days thinking and finally remembered. In parts where the main character should appear, you are completely unnecessary. I'll make them realize their uselessness. That's a great idea. Why are you here? I was passing by and couldn't believe my eyes. It didn't bother him at all. That slow-witted, impudent fellow. Chloe crossed her arms and replied, I didn't believe it either. Klaus asked, Where have you been hiding all this time? I almost sent a search party into Chamberlain's estate. She replied, I had a wonderful time with my friend, and you can't do that without a good reason. Lucas chuckled, Well, who would dare to stop me? It's also your fault, because you ignored my calls. Both girls frowned, thinking the same thing. They wanted to punch him. I don't know why a man who has a fiancé would want to look for me. You ask because you really don't know? I love you. I told you that I only have feelings for you. This is not a joke or a whim, and the bride is just a cover. My love is sincere. Loving someone is not a crime. Irene blushed. How shameful. Stop it quickly. I'm having a hard time. What is this if not love? You've changed, Claudia. He glared at Rin. Did she change because of you? What have you done to my lovely and beloved Claudia? Chloe frowned, trying to protect her dear friend. However, Rin interrupted her. He asked me, so I have to answer, Irene stated. Chloe hasn't changed. She's just found her true self. Klaus chuckled as he replied. What nonsense are you talking about? What does the Chloe you know look like? The girl who closed her heart from wounds? What? Everyone loves and respects her. So where would the wounds come from? She was always pure and innocent, and she never contradicted me, Rin replied. You don't like the brave Chloe who found happiness anymore? Then it means that you love someone else, not her. Are you saying that I never loved Claudia? Don't tell me. If you want to win Chloe's heart, you have to do things her way. Why would I do that? Rin thought. I want to punch him. Because people who love more are always losers. The displeased crown prince merely waved his hand with a displeased laugh. Claudia, if you want something, just tell me. There is something. I want you to never look for me. Not understanding anything, Klaus looked at the girl with displeasure. Then his eyes blazed with anger and he growled. Irene Amber, I committed a mortal sin. I dared to tell the crown prince everything directly. You're being overly kind to Rin. If this conversation is over, can we leave? Chloe said. Okay, that's fine. But where did those people come from? Irene happily announced. I hired them. You didn't know? It's great when you can defend yourself. Claudia agreed. Maybe we should learn self-defense then. Rin quickly answered. No, I don't see the need for that. For the sake of a pleasant walk, you can go everywhere with security. Suddenly, Rin turned around, thinking, You got screwed, Lucas. The crown prince watched them go, not wanting to leave the spot. Meanwhile, the laughing girls went on to have more fun. At home, Chloe said, Damn, is the country's Foundation Day celebration coming up soon? Families who receive territories from the emperor are required to participate. The Chamberlain family is wealthy, so their presence is a must. There is a law in the empire. You cannot build an estate larger than the imperial palace. The first head of the Chamberlain family did not know how to manage wealth. Therefore, he built several buildings slightly smaller than the imperial one. He also managed a hotel, which was also a little smaller. Therefore, it is impossible to refuse to participate. Irene thought about it. How to get rid of the crown prince? The girl immediately darkened. Suddenly, the maid called out to her. You have a call for Mr. Liam! Rin immediately got up from the sofa and headed towards the phone. There was a click as the receiver was picked up. The girl put it to her ear. A happy Irene asked. Hello? Did something happen? Liam said in a hurry. Sister, don't be scared and listen carefully. What did you say? Our family was invited to the ball too? I thought it was someone's joke, but I checked everything, and these are real invitations. What kind of intrigue is he weaving? Okay, I get it. See you later. Is he going to take action to deal with me? Do you think I'll give up so easily? I'll make you admit defeat. When night fell, Irene made her way into the ceremonial hall. Putting on a hooded cape, she walked inside. She looked around carefully. 
There's no one here, is there? Suddenly she heard her name and shuddered with fright. The girl pressed herself against the door, slowly recovering from her panic. If you go to bed earlier, you will be able to grow even more. He can't be serious, can he? My growth has already stopped. Felix came close to the girl and asked, What happened? He smiled widely, waiting for an answer from the frozen girl. Seeing the guy's cute face, Rin opened her mouth and stared at him. Then she slammed it shut with her hands, realizing what she looked like. Do you have an artifact that can transport me to another place? Teleportation magic cannot be carved on artifacts. If you set the coordinates incorrectly, you will end up in a void and fall. In the worst case, the body part will not follow the magic. If the coordinates are not determined accurately, you can get stuck in the wall. I think it would be better to go by carriage. A carriage is the best transport. Felix replied, If you need to go somewhere, I'll take you there. Don't. It's not advisable for anyone to find out about this place. If I come with an escort, the meeting may not take place. The guy asked with genuine interest. Meetings with a man? Irene flinched at the question, but answered, with a woman. Hearing the answer, Felix once again beamed his signature smile. He thought out loud. He felt limited. Then he asked the girl a question. Then what about security? Rin asked again, ruining the man's plans. Will you guard me? I will be extremely careful and will be back very quickly, I promise. The girl extended her little finger for a promise, but Felix did not react. He was completely confused because he could do nothing. Suddenly, he reached into his bosom, saying, Then take it. He handed Irene a purple stone. She asked, What is it? A gem that will let me know your location. If something happens to you, I won't be able to forgive myself. Irene squeezed the stone in her hands and smiled. Thank you, Felix. There are only two secret organizations in the Lakatane Empire. The City of Chaos, led by Benjamin, Carlyle, and also the group that collects information, Salentium. Unlike Carlyle, which is known as a dark place, Salentium is very good at keeping other people's secrets. Nobody knows for sure about its existence, so there are many theories. But this doesn't concern me, because I have read the novel many times. Before meeting Claudia, I searched everywhere to survive. Knowing the content of the novel, I decided to sell the information. I also bought information that was not in it. I made the most of my unique features and charm. Irene had already noticed a familiar woman at the bar. The girl smiled and cried out joyfully. Martina. In the end, I charmed the most important person in Salentium. Seeing an old acquaintance, the woman said, Irene, come here. Not daring to hesitate, the girl ran up to the blonde and hugged her. Rin decided to return the compliment right away. Did you change your lipstick color? The woman smiled and appreciated the gesture, saying, That's right, from the new collection, the brunette said in delight. She suits you perfectly. Cutie, it seems like your cheeks have gotten plumper since we last saw each other, Martina added, squeezing Rin but I have something to touch. Sit down and have a glass with me. Why do you call so rarely? There are just a lot of people who threaten my life. Because you are the girl of the beautiful flower of society, Claudia? Because such an important person gives me so much love. The crown prince and I almost got into a fight in the market square. I don't think I can come to your funeral. Shall we say goodbye now? Irene frowned, not appreciating the joke. Are you kidding me now? Martina laughed, answering calmly. I'm quite serious. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to help you this time. Rin sighed. Yes, I understand. I still have a conscience. I'll just say one thing. Recently, the Duke of Lemberg came to see me, and it just so happened that he was very interested in you. Since Sarav is a drama, there are a lot of villains in it. Martina is one of them. She fell in love with Benjamin at first sight, and she helped him in every way. To put it bluntly, she found herself trapped, and she had to provide him with whatever he demanded. After all, the power of information sometimes exceeds physical strength. I took action before Martina fell for his tricks and won. Due to an unhappy childhood, Martina experienced hardship and loneliness. She carefully hid her weaknesses and remained alone. I just listened to the lonely girl and expressed sympathy. Apparently, you can reach anyone with sincerity. You are the first person who listened to me so attentively. I only came to see her occasionally, but she was always nice. Surprised, Irene asked, what information about me were they asking? Very personal and insignificant. What I like and what I don't, hobbies and all sorts of little things. And that's it? You didn't notice anything else strange about him? He clearly has ulterior motives. He pisses the hell off of me. Martina reached out to touch Rin's cheeks again. Why are you so happy? Sometimes you treat me like a precious child. I wonder if I would feel the same way if my mother was out of her mind. Suddenly the blonde asked, So what business do you have with me? You know that I received an invitation to a ball at the palace? Martina said mockingly. You mean your new grave? Irene replied whiningly, Although you are right, this is too much. She cleared her throat and said, Well, I need some information. 
What, in my words, is the basis of negotiations? If you want to get something, you have to give something in return. And as usual, I will reciprocally share information with you. The woman was pleased with her friend's answer and agreed. The next day, two girls went to a clothing store. Chloe, how long are you going to choose? I'm tired. Everything suits Rin, so I just can't decide. Aren't you being too zealous in choosing my dress? Not at all, Irene thought. And she chose her dress in a second. While Rin was lying on the couch, Chloe and the saleswoman were carrying a bunch of things. At this rate, it will take all day. Why dress me up at all? This won't do. I need to use my power. She spoke. Whatever I wear, it looks good on me. The saleswoman, hearing these words, immediately turned around questioningly. This is the very model that will perfectly complement any outfit. Irene glanced lazily at the girl, seeking support. Right? She looked in shock at the ordinary and unremarkable Irene. The brunette glared angrily at the saleswoman. Tell me quickly that I'm right. However, despite her pleas, the woman only turned her head away. A person who works for money is so useless. Suddenly a familiar voice was heard. You are absolutely right. No matter what clothes Rin wears, she will always look cute. That's why Claudia can't make up her mind. I got bored and decided to come, but it seems I was a bit hasty, Irene said to herself in shock. Why is Felix here? Not at all, Felix. You're just in time. Please calm Chloe down. He replied that he understood, but continued to stare at the brunette. Then he straightened up abruptly and walked confidently towards his sister. The guy took the first dress he saw. Chloe, how do you like this? It's peach colored. Rin looks better in apricot or coral. I asked you to calm her down. What kind of debate are they having? But Irene, anything is fine, am I right? Indeed. Was she ever not beautiful? By the way, the little details in the dress my brother chose are very detailed. Whose design is this? The seller said uncertainly. Mine? Claudia immediately declared, to the woman's delight, I will pay you a bonus. Lady Amber suits different shades, so Peach would also be a great choice. The brother and sister immediately beamed. The girl asked, Isn't that true? Resigned to her fate, Rin said, They can't be stopped. The very evening of the celebration in the Imperial Palace arrived. A rich carriage arrived at the long red carpet. As soon as the door opened, Felix began to get out of the carriage. The white-haired man immediately offered his hand to his sister. Claudia followed him down in a fluffy white dress. The girl sparkled with her appearance alone. No one could resist her. Then they turned around and called out to Irene in unison. The brunette said uncertainly, I'm not the main character. If you both continue to behave like this, I will become even more worried. Felix replied, We'll be there, so don't worry. Okay, I'll believe you. We're finally at the Imperial Palace. The girl stepped forward, accompanied by her snow-white brother and sister. The guests immediately began to whisper when they saw the new arrivals. Rin clutched her dress in discomfort. Felix rushed to reassure her. Don't listen to them. Their speech is not worthy of your beautiful ears. These people, ugly at heart, live on other people's misfortunes. They will only be happy if you show them that you are having a hard time. Therefore, it is better not to give them extra food for conversation. If you start to match them, you will become the same person. This can't happen. It's simply impossible for Chloe to become disgusting to me. Claudia reached for Irene's cheeks, saying, Well, good. Rin came to her chambers and immediately plopped down on the bed. We came together, so why were we placed in different palaces? The girl lay there, looking at the ceiling with displeasure and a frown. I didn't think that Felix's artifact would still be useful due to anxiety. They said he would tell me their location. They are together now. By the way, I just arrived, but I'm already very tired. Suddenly, someone knocked twice on the door of her room. With interest, Irene opened the door, asking, Who's there? In front of her sat a guy in a black suit and a model pose. The boy looked towards Rin and said, Dear young lady, she froze and replied, It seems you have the wrong room. Knocked on the door, sat down there and started posing. That's very strange. The guy jumped up and said, Not at all. I came to see the lady. I am Arasa Moore. The excited girl answered, I see, and I'm Irene Amber. Arasa smiled as he said, I wanted to tell you something. I thought that precious stones appeared before my eyes. When I first saw your beautiful golden eyes. That's why I decided to ignore propriety and catch up with you. I thought that if I let you go so easily, I would regret it for the rest of my life. You may feel a little awkward hearing these words, but I fell in love with you at first sight. Don't you want to meet me? Irene stood nervously like a pillar, not answering him. Suddenly, a familiar feeling washed over her. And then memories from her past life popped into her head. She immediately sensed something suspicious and said, I don't believe it. Arasa spoke in despair. What? If you doubt my feelings. Sorry, but I only believe in Lord Deseo and follow the state religion. The guy looked at Irene skeptically and asked again, This won't work with him? Then she said, I won't buy it. 
I have no money. I am a beggar. Arasa became even more confused. You have chosen the wrong person. Goodbye. This happened to me quite often in Seoul. However, the guy was not going to give up and stood in front of the girl. I think there was some misunderstanding because I'm really in love with you. I am grateful for your recognition, but I ask you to forgive me. Lady Amber, I understand that my feelings are a burden to you. What the hell? Don't touch me. It hurts and makes me feel uncomfortable. Arasa was at his limit. Won't you give me at least one chance? If you get to know me better, you will immediately change your mind, Irene screamed. The boy loosened his grip, saying, Please, Lady Amber. This madman. She tried to break free, but to no avail. The girl screamed. I said let go. Then I kicked him in the groin. It was a direct hit. The guy's eyes popped out of his head. Irene immediately rushed away from him while he was sitting on his knees. There are all kinds of bastards in the world, honestly. Nothing will happen, will it? It was just self-defense. Rin ran so fast that she didn't notice the person she collided with. However, only the girl fell. She raised her head and apologized. A startled Irene immediately recognized the man. Felix? Not understanding anything, the girl asked a question. Why are you here? I came because I was worried, but it looks like I was in vain. The man immediately extended his hand to her, asking, Are you okay? Rin replied, If you mean the fall, then everything is fine. Looking at her with magic, the guy said. The wrist turned very red, Felix asked with a puzzled expression on his face. Did it hurt? The girl froze in shock. Not really. Wait, did you see everything? I'm not such a cruel person. I wanted to resolve everything peacefully but Sir Moore. I was going to make sure that hand never touched anyone again. It's a shame it all ended. You were very lenient with him. Irene smiled awkwardly, answering uncertainly. Oh, what are you saying? Felix began to list everything he had done to him. By the way, Chloe organized a tea party, let's go together? Irene immediately asked. Will there be grapefruit cake? The man smiled broadly, happily answering, of course. By the way, I can tell Chloe what happened, right? Don't tell. If Chloe finds out, she'll be really worried. After that unpleasant incident, too many men started attacking me. No matter how stupid I was, it was hard not to notice. An exhausted Irene thought, Lucas, you stubborn bastard. Maybe he hired some agency that sends different men to me. But no matter how hard he tries, he can't beat these two. How can the Chamberlains, who were born perfect, be exchanged for this? Why are you acting so unapproachable? How great do you think you are? If you have nothing to brag about, then can't I say that I don't like you? It seems that living with the Chamberlains has given you a high opinion of yourself. But you should always know your place, even someone like you. You are right. I did forget my place, but Chamberlain reminded me of it. They say that I'm a very beautiful, sweet, and lovely girl. Besides, thanks to them, I'm not interested in you at all. Yes, I see you forgot your place, crazy one. How dare you? He was suddenly interrupted by a voice calling loudly for Irene. The rude man quickly turned around, and the girl looked at him in shock. Claudia was walking towards her in a pink dress under a pink umbrella. Having found the one she was looking for, the aristocrat said, I have been looking for you for so long. The dumbfounded boy cried out after him, Lady Chamberlain? I don't know if you remember me. I'm the second son of the county. Chloe ignored him, holding out the flowers. Rin, take these! Surprised, Irene asked without looking at the guy. Flowers? Claudia answered happily. A narwhal for our Rin! They are insanely beautiful. But how did you manage to find Frisius? Chloe replied. I picked them in the greenhouse of the Imperial Palace. What's wrong? His Highness gave me permission to pick them. Chloe walked up to Rin, asking, Why are you blushing so much? The brunette answered awkwardly. It's just a little hot here. The aristocrat said, then let's return quickly. Irene turned her gaze to the guy, awkwardly saying, You see? So you're still here. I thought you'd left a long time ago. Rin, it's hot. Do you mind if we leave? You're done already, right? The confused young man replied, We're still talking. But if because of you our Rin gets sunstroke, then you can take full responsibility? The guy, stunned by such a question, froze and fell into a stupor. God, just look how sweaty you are. Take it. Don't pay attention to him. Let's go to the palace quickly. Irene asked delightedly, did you embroider this pattern yourself? Chloe answered. Yes, how do you like it? Rin asked uncertainly. A spider? Then she noticed Chloe's frown. Apparently not. With shaking hands, she continued to guess. The sun? Claudia was already starting to cry, looking at Rin. Missed again! This time I have to guess. Considering that she gave me a bouquet, Irene shouted. A flower! A delighted Chloe replied. That's right! Guessed it, Rin said. You only think about me. It's so hot today. Maybe we should play in the water? Chloe agreed. Reaching the pool, Chloe said. You suggested playing in the water. 
But that's exactly what we're doing now, isn't it? We're just swimming. Playing in water is supposed to be done at the lake. There are a lot of prying eyes here. Until we get home, make do with the bathroom. You also had a hard time. You were able to curb your character. No matter how much you try to deny it, you are cute not only in my eyes. Not exactly. All these people were sent by His Highness. I didn't think you would be so popular, Irene thought. But no one is interested in me, Chloe asked happily. But I'm still the best, right? Rin immediately responded. No one can compare to Chloe. It's time to play in the water, but it's still cold. Suddenly, Rin had an idea. Chloe, maybe you could fill the bath? The aristocrat asked in surprise. Are you asking me to get some water? Actually, I just wanted to see how you control spirits. I've never seen them before, so I really want to see them. If Irene asks, I just have no choice. Since the Chamberlain family has a natural-born magician, Felix, there must also be a sorceress who can control spirits. Thanks to her enormous power, she can communicate with spirits, but unable to conclude any contract with them. A minute later, Rin looked at the warm water in shock. Claudia spoke up. There was nothing special about it, really. Rin had a different opinion. What are you talking about? Chloe is absolutely stunning. It was because of a small request, so it worked. To borrow abilities of mid-level and above, a contract is required. If you send your wish to the spirit world, some spirit will choose you. Why didn't you send it? You don't hate the idea of becoming a spellcaster, do you? I tried to send it several times, but it all ended in failure. I did everything right, but something was always getting in my way. Irene immediately thought about it. This was definitely his doing. The spirit of lies. Nahilis lies in wait for the wish, preventing it from entering the other world. Spirits in that world feed on emotions, increasing their strength. So they create situations in which they can feel emotions. And if Chloe makes a contract with Nihilis, she will break immediately. But in the original work, the contract was still concluded. Isn't it strange that the perfume Chloe listens to interferes with her desire? I also found it strange, but something bothers me. I can neither see nor hear spirits, so the cause is unknown. When I entered the academy, everyone said that I would be the first in the empire. Who can summon the king of spirits? I have heard this very often. Everyone around me had high hopes for me. But as you can see, they became disappointed and immediately left me, forgetting. I barely managed to graduate from the academy. It was very difficult. Touched, Irene rushed to console Chloe with a hug. I don't care whether you sign a contract or not. The main thing is that you are happy. Claudia was surprised by such frankness from Irene. She hugged the brunette back and smiled and thanked her. It's just that I'm constantly visited by disturbing thoughts. The spirits of the human world definitely love Claudia, but what they do is prevent you from contacting the spirit world. Isn't this how they try to protect you from danger? Even a good angel can become fallen in anger. It can be the same among spirits. Does this mean that a bad fallen spirit has been assigned to me? Rin answered uncertainly. The probability is quite high. That's why I'm worried that something might happen to you. Frightened, Claudia shuddered. What can I do? I've been waiting for these words, my sweet little dear. Only low-level spirits live in the natural realm. This means that a bad spirit is a spirit above the average level. Then you need to make a contract with a high-level spirit. The king of spirits or something similar, so that the evil spirit cannot harm you. If Rin's hypothesis is correct, then in the spirit world, an evil spirit will target me. Irene smiled. There are high-level spirits in the human world, too. Claudia was surprised. What? But this is the first time I've heard about it. It is an independent spirit that does not belong to any of the worlds. Chloe immediately asked, How did Rin know about this? The brunette proudly declared, There is nothing I don't know. These spirits are not limited. Even in the spirit world, a contract can be made. Does this mean that I can also sign a contract with them? Of course. When the celebration of the founding of the country is over, let's ask Felix to go in search of an independent spirit. Thanatos means death in the language of flowers. Rin got one. You rejected the opportunity I gave you. This is your final warning. Irene received this message thinking, there are simply no words. As I said, you can try your best. Although that won't be enough when you have the Chamberlains in front of you. I don't like difficulties, but if it's for those two, for the endless glory of our great L'Occitane Empire, wishing everyone a happy empire-building celebration. Who's been giving a speech for two hours? Isn't he tired of it? Suddenly, a golden dragon began to fly over the heads of the guests. Mesmerized by the dragon's beauty, Irene thought, Is this magic? The fabulous flying beast made sharp turns. Irene was delighted with this beautiful sight. She held out her hand, onto which bright sparkles fell. Chloe, did you see the performance? Wasn't it great? Claudia blinked and began to ask sleepily what had happened. There is nothing more boring and useless than the annual ceremony. There is nothing useless in this world if you are going through difficulties. 
then the thing you love immediately gains value. If you avoid difficulties, even what you enjoy can become a burden. Then Felix turned to his sister. Chloe, can you walk? I'll take her to the palace where we're staying and come back. Irene waved after them, saying, Okay, good luck. She began to fidget, thinking, I need to get to work quickly. Noticing what she needed, Rin thought happily, Found it! The only precious daughter of the defolation family, Erica. I have business with her. I need to follow her. Suddenly, Rin froze, seeing the one who could ruin all the plans. She asked herself, Why is this damn guy here? I'll try to pretend that we don't know each other at all. She tried to slip past the man, but he noticed her. As soon as he saw the girl, he called out to her. I told you to pretend you don't know me, man. My father was even going to sell me. What else does he want to do? Irene, we need to talk. Come here for a minute. I don't know anyone like you. Why are you acting like this? I know you're angry with me, but isn't it time to calm down? Why would I be angry at a stranger? You're a strange person. For a second, the man was angry. A vein jumped up in his temple. Then he calmed down, sighed heavily, and put his hand on his face. Why are you acting like this? Talk to your father somewhere quieter. Why are you interested in the thing you sold, Viscount Amber? Father asked discontentedly. So you are not Amber anymore? Irene replied indifferently. I hope not. Until you get married, this is absolutely impossible. The fact that I am your legal and biological father remains unchanged. This is why he bullied me a year ago. And now again. If you are talking about the law, I have something to tell you too. Who failed to fulfill their legal responsibilities as a parent? And who has raised you so far? You must respond to mercy. The guests immediately began to whisper. It looked like they were arguing. It looks like a father and daughter quarrel. It seems like a serious conflict, Irene asked, displeased but calm. What do you want? Father replied. You have received a marriage proposal. I see. Then let's talk in more detail in a quieter place. Good. It's great that you're so obedient to me. The man smiled and said, I'm doing all this for you. You will live no worse than a princess. Rin turned her head. While her father was speaking, the girl turned her attention back to Erica. Rin tried to smile at her as the man spoke. However, Lady Defolation gave her an indifferent look. Chloe screamed. What happened while I was gone? He will use his power to insist on marriage. Felix asked, Who is the potential spouse? Count Tib. He's twenty years older than Rin. Do such scoundrels really exist? I'm not going to get married anyway, that's okay. I just want to take advantage of the current convenient situation. Claudia thought about it. Will you use it? But how exactly? Chloe's face turned angry. This was the work of that damn dog of a crown prince. Felix immediately said, Don't say such cruel things. Why, what's cruel about that? Are you on his side now? The guy answered with a sweet smile. Dogs are very cute. Chloe corrected herself. Then he's trash, the guy said. Trash can be useful. The aristocrat stood her ground. Non-recyclable waste, Felix replied. If you burn it, it can become fuel. Claudia couldn't take it anymore. Non-recyclable, non-combustible waste. Brother, how can you remain calm in such a situation? The boy thought. Count Tib is a noble count from the kingdom of Crutia. Crutia is located beyond the mainland. You have to get there by ship. Outside the mainland zone, extraterritorial law applies. At sea, I can use magic without the risk of being detected. This means that if someone's body drowns, no one will notice. Felix smiled sweetly as he finished. Well, that's how it is. How about accepting Rin into our family as an adopted daughter? However, Felix immediately refused her this cunning plan. Are you suggesting that we just sit back and watch as Rin becomes a toy? The Viscount can be bribed. Can we offer him twice the amount? Calm down and refuse to organize a criminal conspiracy. Irene said, I have a better idea. Everyone immediately started listening. Meanwhile, Lady Erica stood under the bright night sky. I'm sorry I came across to you in a bad light yesterday. This is not our first meeting, but we are greeting each other for the first time. Surprised, Rin asked. Lady Defolation, do you know me? She spoke. You are known there for being surrounded by love. Lady Claudia even picked some flowers for you from the greenhouse. They were roses. It becomes clear how much they resemble you. Lady Erica lowered her gaze. I hear that often. They are beautiful, but when you inhale their aroma, you only smell grass. For a flower, being chosen is the best fate, Irene asked, smiling. Perhaps this is the will of the flowers? What will can they have? It is enough to remain beautiful. Yesterday, I heard that you received a marriage proposal. However, the Chamberlain family will not be held responsible for you. But if I don't want this, can I say great? Just as flowers have no will, so ladies should not have one either. It's sad to live your life without desires. Hearing Irene's answer, Erica smiled faintly. She asked, So you charmed Lady Chamberlain? The girl turned around and asked a question. 
What do you want? I will not submit to my father's greed and will follow my own will. You have made a bad choice. It will only lead to suffering. Rin asked in all seriousness, Do you really think so? What is truly worthless and painful is not knowing yourself. I will become unhappy if I deny what I want to do. If you help me, I will show you what the will of flowers is. The only daughter of the defolation family, Lady Erica. She was the main villain and the crown prince's fiancé. In the novel, she was constantly bullying Claudia, did something to the saddle that caused the fall, bribed the maid who pushed Claudia into the river. She spread rumors and much more. She used any means. Lucas knew, but he only watched. Because of this, Chloe became dependent on him. He dealt with Erica when she decided to kill Claudia. No matter how you look at it, she played the same role as Martina. They are characters that were used and then thrown away. However, now Claudia asked for all the main characters, and he lives without leaving the estate. There is no reason for mockery. Erica did this to Chloe out of jealousy towards Lucas. What I do know is that she was very eager to become Empress. So her goal was power? But only her family wanted power. But Erica herself wasn't particularly interested in this. She became a doll that was used for the honor of the family. For Erica, who grew up in such conditions, these words were enough. The girl smiled. Interest was aroused in her. The next day, the man approached the crown prince. I heard that you promoted the engagement of the ambassador of the kingdom of Crudia, Count Chiba, and the daughters of the Defolation family. Is this true? Lucas asked suspiciously. Duke, why such a question? No matter how small the kingdom of Crudia was, until now it had been on friendly terms with the empire. It is necessary to choose a daughter from the appropriate clan as a bride. If this is a friendly relationship set up, wouldn't it be better to take away the beautiful lady? Count Tib will not want a gift that is difficult to manage. Duke Defolation's words do indeed make sense. Sending an aristocrat from the empire as a wife is not the best solution. They raise such worthless talk at the meeting? Yes, if the duke is involved in this, then this is possible. But who then involved the duke himself in this matter? Suddenly, Lucas met Duke Benjamin's gaze. However, he only smiled and shrugged his shoulders guiltily. The crown prince tensed. Duke Lemberg, do you have anything to say? Because none of you agree with this decision. I will personally choose the beauty that Count Tibu will like. An embittered Lucas replied, If that is your will, there is nothing to be done. After the meeting, Lucas angrily grabbed Benjamin by the lapels. He looked at the enraged crown prince in bewilderment. Lemberg said, Didn't I tell you to think before you start? Lucas shouted loudly, Shut up! You've completely ruined everything! Where do I get such confidence that it's all my fault? And who, if not you, could have pushed defolation to this decision? It's your hobby to interfere with your hard work. Thank you for valuing my abilities so highly. But to me, this case doesn't seem particularly interesting. And did you really work that hard on it? I also thought that she would enter the Chamberlain family as an adopted daughter. And why did they even adopt such a worthless parasite? People from this family will break their necks if it concerns Claudia's desire. The Count's stupid behavior has been causing gossip lately. If she asks for marriage, he will find a country where such marriages are permitted. The Crown Prince winced. You have some very nasty jokes. The Duke smiled innocently. Do you think there's anything to joke about here? Their family will lose authority, and they will be laughed at for the rest of their lives. He values his daughter's happiness so much that he will tolerate even this. Lucas asked. What? That Irene, or whatever her name is? A witch? Lemberg replied. It's impossible. She's an ordinary Viscount's daughter. Claudia changed beyond recognition because of that girl. You can already guess why Defolation spoke out. Lucas said. Probably because of the crown princess's position. Then you also know that this is related to Lady de Felicioni? The prince froze. Really? It can't be. Do you really think so? Lucas said. The duke wouldn't have come forward if it hadn't involved Erica. Nothing is impossible. All probabilities must be taken into account. There are people with such innate talents. Is there such a thing as a talent for groveling before others? Generosity, despair, and faith are outstanding talents. One word that touches the heartstrings can call you to action. It is easy to control people if you stimulate their feelings. Lucas looked at Lemberg. Sounds a lot like you. Speaking of differences, there is sincerity in Lady Amber. Is this what they call a rough gemstone? And it was I who found this beautiful rough stone. Seeing it makes me want to process it the way I want. And then smash it before it falls into the wrong hands. The crown prince was shocked. Well, you certainly have tastes. Please respect them as I respect you. Who are you to ask me, the crown prince, for respect? I know you don't have the opportunity to enjoy your hobbies. I have an interesting plan. Would you like to listen? Lucas asked. Have you given up on Claudia yet? He answered, no. We now have a common goal in the person of Lady Amber. Lucas began to listen to the plan, to touch the person's feelings. 
which will immediately break from just one touch. Meanwhile, in the palace, the Chamberlain family walked along with Rin, Irene said. Sorry for not warning you in advance. I couldn't even imagine that you could know each other. In future, tell me first. I'm worried about you. Suddenly, Chloe frowned. Are you closer to her than to me? This is simply impossible. Only Claudia is my person. Is that so? The aristocrat turned around, offended. Is that so? Suddenly, Felix came up to Rin and asked, What about me? Irene replied happily. Of course, you are my person, too. The head of the Chamberlain family listened to their cooing with a frown. Then he sighed sharply, speaking out. Nicknames like children. Satisfied, Felix turned to his father. Can you call her that? Hugo replied discontentedly. I have a mouth, so why not? The boy said. Really? Try it, the father replied. Let the lady go first. The father tried to squeeze something out of himself, but to no avail. In general, go faster. The reception started a hundred years ago. A pleased Irene with red cheeks replied, Good. At the reception, Rin met Erica, who called out to her, Lady Amber, would you like to live with me? Irene froze in shock. Suddenly, the brunette's way was blocked by an angry Chloe. The aristocrat said sharply, She doesn't want to at all. It's a pity. I would like to hear more about the will of flowers. Does a flower have value if it is not beautiful at all? There is nothing wrong with a flower not being beautiful, Erica answered in a sad tone. As expected, though. Suddenly she broke into a bright smile, saying, Gotcha. Irene was surprised. God, Erica smiled looking at me. Claudia tried her best to hold the girl back. Rin, don't fall for it, Erica smiled. Then may I call you Irene? No. Why are you talking about something that only the two of you know? Wait, what a weird situation. This is not a development. Where the villain bullies the heroine to get me. But this time, it's different. The current Chloe is completely different. Irene lives at Chamberlain Manor, right? Can I come over to her place sometimes for a little fun? Chloe was categorically against it. Don't come, you'll be thrown out, Lady Erica clarified. But I asked Irene. However, Claudia was adamant, answering, I am the mistress of the house. Defolation stated, Then I can invite her to my estate. The aristocrat screamed, No, do you think I'll let her go? Even if you don't allow it, there are many other ways to bring her. Returning to the estate, Irene headed to the hall with gifts. If you think about it, nothing else happened after that. Not to mention that I fainted from lack of air. However, something unusual confused the girl. She turned her head. Why are all the servants looking at me with such curiosity? They have been feeding me, putting me to bed, dressing me, and entertaining me for a long time now. So why do they look so happy, like they're not bored? It was like I had become a pet at Chamberlain Manor. Suddenly, Irene thought seriously. Is there a difference? Felix appeared out of nowhere in front of the girl. I have come. The brunette waved her hand weakly. Welcome, master. The man was surprised by such an address and asked Rin again. She answered, Nothing. Why did you come in so quickly? You didn't even take off your robe, he said. The Duke of Lemberg asked me for a personal meeting with you. Surprised, Irene froze in surprise. The Duke? Me? I refused. But then I thought it would be better to pass it on to you first. I heard that the Duke rules the city of primordial chaos, Carlyle. As far as I know, you have no common ground. Perhaps you met regarding your family debt? That didn't happen. However, he definitely has an ulterior motive. He looked at me very carefully during the appointment, too. Felix supported her. This is really suspicious. A minute later, Rin made a decision. I'll meet him once, the man asked with concern. Will everything be okay? The brunette answered uncertainly. We're at a dead end anyway. Felix held out his hands and said, Then I'll go with you. Irene froze, looking at the guy. Chloe bragged that you hugged her. You hugged her several times. But why don't you want to do it with me? Felix smiled and asked directly, Hug me! The girl's heart began to beat loudly in her chest, preventing her from answering. This is completely against the rules! She jumped into Felix's arms. Being very close to the girl's face, he said, Caught. Even if someone offers you a treat, you should not follow him. Rin was taken aback. You just looked at me so strangely. The guy laughed and replied, It looks like you noticed that. The girl asked again, This? Felix immediately waved it off. Suddenly the man asked a question. What about the kiss? A stunned Irene immediately blushed and asked again. Enough! If you're going to make fun of me, then let me go. While Rin was desperately struggling, Felix answered. I don't want to. There is a high probability that the Duke organized an assassination attempt on you. Irene thought for a moment and then replied. I thought so. The Duke of Lemberg has a wonderful and sensitive intuition. When everyone thought Chloe's words were a joke, he realized she was sincere. He wanted to deal with you quickly before it was too late. Trampling the shoots before they grow is the Duke's style. 
Do I need to meet a man who is trying to kill me? Standing in front of the door, Felix answered thoughtfully. Something like that. The girl pulled the door handle, saying, Well, let's go. Inside, the Duke of Lemberg was waiting for them, lighting incense. He smiled. Already here? You're earlier than I thought. The guest noticed that the entire office was filled with smoke. Rin coughed, thinking, What is that smoke in the room? Suddenly a hand appeared in front of her, from which fresh air came. Felix frowned and spoke. Please stop there. Irene was very surprised. Felix just used magic? The Duke brought the incense to the ring, from which a flame appeared. What should I do? I've already lit the fire, and there's nowhere to put it out. Felix frowned again, dissatisfied with this behavior. He waved his hand, preparing to cast a spell. A stream of air blew through the room, driving out the smoke and extinguishing the incense. The guy asked in a serious tone, Is that enough? There are plenty of medicinal herbs in the world. Be careful. Maybe we should sit down then? I heard you calling me. For what purpose? The absolutely calm duke spoke. Nothing special. I called you so that we could get along very well. Perhaps you don't know what it means to get along well? If you are sincere, then remove this strange aroma. Really? But other ladies usually really like him, Irene said. At first glance, you may seem beautiful, she winced, but your breath stinks terribly. There was an awkward pause, during which Felix laughed. He tried hard to contain himself, covering his face with his hand. The Duke was wondering what to say in response to this taunt. He smiled as he said, What ignorant things you say. If you are deliberately trying to hurt me, then don't be afraid. I won't kill you. What should I do to please the lady? Irene began to mumble. Lemberg said, Don't be shy. Prohibition on coming closer than ten meters to me? If you sit over there, I would be very grateful to you. The Duke noticed another chuckle from Felix. The happy guy said only one thing. So that's how it is. Forgive me if I have caused you any inconvenience. But I tried to take care of Lady Amber in my own way. Irene immediately asked, What kind of care is this? Posthumous? It's just that the lady should get used to this smell too. Not understanding anything, Rin said. What do you mean? The man replied. Who knows, she thought. Behave properly. Since you have no intention of talking, I will tell you the purpose of my visit. Loud and clear, she said. Surrender about Claudia. Confess confidently, and then you will be confidently rejected. It is quite possible that we will meet again then. The Duke smiled, thinking, I don't need your advice. Irene was at her limit. Trust me, it will be much better this way. Lemberg replied, It's a good proposal, but I don't like it. That's not why I came either. I'm here to give you a chance, Rin stated. A chance to not meet the worst end with Claudia. It seems that my understanding of the worst and yours are different. The worst thing for you is that I won't be able to win Claudia's heart. Getting her heart would be nice, but I don't want much. I just hope that the worst doesn't happen. Irene asked, What does the worst mean to you? Wiping the smile off his face, the man said, Losing Claudia forever. The girl asked, Do you really want to get her body? You understand everything. If I have a body, then the soul will follow it. You make statements that cannot be ignored. If someone is going to take possession of her against her will, I will not sit idly by, and it does not matter who my opponent is. If you have nothing more to say, then we take our leave. The Duke asked, Is it really that unpleasant for you? What kind of questions are you asking? Don't call us for things like that again. Lemberg replied, I don't remember inviting you. I would also like you to stop calling Irene. Felix extended his hand to the girl, beckoning her. She obeyed. I wish I was the first to realize the value of a lady. You weren't very noticeable, so I wouldn't have guessed. I was sincere when I said that I wanted to get closer to you. But, unfortunately, I will have to leave a person like you, Irene asked with genuine interest. Someone like me? A gemstone that emits different colors depending on how it is treated. It would have been so interesting if I had found you a little earlier. I love gambling, but I don't get involved unless there's a chance of winning. Knowing that nothing would come of it, I called you out of curiosity. My warning and last invitation is the last chance for the lady. The Duke smiled. Why didn't I know about you all this time? I don't remember ordinary things without value, but I don't forget what I've already seen. Didn't you look at me with sad eyes before? Even when I lit the cigarette? Irene froze in fear. The Duke continued. You changed a few years ago. It's as if you've become a completely different new person. The brunette thought, looking at Rin. Or has your taste changed? Irene became nervous, but still answered. You are mistaken, and I thought that my eyes could see hidden desires. But now I see only anger and disgust in your eyes. I just want to rip them out. The girl tensed up from this phrase. Suddenly, an air blade flew past the duke's head. Turning around, he saw the cut back of his chair. Felix stood before the man, addressing him. Your grace. I said we were going back. He could barely contain himself. Lemberg only said, 
It seems the sofa is completely worn out. Then he turned to Irene again. She shuddered as she listened. These are the eyes of a hypocrite who hides his secret desires. In reality, he is as much a monster as I am. I have secret desires, too. Are there people without them? I've heard it before. You love money. It's nice to see an honest person. In fact, no matter how wealthy the Chamberlains were, are they as rich as I am? Lady Amber, how do you like me? Rin answered confidently. Perhaps the first motive was money. However, even if they go bankrupt, I will stay with them, the Duke said. You'll regret it. But the girl said, not at all. Lemberg paused, thinking about her unexpected words. Then he smirked, answering slyly, got it. I will tear the shell of nobility from the hypocrite with my own hands. Suddenly, Irene stood proudly before the Duke. Try it. I am determined to accept whatever it may be. After some time, Rin and Felix returned to the estate. The worried girl turned around, addressing the guy. The ever-cheerful Chamberlain answered her call. She closed her eyes from a bright smile. You're not angry? Not at all. You did a great job. Keep up the good work. Shouldn't we have come to some kind of compromise? Felix smiled and firmly gave a negative answer. It is better to become a demon than to compromise with him. A few hours later, Chloe was walking with her purchases in hand. Rin was in shock. Felix and the servants with bags followed her. Suddenly it all flew at Irene with screams. Take it all! The girl, trembling and covered in gifts, could not move. She turned to Claudia, asking, What is all this? Chloe and Felix pointed to the huge cake. Happy birthday! The shocked brunette asked again. Birthday? Jumping up, Irene smiled widely and thanked them. Claudia immediately screamed, Rin, you are so beautiful! These are the shoes that I thought would suit you. And this hat and the evening dress and handbag set. As soon as I saw it, I ordered it to be bought for you. We also decided to hire a personal designer for you. Crouching down in front of her, Chloe asked, Do you like it? For some reason, it seems that she's even happier than me. Pleased, Irene began to answer, Of course I like it. But then she stopped short when she saw the enormous price of one dress. On this occasion, I wanted to create your own brand. I even came up with a name for him! Renee! Rin began to calm her down. Apparently, she removed the first syllable of my name. There are already enough gifts. Take a better look at this, Chloe asked. Kamoli? This is the first time I've seen this area, Irene replied. It is an island in Kalau, in the south of the empire. The marked places are suspected of having independent spirits. Have you never heard of this island? I heard that thousands of years ago when the underworld opened. This island was used as a passage and was filled with evil spirits. Chloe suddenly spoke up. I heard that the laws don't apply there. This is a special region in whose affairs other countries do not interfere. True. However, they say that no one comes to the island now. Claudia asked again with interest. No one is coming? If people live there, traders would come there. However, the land there is depleted, and self-sufficiency is impossible. Kamoli Island is a special area of the Pinello Trading Group, but at some point, Pinello banned entry to outsiders. Irene added, There is a rumor that the land is depleted by agriculture. It suddenly became fruitful and densely covered with forest. Shocked by the information, Chloe looked at the brunette. There is a 100% chance that there is an independent spirit on this earth. Judging by the emerging image, the spirit will be unusual. The difficulty is how we get to the island. Irene immediately heard the question. What exactly is the problem? Claudia and Felix said in unison. You can just buy it, Chloe said. I was just feeling annoyed about my birthday present. It's summer now, so it would be great to go on holiday to an island. This is the best way. But if you are talking about rest, what about the spirit? Rin thought, smiling. Oh, these diamond spoons. Chloe laughed. We'll figure out the spirit as we go. The journey to the island is long. How far can magic reach? If we want to hide the path to the island, it's better not to use magic. The brunette decided to clarify in surprise. Why is that? The magic used by the ministry's mages is recorded in the records. Rin asked. To prevent abuse of magic? True. The ministry trains gifted children. Everyone there is extremely good. They even implant artifacts containing different magic into their hands. This is necessary in order to understand what kind of magic is being used. Irene asked again. What about the magic of air currents? To blow up if necessary. It's just like explosives. They are implanted because magicians are unable to use magic without hands. Even if you use teleportation, the coordinates will be recorded and all the information will immediately reach the ears of His Highness. Claudia clutched her dress in disappointment. Felix said, Don't worry. Even if there are records left, there is one trick you can use. With explosive magic, he cut the stone statue in half. The principle is the same as air conditioning. It does not have much power. Rin screamed. Then what's the point of implanting artifacts? 
Smiling slyly, the guy answered, Not everyone is capable of this. The girls were shocked. So only Felix can do this. Is there any way to remove these artifacts? The man thought for a few seconds, withdrawing into himself. Suddenly he smiled and declared solemnly, There is a way. An hour later, Rin asked, Chloe, how do you communicate with men? The girl suddenly froze and thought, Just saying? Is there a special way to communicate with men? How do you usually start a conversation with the opposite sex? The aristocrat said, It just happens somehow. Irene flinched at this answer. Well, how else? You also communicate naturally with your brother, don't you? Or maybe you have someone you really like? The brunette answered immediately. No, I just think he's a good person. Claudia let out a shocked cry and asked, Not a bad person? She immediately sat down, wondering, Who is this young man? I just thought he was nice, so I wanted to be friends with him. The aristocrat went into a second shock, asking again, Did he seem good? She started waving her arms, screaming, Who is this? Who is our Rin? At that very moment, a familiar voice called out to Claudia. The girl glared discontentedly, asking, Who at such an important moment? Felix was walking towards them. Such an address saddens me. Mother is calling you. Chloe was surprised, but didn't argue. Slowly getting up, she turned to Rin again. We'll talk again soon, definitely. After that, she walked briskly towards the palace. Irene called out to the cheerful man. Felix, are you back? He looked at the smiling Rin and replied, Yes, I'm back. The girl spoke. Exactly. About the Pinello Trading Group. They formed a trading group to buy the entire island. At that time, one guy was shouting, Give the island to us! All the residents were shocked by such a request, but not for long. It turned out to be an extremely profitable deal for both parties. It all turned out to be too simple. From the very beginning, their goal was money. And it was so hard to create a fake trading group and hire people. What if the trade group refuses to sell it? If this reaches the ears of the crown prince, it will be the end of everything, she asked. Why create a get you if you knew it would turn out like this? Felix replied. The goal was not only to buy the island. Irene laughed out loud as soon as she heard the guy's words. Suddenly he called the girl. So who is this person? Rin froze and then blushed, slowly asking again. But Felix just looked at her silently, waiting for an answer. The brunette froze and hesitated, not knowing where to begin. Irene hesitated for a long time to answer. His Highness the Second Prince. Felix tugged on Rin's rubber ring, asking, The Second Prince? Finding herself in front of the man's face, the brunette blushed again. What do you mean when you say you want to get closer to him? Irene looked away. She just wanted to win him over to our side. For a second, Chamberlain's gaze suddenly and terribly turned cold. But then he smiled again as he replied, That's how? I won't stop you, but don't be reckless. And could you spare some time for me when you finish swimming? Rin immediately agreed, and she remembered Felix's cold gaze. Half an hour later, Irene was sitting in the office with Felix and Hugo. The girl immediately turned to the guy. What's going on here? He whispered back. It seemed like you had a plan. It's better to share information and cooperate, right? Suddenly, Hugo slammed the book shut, calling out to the girl. Are you ready? I heard about the future plans from beginning to end. First of all, I want to keep this a secret from Chloe so as not to hurt her. Doesn't it hurt her more that we keep everything a secret? It's possible, but Chloe is sincere and simple, so she acts before she thinks. So you need to tell everything with caution. Although I myself still don't know what the matter is, Felix said. We'll explain everything now, so don't be angry. Irene, can I tell you? The girl happily agreed. After the story, Hugo swore angrily. It seems he is about to give up his humanity. Irene asked in surprise. So you believed me? His behavior is too alarming. It's hard not to believe it. The crown prince was angry that he couldn't see Chloe, but then suddenly he calmed down. Suddenly, he went from being his highness to being the crown prince. Rin decided to clarify one point with Hugo. Since when? The man answered. From the celebration of the founding of the country. At first, Irene chuckled, realizing when that time had come. Then she frowned. So these idiots conspired. One hundred percent. I don't know if it will help, but we can predict their actions. He's going to throw the world into chaos because his girlfriend turned him down? This is the first time in my life I've seen such a disgusting leader. I'll add one more thing. A demonic relic in the shape of a bow, which I saw in the prophecy. The most powerful and dangerous thing in the world. At the moment, it is kept in one great temple. And the name of the demon who sealed his name Larage in this relic? Irene asked Felix. Do you know what kind of demon this is? The guy chuckled and put his fingers to his chin, thinking. He said only one thing. Laraj is a demon of battles and victory. Then the boy looked at his father and said, Everything will be okay. Okay? Are you saying you'll sacrifice yourself? Hugo roared sharply. 
Don't talk such utter nonsense. These words mean that you will accept the power of the demon. Are you in your right mind? Felix answered quietly. There is no other way out. Even if you are captured and left unharmed, you will be subject to the holy judgment. Whether the demon consumes you or not, you will still be a traitor. Your entire family will be at risk too. Another way is needed. No, we cannot let it be known that we have received a prophecy. Hugo stood and asked in despair, Then what should we do? They don't know that I've been developing resistance to magic. Felix smiled slightly and began to tell his father the plan. An hour later, Irene knocked on the greenhouse door, entering. The Chamberlain family's mother immediately greeted the girl. Hello, Miss Olivia. Did you have a good day? Count Hugo's wife, who, due to frequent illnesses, rarely leaves her room. Even in the novel, she was described only as a sick mother and did not appear in the plot. I didn't meet you, so it was a pretty sad day. In fact, she is a bright and cheerful person. But now I've seen you, and the day has become good again. Exhausted, Chloe turned to Rin. She asked, Are you okay? A listless Claudia replied, Yes, but what about my brother? Irene didn't know how to answer. Let's say she's getting it in the neck? The mother and daughter were both surprised and stared at Rin, but father never raised his hand against us in his life. Olivia got angry, clenching her hand into a fist. This bastard! I'll show him! She immediately stood up from her wheelchair, Rin said. But please don't be too strict. Later in the evening, Irene examined the bruises on Felix's face. Your beautiful face. Why did you even have to say that? When the guy grinned, the girl pulled his cheek. Rubbing his face, the guy asked guiltily, Are you angry? Irene screamed. Of course, how can you say that? How can you say that you are not afraid even in the face of death? Seeing the girl's pursed lips, the guy asked, Are you crying? The brunette turned away, wiping away her tears. How annoying. I'm sorry, but Irene, I never said I was going to die. Without changing his positive expression, he said, Consider me already dead. To be more precise, that is exactly how I put it. The brunette screamed angrily, There you go! It's the same thing! She calmed down. Consider you dead as you ask. You will lose the status, reputation, and fame you have achieved. Even without doing anything bad, you will live like a dead person, constantly hiding. Realizing what he had signed up for, Felix said, Yeah, something like that. Irene flushed. May I hit you once, please? Don't worry. For me, status and all that stuff have no value. After all, for each person they are their own. I don't consider this a sacrifice. And I don't put any effort into things that don't bring me any value. I am more rational and selfish than you think, Rin asked. And what value are you pursuing? The boy smiled innocently, asking, Don't you know? Felix, you are right. And yet we need to find another way. He looked at the thoughtful girl, asking, Which one? How about killing them before they do anything? I know it's impossible. Don't make that face. She opened the jar, saying, I'd better apply the medicine to you. The girl held out her hand, with cream applied to her finger. Wait a minute. You can heal yourself, can't you? I thought that thanks to this my father would recover sooner. Rin replied. Then you can treat yourself. She began to remove her hand. Suddenly Felix approached her. Could you treat me? The mouth is in a triangle again. Are you nervous again? Embarrassed and blushing, Irene replied, Be quiet. The girl gave in and said discontentedly, Okay, I'll spread it. To ruin such a beautiful face. Are you uncomfortable? Straighten your back. I'm fine. I can handle myself better than anyone. Irene answered uncertainly. But I asked you not to hold back. Felix said, Just this once. I'm sorry. Rin said, You shouldn't smile like that. Here he answered, You are so strict. Dark night fell on the Chamberlain family estate. Suddenly Claudia woke up. She was very thirsty. She lit a candle and headed towards the kitchen. Suddenly, she discovered the corpse of a servant in front of her. Seeing the bloody bodies, the girl screamed. Is there anyone here? Father! Mother! She found her parents' bodies in the bedroom. Claudia burst into Felix's room, calling out to him. Suddenly, the girl shuddered and froze when she saw her brother. He stood there alive, covered in blood, speaking, without a trace. He repeated, kill all members of his family. The boy looked at Claudia. His pupils were red. The frightened girl asked, Who are you? But he rushed at her. Irene jumped up in bed, in a cold sweat, breathing heavily. Rubbing her face, she asked herself, What kind of dream was that? The servant knocked on the door. Lady Amber, if you are awake, come and have breakfast. Rin immediately responded, while she tried to move away from the nightmare. She tried to get out of bed slowly, supporting herself with her hand. Touching the door handle, the girl stopped and froze. For a few seconds she stood in one position, not daring to go out. The terrible picture from the dream was still before her eyes. After greeting Chloe, Rin asked, Where are Felix and the adults? She answered, Father and brother left early, 
and mother is still sleeping. Maybe we should buy a cruise ship. We could travel with the whole family. How wonderful it would be if we all lived on the island together. Suddenly, Claudia asked, Rin, did something happen? I wouldn't really like to talk about this in the morning, but... Chloe, please don't be scared and listen to me. Closer to lunchtime, dark clouds covered the sky and a downpour began. At this time, Felix was reading the letter he was holding in his hands. Squeezing it, he frowned and said, Finally, the time has come. Concerned, Irene pressed, Are you really going? Everything is fine. You don't have to worry so much about me. Putting on his snow-white robe, Felix said goodbye to the girl. Lightning struck another estate. Someone said, Isn't it hard for you? Why do you endure it so steadfastly? Even I feel tormented when I look at you. You will be swallowed up soon anyway, so your actions are in vain. Felix glared angrily at his opponent. Suddenly, his heart began to beat very painfully in his chest. The Duke of Lemberg smiled, enjoying the spectacle. Looking at the bloody boy, he said, It's a stunning picture. Suddenly, someone put a hand on Benjamin's shoulder, calling out, As always, you are wasting your time on useless things. The Duke replied, Don't interfere with my only hobby. I'll go. Finish your terrible hobby and come. Want to spruce up before meeting Claudia? He was immediately shut up. Suddenly, Felix began to cast a spell, squeezing his hand. With one movement, he sent a stream of lightning into the Duke's ankle. The man in black knelt down, inspecting the damage. Felix gave Lemberg a dull, barely expressive laugh. You're more temperamental than I thought, and you even use magic. Sir Constantine, my leg is about to fall off. Could you heal it? The long-haired man just looked away, refusing. The Duke said, our union is no good. This will not do. Did it just dawn on you? This was impossible from the start. Constantine stated, I am helping you for the first and last time. Really? I won't stop until I get Claudia. If you want to finish, you can leave. I won't stop you. Thanks to you, from today on my principles are completely destroyed. You decided to join us yourself. Why this anger? Taking out his flaming ring, the Duke said, There's nothing to be done. I forgive you for turning my leg into a useless rag. Felix, with an arrow in his shoulder, angrily tried to squeeze his hand. The boy swung his hand in an attempt to hit Lemberg, but he jumped back. The attempt caused blood to come from Chamberlain's mouth. If you continue to use magic, you will die from shock. I know a great way that can dull the pain. He put the cigarette in Felix's mouth. Take a deep breath and exhale. The guy did everything as he was told and immediately started coughing. If you inhale the smoke, the pain will disappear for a while. Enough to leave a will to the family. And the one who will capture your heart... Felix paid attention to these words. You realize that if you commit suicide, you will be consumed by a demon. Wouldn't it be better to talk first and then die peacefully? You should get used to it. The Duke took out a new cigarette. You may die. Forgive me for not thinking that far ahead. I wonder if that lady will say the same thing as last time. What did she say there? Did she say it? Does it smell from her mouth? Lemberg stood up, leaving Felix with the cigarettes and the ring. We'll meet again if we can. Sir Constantine, let's go. The two men turned and silently headed towards the exit. For a second, the priest turned to look at Felix. The duke asked, Are you not coming? He replied that he was coming. They closed the door, leaving the wounded boy alone. Felix watched and waited for the moment when he could be alone. He breathed heavily and closed his eyes for a second, gathering his strength. Then he smiled. Blood ran down his lips. The guy cursed. Suddenly, in the middle of the night, a bright, scorching flame burst out. Felix's broken glasses lay on the ground unused. Before this, the guy took a crystal of fire magic with him. With this crystal, he set fire to the duke's estate, leaving nothing behind. A bloody Felix slowly made his way out into the street. Smiling, the demon spoke through his lips. What a refreshing feeling. Where should I go? With these words, he left the estate. A little later, Irene was sleeping peacefully surrounded by plush toys. At that very moment, some figure was hanging over her. The girl felt someone's presence and woke up. In front of Rin stood a silent and blood-covered Felix. Without saying anything, he reached out his hand to the frightened girl. Why do you hesitate? I know all your secret desires. Irene tried to call out to Felix hesitantly, looking at him. But, despite his threatening appearance, the guy stroked her head. Flashing a bright smile at Rin, the man declared, I'm back. Under the guy's questioning gaze, the brunette began to pinch herself. This isn't a dream, is it? Is this really the real Felix in front of me? Suddenly she screamed, Wait a minute! What kind of sight is that? So much blood! Rin jumped up and began to examine the guy. Are you okay? Everything is fine, so please stop groping me. The demon mentally tried to seduce the man, but to no avail. A little earlier, before the duke's estate was destroyed, Felix, sitting on the floor, heard a strange voice in his head. I can't believe it. I barely lived for a little over twenty years. 
but the magical powers still remain. Are you an archmage? For a common man, it's impressive. The guy lit a cigarette. The demon asked, Are you listening? But Felix ignored him. He grabbed the arrow tightly, wanting to pull it out of his shoulder. With one jerk, the cursed artifact appeared outside. If you give me half of your body and soul, I will give you power. One that you, little human, cannot even imagine. Well, isn't it tempting? Felix didn't answer. He literally drove the demon crazy. Don't ignore me. Instead, the man tried to put on his glasses, covering his eyes. The demon said, nothing can be done. Well, how do you like my power? Felix's glasses are cracked. And that's not the limit. Do you realize it? Answer! Throwing away the broken accessory, the man tried to get up. The demon did not retreat. Ignoring me again? Archmage! Have you been developing resistance to magic your whole life, or what? Okay. Is half too much? How about a third? A quarter? Felix said. Stop chatting. My head hurts. The demon was pleased with the answer. The guy asked, Larage? That's right. Since you've guessed, the conversation will be short. I have the power to give you whatever you ask for. I want you to just sleep quietly inside me. Laraj replied, Did you let me in on purpose? How did I end up trapped in the body of such a crazy person? Be careful with the harsh language inside me. The demon began to lose his temper. Listen carefully, Archmage. Do you know what spell was put on this arrow? They brainwashed you before they ousted me. You found yourself in this situation because you saved a girl who is not even related to you. Isn't it a shame? Felix got trapped because of kindness. The guy replied, I was just acting on my convictions. You're so kind that you even erased her memories. What an angel, Felix asked. Are there any clothes? Larage answered. Where would they come from? The guy was straightforward. You're useless. This angered the demon. Then Larage said, Completely crazy. Don't you want revenge? I'll deal with revenge myself, without borrowing the demon's power. Revenge for not being able to use magic. In any case, you won't get what you want from me. What a refreshing feeling, Laraj replied. Crazy. While Rin was treating the wounds, he said, This is what happened. Why do you remain unperturbed when this happens to you? The guy laughed guiltily and began to ask for forgiveness. Chamberlain thought, This is really dangerous. Laraj, demon of battles and victory. Irene tried to call out to the man. Is everything okay? The demon spoke. Can't hold back anymore? You want these eyes to look only at you. He silently approached the girl. She looked at him questioningly. Do you want her to beg you endlessly and shed tears? Felix grabbed her by the shoulder and looked straight into her eyes. The brunette responded with her gaze, not understanding what was happening. The guy clutched the blanket, confidently addressing the girl. They sat on the bed and looked at each other for a few seconds. The guy said, please leave my room. I'm dangerous now, Irene asked. Is it because of that demonic relic? She called out to Felix. He flinched, his eyes wide. I don't care at all how you've changed because of the relic. I told you that you are you, so I am ready to go through hell. Your safe return brings me incredible joy. Everything is fine. The boy's hand shook as Rin held it. However, the guy just waved it off, suppressing his desires. Irene asked, Why are you avoiding me? But Felix interrupted her. You are tired. So sorry for waking you. Go to bed. What are you talking about? Do you think I can sleep in this situation? Thank you for the treatment. We'll talk about the rest tomorrow. The girl didn't calm down. But you were so badly hurt. Can I keep an eye on you? Felix was already at his limit. In an unusually cold tone, he said, Go away, I beg you. These words immediately brought tears to Irene's eyes. She answered, her face downcast. Okay, then we'll talk tomorrow. I'll tell my family doctor about this just in case. The girl closed the door, leaving the possessed guy alone. Laraj spoke up again. What, are you not a human being? Felix answered in a calm tone. Do you consider me a beast? I have lived for thousands of years, but I see such a person for the first time. This is quite natural, so stop trying to persuade her. Morning came. Sun rays began to penetrate into the room. Birds were singing outside the window. Liraj spoke. Man, get up! I have a great idea. It's about that girl. Let's conquer her, Felix replied. Are you talking about this again? It doesn't matter that you're innocent, because you have me. Looking at himself, the guy answered. There is no need for that. I have existed for hundreds of billions of years, and I have mastery. I stay on the same wavelength with the person. Without consent, I won't touch her with a finger. I also doubt that this can be a subject of discussion. Seduce her and make her fall in love with you. Seduce her, I say. You are a demon of love and pleasure. So tell me, where is the love here? True love begins with physical contact. Felix looked in the mirror. An angry face looked back at him. Unwrapping the bandages, the man said, I feel pretty good. His body was without a single scratch. 
the demon continued to boast about his strength. No matter how long you keep me inside, in the end we will still merge into one. You are very annoying. You seem bored, he replied. It was you who locked me in, putting on his shirt, Felix said. Well, well, how noisy. I'm going out, so don't talk to me, Laraj agreed. After leaving the room, Felix turned his head and was surprised. Irene sat dozing by the door, her head down. The girl snored peacefully, not paying attention to anything. Suddenly she started, slowly awakening from her sleep. Irene, why are you sleeping here? You better go to your room. The stunned brunette did not expect to see a man in front of her. Suddenly the guy's tone changed to a threatening one. And lock the door. Rin jerked, answering. Everything is fine. I'm already wide awake. The atmosphere around Felix has changed a lot since yesterday. Is it because he doesn't have glasses? And suddenly he started acting cold. He smiles less than before and even avoids me. But most importantly, he became more attractive. What am I thinking when I look at a wounded man? You're okay, right? Why do you look so unharmed? I think I've recovered thanks to the demon. Please don't touch me. Rin replied. I was just surprised. Sorry. She suddenly tripped. Having jumped out of the slipper, the girl began to fall on her back. With a sharp movement, Felix grabbed Irene by the wrist. The brunette screamed from how hard Felix squeezed her hand. The man himself did not expect this and immediately let her go. He froze, asking, Are you okay? Rin confirmed. Irene rubbed her hand, asking, Is this also a demon's power? Felix, looking down, agreed with her guiltily, lowering his gaze. The brunette suddenly laughed. Don't worry, I was just surprised, she added, her face drooping. And don't go so far away. The man, who had moved a few steps away, responded in agreement. Some people even keep hamsters as pets. It's enough just not to step on them and gently stroke them, Felix answered confusedly. Let's start with the treatment. It might be a fracture, so I'll call the doctor. Rin thanked him, and I will do my best not to harm anyone. No problem. A doctor will cure such an injury in a moment, the guy said. Saying that everything is fine is a bad habit. Don't make me assume you'll always be okay. After all, one day I can inflict a very serious wound on you. It's not for a man with a hole in his shoulder to talk about this, Felix said. It's none of your business. But Irene continued, But you are also a completely innocent victim. You want to protect me from getting hurt, even if you sacrifice yourself? And I do too. Like water that cannot be collected, there are wounds that cannot be healed. Irene was positive. That's right, though. If it's you, I won't mind whatever you do to me. Felix's eyes widened in surprise at such speeches. If you knew what I'm thinking right now, you wouldn't say that. He added, I am still holding myself back with all my might. What is this desire he can't tell me about? Does he want to kill me? Suddenly she noticed the guy who started coughing. Covering his mouth with his hand, the man suppressed a muffled cough. However, he couldn't resist and loudly vomited blood. Everything is fine. The body is simply rejecting the relic. The frightened girl froze, asking, Isn't it dangerous? The guy just stopped her, ordering her not to come closer. Rubbing away the blood, Felix breathed heavily, looking at the floor. Then he jumped up abruptly, causing Irene to flinch. Without saying anything, the man walked away from the girl. Returning to his room, he slammed the door loudly. The guy returned as suddenly as he left. He was holding a saber in his hands. If I do anything inappropriate, pierce me with this. The stunned brunette, looking at the weapon, asked again, Whom to pierce? You, Felix replied. Then I will come to my senses. A minute later, they were walking down the corridor to see their family. I thought you were the only one with desires. But does she like you too? Laraj said, You were sure she didn't like you, weren't you? I have a feeling that all this is because you are just an idiot. Felix grinned. Finish it. My patience has its limits. Irene asked, frightened. Did I do something wrong? The man realized his mistake and immediately began to calm Rin down. Just some piece of trash keeps talking to me. Disgrace me like that again and I won't let it go. Under Irene's questioning gaze, the demon agreed. The girl said, Secretly, I'm glad you pretended to be dead. But under this pretext, those three can do bad things. The good news is that you no longer have an artifact in your shoulder. This means that now you may not be limited by magic. Felix replied, Irene, I can't use it now. She flinched and asked in shock, What did you just say? Every time I use mana, Laraj penetrates deeper. The brunette asked, not understanding anything. What does this mean? Would you understand if I said it was eating away at my life force? The girl presented this picture, saying, I understand very well. All people, no matter who they are, have mana. Only the amount differs. If an ordinary person has mana the size of a glass, then mine is the size of an estate. That's why I survived even when Laraj penetrated me. Despite the fact that I lost a large amount of mana, an ordinary person has low resistance. He would lose mana and die. 
Everyone's mana is constantly being consumed and produced, but I feel like the outlet for the produced mana is blocked. But still, I won't die. Felix tried to smile. Irene listened to his story in complete shock, frozen with her mouth open. It's enough that I simply won't use magic. If I use it, the soul fragments are influenced by the demon. I do my best to control my instincts. But if I lose my mind, then be sure to pierce me. After that, he lowered his head and invited Rin to go forward. With Irene's consent, the man opened the doors and walked inside. The whole family, including his mother, gathered before him. Concerned, Claudia turned around and screamed, Brother! The guy smiled slightly, responding to her greeting. The girl immediately rushed to the guy. He held out his hands. She immediately pressed herself against him, looking deeply into his eyes. But something happened that no one expected. There was a slap. With a cold look, Claudia slapped Felix on the cheek. Irene was the most surprised, not understanding Chloe's behavior. Hugo and Olivia were also shocked by their daughter's behavior. She froze, not removing her hand, continuing to look at her brother. There was a pause during which no one dared to say anything. Suddenly, Irene called out to Chloe, but Chloe finally spoke up. A rumor is spreading that you have died. A funeral must be held. Your reputation is so good that people themselves organize funerals. Should I congratulate you? Claudia began to cry. I understand that it could have been worse and that you did your best. Look at the situation you're in. I'm so angry with myself. Felix tried to calm her down. Chloe, it's not your fault. I know. However, the fact is that I couldn't help you in any way. Felix suddenly fell to his knees in front of his sister, trying to console her. Irene, holding the saber in her hands, fidgeted nervously, worried. Then she suddenly screamed, So I prepared myself? Attention! Four pairs of eyes turned their gaze on her. She spoke. How about a summer trip to the island? The next day it was time for the rehearsal for Felix's funeral. The whole family, dressed in black, stood in front of the black wooden coffin. Everyone's faces were downcast. Irene looked down. We can't let those three know that Felix is alive. The first one is an idiot. The second one is a smart guy. I don't know about the third one. Chloe, are you good at playing a crying person? The girl thought. I don't even know. I'll try now. Claudia began to cry, very pretending to wipe away a tear. No, it will most likely be exposed. Maybe it's better to be indignant? You're angry at Felix for sacrificing himself. And be angry at your powerlessness and at the fact that you knew nothing about his intentions. If my brother died, would I behave the same way? There is no law that a person must necessarily experience sadness. Pretend that he really died, and you will never be able to see him again. Claudia smiled. Thank you. I think I understand a little. Satisfied with the answer, Irene said, Thank God. If only Felix could see this. Could he imagine that the whole hall and the road to the grave? Will everything be covered with flowers from people who came to honor his memory? A voice was heard. He is definitely watching this from heaven. The girls turned around. Crown Prince Lucas was heading towards them. So many people mourn his passing. His path will not be boring. He lived with dignity and surrounded everyone with love. God will show favor to him. Am I right, Sir Constantine? Lemberg turned his head. The priest replied, Refrain from such statements. Why are you following me? I have something to talk to Claudia about, so get lost. The duke immediately declared, I don't want to. Irene looked at them in bewilderment. I see what you're thinking, so I can't stand aside. The irritated crown prince replied, Get your hands off me. Maybe you could stop interfering and leave me alone? You shouldn't rush ahead. It's very mean to act secretly, Lucas replied discontentedly. It's not for you to talk about this. The duke said, Then today I will simply observe. Sir Constantine, maybe you'll at least leave? He refused. These devils don't even want to listen to me out of the corner of their ear. He really is a scapegoat, but still unexpected that they came to the funeral wearing formal attire. But it gives me goosebumps to think that they came here as murderers. Irene noticed how Claudia stepped forward. Baring her teeth and clenching her fist, she rushed forward. The stunned brunette guessed what Chloe wanted to do. She ran up to the crown prince and hit him in the face with all her might. The blow was so powerful that the guy spat out blood. The stunned guards cried out, Your Highness! Hugo and Claudia were also shocked. They understood that this was treason. Unable to keep his balance, Lucas fell, covering his mouth. Are you okay? We'll call a doctor for you right now. Enough! Don't pay attention and get out of here. How dare you show your insolent face here? Still keeping his face, the crown prince turned to the aristocrat. Claudia, now you're looking at me. He glanced at the girl. That's why I asked to meet just the two of us. You are as kind as always. You gave me a reason. No one will blame me if I throw you in jail. Did you think I wouldn't find out who exactly killed my brother? If you knew, but did it anyway. I will assume that you agree. 
that you accept my contempt and hatred. I ask you for nothing. Lucas smiled wickedly and replied, I'll gladly accept it. It makes no difference whether you forgive me or not, but remember this day well. After all, you have to understand who might be next. Be careful. The crown prince did not hesitate to say everything directly. Obviously, I will be that person. It feels like everyone is looking at me. Suddenly, she noticed that Constantine was looking at her. You're the weirdest of them all. You don't say anything and just stare. And Kolya, you're going too far. Do you think they'll just endure it? Even I understand that this is not a game, but sincere feelings. Now these savages are determined to come up with something else. By the way, why does he keep staring at me like that? Irene turned to Constantine. Do you want to say something? I was just thinking that it would be very easy to kill you, but it would be better for me not to commit such senseless murders. Why does he keep telling me about murder? The Duke asked. You have already accepted the consequences of your choice? It's a pity that we couldn't show them in their worst form. Since you are determined to accept anything, let me tell you. There was at least one thing that Felix Chamberlain could not hide. Passion for you. Lemberg looked at Irene with a smile, an impulsive desire, physical lust. Slowly and quietly, the brunette turned to the Duke, interrupting him. Do you feel better about slandering an innocent person? Even if people say something with their mouths, it is not always human speech. Do you think I'm making this up? I'm even starting to sympathize with him. Irene replied, I would understand if your words made sense. It's amazing that you make me experience something like this. It must have been a shame for him to die without telling you how he felt. Since the interested party has left us, there is no way to verify this. Rin said to Chloe, Could you give the Duke a whack too? Claudia, who supported her idea, asked, Do you think it's worth it? You three need to know your limits. Rin, the funeral is about to start. Let's go. Claudia, I have come to sincerely honor the memory of the deceased. Lucas called out to her again, but the girl decided to ignore everything. That's why I told you to disappear. Duke, everything is ruined because of you. He didn't finish, asking a question. What? Where are you going? What are you going to do? Lemberg headed towards the coffin. They say he was burned so badly that he became difficult to identify. He was saving a little boy who was in the magic department. Poor Felix Chamberlain, I'll be grieving for you tonight. People who exalt themselves will fall, and those who humble themselves will rise. Felix, who is clearer than water and warmer than sunlight, he went mad and spoke with eyes that became blacker than darkness. I will not avoid the ways, even though I was not able to get rid of regrets. The day will come when I will achieve faith and moral standards. A man who, upon his death, announced that he would be reborn. And also about what actions will be taken now. The deputy minister left us at such a young age. What I mean is, I thought he would live a long life. But God valued him so much that he took him to himself earlier. At this time, Irene was turning her head, trying to find someone. Her gaze stopped. She found it. The second prince, Cedric. Will I be able to handle it? He is a man. I will win him over by pretending he is a girl. Reaching out to him, she encouraged herself. I'm a genius at picking up lines. The girl gently pulled the second prince by the sleeve. Could you talk to me? Secretly, in a deserted place. Caught off guard, Cedric flinched at the sight of Rin. Then he grinned slyly as he said back. Unexpected. This is the first time something like this has happened to me at a funeral. Of course, I'm not such a noble person as one might think. He leaned against the column. But you're not a good girl either, to have an affair on a day like this. He looked at Rin curiously. The stunned girl tried to digest the information she had heard. She asked herself, her eyes wide. What did he just say? My deepest condolences. We had nothing in common. But I've heard a lot about him. You must be saddened by such a loss. And why did he have to die? Many mourn the loss of Felix. Just look. Only insects swarm wasting oxygen. One day he released an insect which I was going to catch. Irene thought. What is he talking about? Did a bug bite him? Felix believed that even an insect has a reason to live. The girl smiled. We don't know what kind of life he has. His death is sad, but it is the only outcome of his beliefs. I didn't suggest meeting to say such things. I heard you have a talent for dealing with people. Irene was surprised. Cedric added. You speak very beautifully. But I could agree to what you want without such long speeches. The second prince approached the girl and hugged her head. Rin waved it off and asked, Do you know what I want? The guy took her hand. It's obvious. You want my love. It may not be sincere, but you will be able to feel it. And your face is cute. And I like those little lips. It makes you want to swallow it. Irene was afraid of his intentions. With a sharp movement, she pushed him away, screaming, Get away! Don't you dare touch me however you want. That's not why I called you. Cedric was surprised. Why? I needed you in another sense. The guy kept asking again. Rin said, I saw an opportunity. 
Cedric didn't understand. You're acting like a moth to a flame, but at the same time not throwing himself into hell out of fear of death? Don't throw around such careless words. I can offer you a life that has meaning. I need you. Cedric asked incredulously. Are you going to use me? I will make you useful. If you want to waste your life, give it to me. The guy asked. What nonsense? Is anyone capable of falling for such a thing? Of course. Just take one step and you won't be able to leave. If you decide to, come here. She handed him a piece of paper. Cedric froze for a couple of seconds, staring at the paper in confusion. Then he extended his hand in response, saying, I'll take this. Cedric was the second most important character in Sarav. When Chloe was captured, he freed her from the palace, and he ran away with her. However, a terrible end awaited him. Lucas caught them, and holding his brother by the hair, pulled out his sword. Were you really going to entrust your fate to this worthless man? And after these words, Lucas tore out Cedric's heart in front of Chloe. The guy didn't save Claudia because he liked her. He wandered in search of the meaning of life, dreaming that one day he would burn brightly. The only chance to shine was Claudia. Cedric needed a stimulus to warm up, and this was his chance. Therefore, he will never be able to refuse my offer. A little later, Irene returned to the hall. Am I too late? Suddenly someone addressed her. Are you the daughter of the Amber family? The girl immediately responded with a start. Yes, that's right. Duke Defolation spoke to her. You're always running around everywhere. Sorry to keep you waiting when you're already busy. The man spoke slowly. Erica asked me. She said that for the first time in her life, she wanted something. What did you do to her? I just told her about a different view of the world. The Duke frowned. You mean another view of self-will? Not quite. Rather not on self-will, but on freedom. After all, everyone should have freedom of choice, even if they regret it. The choice is my prerogative. You have no right to interfere. You created a stir, as if you knew what was best to do. The lady also believes that she has the right to choose how to live. If I were in her place, I would fight until the very end, even if I lost. It is reprehensible to fill my daughter's head with this nonsense. I just hope you stay with the Chamberlains for a long time. With these words, the Duke turned and walked away. Irene was immediately overcome with a sense of unease because of this conversation. Feeling sad, the brunette sat down in the same place where she was. Suddenly, another voice called out to the girl. She turned around. I've been looking for you for so long. Where have you been? Are you very tired? Rin froze for a second. Sorry for making you worry. Today, I spend all my time running into people. It was hard. But after I saw Chloe, I immediately felt stronger. Really? Then let's go eat something tasty? Back at the estate, Irene looked at the map again. The Get You members should have contacted us by now. Why is there no news? Smells of great danger. Rin sighed. What to do? If you continue watching, will any solution come to mind? If not, then stop it. Let's pack our things. Good. By the way, if you think about it, the trip was for three. The Count needs to defend his position, and it will be physically difficult for Lady Olivia. And yet, it's good that we have a reason to leave for a long time. This is our first trip together. So exciting. We're not going to have fun, Chloe replied. And yet I'm waiting for him. Half an hour later, Rin was recounting. She folded the clothes. I took the artifacts for self-defense. And I didn't forget the potions either. In order not to reveal one's identity, one has to change one's appearance. As far as I know, there are many types of potions, the girl thought. Maybe she should try to create them herself? It was already evening over the secret Chamberlain estate. It's so quiet and calm here that it helps you concentrate. But wouldn't it be better for you to have at least one servant? Felix, who was sitting opposite Irene, gave up on the idea. Anyway, I came to give you something personally. The man began to open the extended box with surprise. Your face is very noticeable. I thought you'd better disguise yourself. I am indeed a dead man with a recognizable face. The guy uncorked one of the flasks, inhaling the aroma. He then raised the bottle to his mouth, drinking the contents. It feels like a professor is checking my assignment. At that very moment, the guy turned pale. Who did this? What should I do? It seems like I've got some kind of garbage. Rin lowered her head guiltily and replied, I... Is it that bad? Felix answered calmly. For a first time, it was amazing. This is the final product after ten unsuccessful attempts. He answered more tensely. For ten attempts, you did pretty well. The brunette beamed and smiled in a second, asking, Really? But if you drink it, there will be side effects. You are prohibited from drinking it. You either scold me or praise me. Choose one, Felix asked. But how did you come up with the idea to make the potion? Rin replied. I thought about it yesterday and decided to try. You achieved such a result in one day? You didn't study anywhere? Of course. How would a girl who didn't attend the academy learn to make potions? I don't have much interest in this, so it's okay. I understand. 
The path you take will always be the right one. I'm not very good at praising talent, but you have one. Please don't. You didn't have to say that. These are not empty words. To create something like this, being self-taught is a talent, Irene asked awkwardly. Then should I do more? The boy replied, If you wish, I can teach you from time to time. I want to be useful to you. Don't deprive me of this joy. You must be tired, but I really appreciate it. It feels like the beauty of Felix's decline is becoming stronger and stronger. Suddenly, the girl involuntarily lowered her gaze. Is this also the power of a demon? His clothes are getting a bit tight. If you fall in love with a guy with a good body, you'll want to play him like a harp. Remembering Martina's words, Rin blushed and flushed with shame. Surprised Felix asked, What happened to you suddenly? A few hours later, night fell. The man tried to sleep. For more than half an hour, he tossed and turned in bed without falling asleep. Turning onto his back, Felix, flushed, suffered from the heat. Although the healing speed is high, fatigue does not stop accumulating. This is the umpteenth day in a row that this has not given me any clear peace. My body feels so heavy, as if someone is sitting on top of me. Suddenly he noticed Rin sitting on him in just her nightgown. Opening his eyes slightly, Felix tried to examine her. He slowly raised his trembling hand, reaching out to the girl. With an uncertain movement, he touched Irene's cheek. The flushed and sweaty guy lay there as if in a delirium. He smiled at the brunette hanging over him, thinking, like a dream. Suddenly the man said, You did a good job with the transformation, but it's time to stop there. He let go of Rin's cheek. Laraj, what's the point? Felix was trying to reach the demon. However, the girl did not disappear anywhere and silently looked at him. Suddenly, she began to stroke his chest, calling his name. The man was taken aback by the sight of Irene and her actions, and immediately blushed. With a sharp movement, the guy laid the brunette on the bed. He said in a displeased tone, I asked you to stop. The demon in Irene's face laughed and said, How rude. You wanted this, didn't you? You can hold her in your arms every day, Felix replied, breathing heavily. It seems you didn't hear me. Would you be pleased if I pierced my heart with a sacred sword? Shall we die together? The man was serious in his statements. After thinking about it, Laraj laughed and answered briefly, Hypocrite, you want to stay with her? You pretend to be kind, but you're seething inside. When she left, you inhaled her scent for a long time and even blushed. Your outer appearance does not match your inner one. You are more terrible than a demon. If you want to know why I do this, Irene is right here. The next second, Felix suddenly opened his eyes. Turning his head, he thought, of course it was a dream. Suddenly, he heard a familiar voice. I knew it. Rin was wetting a rag. Did you have a nightmare? You don't look so good, the man answered. I'm fine. And he thought to himself, a sweet smell. Suddenly, he turned to the girl. Do you still have the sword? Felix pulled Irene close. I warned you. The guy unconsciously reached for her lips to kiss them. But Rin stopped and asked, should I take your temperature? They stood in silence for a while, looking at each other. Your forehead is burning. You look sick, so lie still. I knew this would happen, so I brought a wet towel. The exhausted boy plopped down on the pillow, breathing heavily. He looks like a trapped prince who fell asleep in an ice castle. Felix asked, If I die, will you be very sad? Irene roared. What are you suddenly asking me? You survived even in that situation. If you die here, I will not forgive you. Now I feel like I'm going to die. But if you're going to be sad, I can't. The girl looked at the guy with a saddened look. The next day, Felix handed Irene a mountain of scrolls, books in my research that I have been doing since childhood. They just collect dust while they lie around unused. Suddenly, Rin changed the subject, asking, Did you even sleep? The exhausted guy answered, Of course, I slept well. Sorry. Even though I suggested it, I won't be able to teach you. Surprised, Rin emerged from the scrolls, asking, Did something happen? I would like to avoid one-on-one -on -one meetings. I hope for cooperation. Clutching the notes handed to her, the girl answered sadly, Okay. A few hours later, Irene met with Claudia. Chloe spoke. This is a train designed by a union of magicians and alchemists. It looks better than it looked. I borrowed it for the whole day. Suddenly, the aristocrat had an idea. Maybe we should buy it? Rin immediately reassured her. Keep a grip on yourself, Mansoor. However, Claudia did not calm down. But I like him so much. Irene continued to argue. Chloe, you are very excited. We'll only ride it a couple of times. Waste is not good. A little later, they loaded up and the train set off. It's as if we're going on an adventure or an expedition. No hotel, no local goods. Even the train and ship are uncomfortable. There's nothing good about it. But you look happy. Of course. This is my first time going on a trip to the outback. Rin replied, You seem happy, so I'm happy too. If you are so happy, then I should be even happier. But before that, I need to replenish my lack of strength. 
After these words, Chloe sluggishly went to rest in her compartment. Suddenly, Felix awkwardly called out to the happy girl, Perhaps you ate something sweet? A lollipop, for example. The brunette was surprised by this question. No, do I smell sweet? The man slammed the book shut. No, I'll stop in another carriage. While the guy was getting up, the girl asked, Why all of a sudden? Irene looked at the man with bewilderment and sadness. After thinking for a moment, she suddenly grabbed his sleeve. She asked softly and innocently, Could you stay? Looking at Rin, Felix blushed, and his heart immediately started pounding. The dumbfounded guy didn't know what to do. His mind was clouded. As Irene held his hand, he thought, too close. Felix grabbed his face, trying to think of something quickly. Barely containing himself, he spoke. Irene, listen. The worried girl remembered the words of the Duke of Lemberg. Passion for you. Is it possible that Felix lusts after me? Would I hate it? If I imagined our kiss. The girl imagined their lips slowly touching. She blushed immediately. I don't think I would mind at all, Felix asked. Why aren't you listening? Rin pulled her hand away. The man turned around. Don't let me intimidate you with force. Without saying anything else, the guy headed towards the exit. Irene jumped up after him as he opened the door. The second Felix pulled the handle, Rin thought, don't go. Why don't you take full responsibility? You have tamed me, so you must take responsibility. Stroke me the same way you always did before. If you touch me, I won't break. Come on, stroke me. Felix's hand began to shake more and more. He called out to Irene. Then, suddenly and forcefully, he pulled his hand out of her grip. If you don't want to see me lose my mind, stop. What good soundproofing. The same thing happened to the wall, but no one came. Whatever I do here, no one will know about it. Rin gulped in shock. Couldn't you just be a little more gentle? Felix clutched his face again and sighed heavily. Suddenly he calmed down. Do what you want. I lost. The desire you speak of is my murder? The guy lowered his head and immediately gave a negative answer. In that case, you want to break my limbs, gouge out my eyes and hang my heart? The stunned man shuddered. How could I do such a thing? Irene smiled. Then it turns out that you have no problems? The guy became stern. I can break you, Rin. I'm strong. You won't break me so easily, don't worry. You continue to say such words even when you see this wall. The body is softer than the wall, but even if you grab me hard, I won't break, Rin said happily. You know this very well yourself. Then she suddenly hugged the man, no matter what. Pressing herself against him, the girl said, Stroke me. Felix raised his trembling hand to Rin's head, stroking it. Then she asked, Well, how is it? The blushing man remained silent. He answered, breathing heavily, Heavier than fever, sweeter than death. He took a few strands of the girl's hair and began to examine them. At this time, Laraj spoke. And you are more impudent than I thought. Well, at this rate, it's only a matter of time. Soon you will inevitably taste hellish pleasure. You are just a part of me, and you don't even know what love is. If love were only pleasure, I would not exist. There is no greater and more powerful being than a demon. Laraj said, a demon cannot exist without a human. The demon part asked, what then is human love? Demon and angel, heaven and hell, pleasure and anger, happiness and suffering. Most often, love leaves behind terrible regrets, and I walk alongside them. To become a perfect demon, one must ascend to the human world. If you want, I will grant you freedom when this is all over. Man is a defective product that has not become a perfect being, and love is just a way to fill the deficiencies of the body or soul. This means that very soon I will be able to get the long-awaited freedom. I will absorb you, human, and become a perfect demon. However, why does my victim constantly feel pain? It hurts like hell, too. Stop feeling this way. A few hours later, the group arrived at the port, surprised. Rin asked, Will it be difficult for you to send the ship? You said you were heading to Kamoli Island? It's not a difficulty. I just can't get close to the island. Three pairs of eyes looked at the ship's captain in bewilderment. But there is no storm in sight, and the waves have not yet risen. As soon as you sail towards the island, the ship will start to sink. Felix asked, Why didn't you ask the capital for help? Because Kamoli is privately owned. The people of Pinello said that the sea was also their territory. But a month ago, the island was suddenly sold, and the people were taken away. We had no opportunity to report this to the capital. Many people died while passing through the island. They angered God. Half an hour later, Chloe and Rin sat and looked at Kamoli. Were the Getu members also destroyed? If they hadn't contacted me? The irritated girl scolded herself, lowering her head. Irene began to cry. Can I call myself a human being? Wanting to cheer her up, Chloe shoved a sandwich into Rin's mouth. The brunette said, sobbing. I have no right to eat this, Claudia replied. Not at all. We're all trying to survive. Looking at the sandwich, Irene asked, What should we do now? 
The aristocrat said, You can just buy a ship. Besides, we have loyal people whom you hired. A friend of mine recommended them. They can be trusted. They promised to erase their memories when they were done with the job. But I'm still worried. Chloe smiled awkwardly at Rin. Then she said, I'm glad I'm going so far away. I used to feel uncomfortable because people were constantly staring at me. Brother is also happy that he can breathe fresh air. Irene was very surprised by such revelations from Claudia, after which she answered quite happily. This calms me down. While the girls were talking, a seagull was flying towards them at high speed. A moment later, the sandwich immediately disappeared from the brunette's hands. Looking at her empty palm, Rin screamed, My food! Where did she come from? Stop, you food thief! Irene chased the bird for several minutes without success. As soon as the last of her strength left her, she plopped down on the sand. During her hysterics, Rin would sigh. Give me back my sandwich. Suddenly she raised her head, looking ahead in surprise. There was a guy lying on the shore, Rin thought. Is there a person there? The girl ran up to him and started shaking him. Are you alive? Suddenly the boy woke up and began coughing up water. Irene fidgeted around him, asking, Are you okay? The guy froze, looking at the girl. We haven't seen each other for a long time, the brunette smiled. And really, has it been a long time? So you are Andrew. The boy corrected her discontentedly. Actually, I'm Anthony, she said in shock. So you're alive! He irritably agreed. Anthony suddenly looked gloomy. I thought I was really going to die. A worried Irene began to cry, saying, Don't die. Then increase the risk premium. That way I won't die of resentment. Suddenly, a third voice was heard nearby. Is this someone you know? You suddenly ran away, so I followed you. Is he hurt? The man began to furtively examine the boy's condition. He noticed that the boy's lips were dry and chapped. Felix immediately handed him a bottle of water. Drink. Anthony thanked him and began to open the bottle. Rin thought. He was so thirsty. I'm really sorry. The girl decided to introduce him. Felix, this is Andrew. Anthony, I am. Why do you call me by a name that is not like mine? Ignoring this, Irene asked. Can you walk? Felix answered instead of Anthony. Right now he can only breathe. The man sat the boy on his back. You can make yourself comfortable. The stunned rescued man asked awkwardly, Are you an angel? Suddenly he heard a question from Rin. What happened to the others? The boy answered, his face downcast. They might still be alive. Then Anthony said, We need to save them before it's too late. Suddenly Felix spoke up. I hear a sound from the island. It sounded like a scream. All three of them looked at Kamoli. Flustered, Irene unconsciously grabbed Felix's hand. Are they just being nice to a dying man? Anthony told. The ship set off, cutting through the waves. At this rate, we'll arrive on the island very soon. It seems like a dangerous business, but you seem pleasantly excited. Once I finish the job, I will get big money. Suddenly, Anthony and the boatswain froze, staring into the distance. The boy took out a compass. Strange. Why did the wind suddenly die down? At that very second, the guy's eyes widened, staring at the device. The compass needle was spinning madly clockwise. The ship stopped and Anthony said, It looks like something went wrong. In our time, the boy, gobbling up food, said, And then the world turned upside down. When I came to, I realized that I was in a castle, Rin replied. But people say that the ship is being pulled into the sea. I don't know about that. I don't remember anything about falling into the sea. But judging by the fact that my clothes were wet, I fell in there. Halfway through the journey, I felt my mind clouding over. And then at some point, I fainted in the forest. Irene, fascinated by the story, asked, And what next? All the people turned out to be out of their minds. They are alive, but crazy. What especially scared me was that I couldn't eat that food. I held out for a few days, but I would have died that way, and I rushed back to the sea. I think that's why I survived, but I'm not sure about the others. In general, that place was strange and terribly frightening. If this is really the work of a spirit, then doesn't he look like a madman? I think we should tell our companions about this anyway. Felix turned his attention to the girl, who was overcome with thoughts. At that very moment, Anthony screamed, You can't lie on the table! Why are there only crazy people here? Maybe I'm crazy too. An hour later, Rin was talking to Chloe. The risk is too great and we should leave. If I retreat now, when will such an opportunity arise again? We need to find the spirit before those three make their move. I'd rather devote my life to struggle than achieve nothing. I didn't know Claudia was so determined. Okay, then shall we begin full preparations for departure? The next day, the ship set off towards the island. The helmsman raised his finger, saying, The wind is fair today. An uncertain voice was heard from behind. But is everything really okay? The man turned around, asking the girl, Are you talking about life? I've heard so many things from clients. How can we, mercenaries, worry about this? 
If something happens to the memory erasing magic, we'll be in trouble. We are always prepared for death. If we sense danger, we can give up everything. Sorry to interrupt, but the island's buildings are already visible. Chloe and Irene immediately turned their gaze forward. A round stone clearing and a building on a hill opened up before their eyes. This is an architectural style that is no longer used today. That pattern signifies a special, forgotten faith. But that does not mean that nature has been restored. Are you saying that time has turned back? Is that possible? Suddenly the girl felt something inside herself. She started to fall, but Felix managed to catch her. Are you okay? The surprised girl looked at the guy's face. Yes, everything is fine. Seeing her expression, the man instantly blushed. He immediately turned away, asking for forgiveness. The girl accepted him. What was that, spirit? It doesn't look like we hit anything. Judging by how restless the spirits are, there is definitely a strong spirit here. It's not magic, but I can definitely say that it's not an illusion. I will move to the island using teleportation magic. No way. Space is twisted. It won't allow us to invade the island. There is no other word for it. You can think of it as a space of another dimension. Suddenly the archer said, I will try to shoot from the bow. The boy reached into the quiver on his back, pulling out an arrow. With a skillful and sharp movement, he pulled the arrow onto the bowstring. Cutting through the air, the arrow flew briskly towards the island. Right in the air, she hit the barrier, shattering into pieces. Everyone present on the ship was shocked by the sight. The frightened magician asked, Who are you to know about such a thing? Just a man with a lot of random thoughts in his head. A worried Irene asked, Then what should we do now? Suddenly she turned to Chloe, who had climbed aboard the ship. The shocked brunette screamed, Why did you climb up there? At that very second, Rin froze from the loud beating of her heart. Suddenly, huge waves rose up near the ship. To everyone's surprise, Claudia jumped overboard to Irene's screams. The ship was wrecked. The unconscious brunette was carried to the shore. Coming to her senses, the girl began to moan and squint. My head. What happened? My body feels like it's bound by something hard. Only it's not really an object, but rather someone's skin. Without opening her eyes, Rin began to rub and feel someone's body. Suddenly, Irene came to her senses, realizing that she was lying on top of a person. The girl stood up and began to examine the one who was holding her close. Felix lay unconscious in front of her, his eyes dramatically closed. Shocked, Irene looked at the guy. Such a handsome man. Now is not the time for this. We need to get up urgently. The girl tried to get out of his grip, but to no avail. She collapsed exhausted onto his chest. What strength! Impossible! Instead, the girl decided to wake him up by pointing her finger at his face. The man shuddered, saying quietly, Sweet aroma. Delighted, Irene immediately asked, Have you come to your senses? She began to question the blinking man. Remember what happened? Felix tried to come to his senses, only asking the girl again. Suddenly, the man hugged Rin around the waist, pressing her to himself. He spoke sharply. Are you talking about what came over me last night? Then Felix began to kiss Irene's neck, moving lower. He rubbed his face against her dress, inhaling the sweet scent. The stunned brunette thought, We haven't even kissed yet! Stuttering nervously, she tried to call out to the man. Suddenly Felix started, waking up from a long trance. Pushing the girl away, the guy said, So this is reality, sorry. He blushed, realizing that he had confused a dream with reality. This has been bothering me since the events on the train. The girl decided to ask a question. Why did you hug me? Before I lost consciousness, I grabbed you, worried that you would get hurt. To be honest, I did it unconsciously, so I don't know the reason. Thank you very much. Thanks to you, I don't have a scratch on me. Now that we've come to our senses, how about we take a look around? We saw this building from the ship. It seems that the sea is the path leading to this space. Judging by the surroundings and the temperature, it is spring here, unlike the rest of the world. I think so. It's a bit chilly in wet clothes. Suddenly, the couple heard laughter not far from them. Two children ran happily and played with each other. Felix said, People wore such clothes 4,000 years ago. Stunned by the knowledge, Rin asked, How do you know this? The guy answered awkwardly, The soul fragment of Laraj told me. The girl was even more surprised. Can you really communicate with him? He's annoying. He starts talking to me out of the blue. Suddenly, the children, noticing the couple, screamed loudly, Strangers! After which the boy presented them with a basket of bread and wine. Rin tried to talk to them. Why are you giving us this? The happy guy replied, So that you eat and get dressed. The girl laughed, saying, Then I'll change my clothes first. No, eat first. We need to make sure you try the food. Irene winced, asking awkwardly, Food first? Felix lowered his head, deciding to act cunningly. Thanks to you we were able to avoid cold and hunger. The man smiled and sparkled. You are so kind to us. 
The boy fidgeted uncomfortably as he answered, It's our job. Then Felix asked, Have you eaten yet? The children suddenly froze. The guy answered right away, No, we don't have to eat. We're not hungry. You can't do that. To be as tall as me, you need to eat well. Suddenly a girl spoke up, But brother must eat it. I'm already tall enough, so it's not a big deal. After these words, the man took a loaf of bread from the basket. Felix handed the bread to the children, who looked at it in surprise. They looked at each other uncertainly, not knowing what to do. How did you come up with such a laudable idea to give us food? When the master invites strangers, we give them food and clothing. Felix decided to clarify. Why is he inviting them? Because he likes Alithia. Irene asked again about Alithia. You don't even know that? It's the spirit of life force. Alithia loves festivals, so they take place here every day. Rin paid special attention to the words spirit of life force. This means that Chloe will be able to make a contract with a spirit. The children, having eaten their fill, jumped up. Anyway, we'll go. See you again. Felix answered them, be careful on the way back. Waving at them, Irene asked the man, are these children real people? They died thousands of years ago. No matter how much you turn back time, the dead cannot be brought back. She answered with surprise. But you said it was not an illusion. The guy thought for a moment and clarified, not an illusion, but a fleeting image, a shell without a soul. It looks like someone is trying to hold on to the illusion by force. At the same time, Claudia woke up in a dark space. She screamed desperately, Rin, brother, is anyone there? From the depths of darkness, someone called her name. Chloe asked, who are you? You rely on someone all your life, right? Stunned, Claudia said, Duke Lemberg? How did you end up here? Even in this situation, you count on Lady Amber. You brought yourself to hell without me even having to try. Even if you reproach me, I am not obliged to report. If you are always stubborn, the people you love will soon leave you. Felix has already left our world, so only Lady Amber remains. The Duke continued slowly. You only bring your loved ones to death. It's a good thing I didn't have to make any effort, because you are very gentle. The Crown Prince spoke. Always weak and inept. Poor Claudia. The Duke added laughingly. Finish this and come to us. Hysteria washed over Chloe. She began to cry, refusing. Clenching her hands into fists, she said firmly, I will change. Gathering her strength within herself, she cried out, I will gather my resolve and become stronger. How interesting. I look forward to your actions. Although your efforts will not change anything one way or another. Suddenly, two flames burst into flames in place of the Duke and the Crown Prince. You can't protect anyone. You're just a doll with a pretty face. Nobody wants you to stand up for them. It's a waste of effort. The girl asked with an indifferent look. You again? Everyone is destined to die because of you. You probably don't want to live anymore. It will be enough if you die alone. Why don't you die? At the same time, Irene was thinking. I wonder where Chloe is now. Felix came out to her, dressed in a tunic. Rin, have you changed? The girl cried out in delight at what she saw, blushing. If there was an incarnation of the sun god, would it look like this? The man, not knowing her thoughts, asked, Is everything okay? Yes, but I think we need to meet with the local mayor. Okay then, shall we eat and go? Rin was surprised. When did you manage to get this? I put it in the magic bag before boarding the ship. The girl took out a cookie and immediately took a bite. Suddenly she winced, spitting it out. So salty? Yes, but if you try it, the taste is very good. Irene started rummaging around in her bag. I took something too. A second later, artifact rings were placed on all of her fingers. Felix assessed the equipment. Rin asked, Do you want one? The guy slowly began to touch her hand, taking off the ring. He carefully removed the artifact from his ring finger. Putting on the ring, the man declared, This will be enough. This picture also stunned the girl in her heart. These clothes are very comfortable. It's a little awkward because I feel like I'm naked. So you've been looking away for some time now? How can I say that I do this because he is very beautiful? Finally arrived. All that's left is to meet the mayor. Dancing people in light clothes appeared before the couple. Felix noticed. The society is very open. Rin agreed. Suddenly someone addressed them. I see you here for the first time. The smiling girl said, Welcome to Alios Castle. Irene and Felix immediately took the offered glasses of wine. Felix turned to the girl. She waited questioningly. The man asked, How can we meet with the mayor? Irene dropped her glass in shock, and everyone around froze, looking at them. I'm going crazy over this place, and you behaved in such a way to get noticed? However, instead of answering the question, they were told, You haven't eaten. What's the matter? Food, alcohol, even theater, all for free. Nobody works here, so you can just enjoy it. Is there a person in the world who would reject something free? We are delighted by the kindness of the mayor, who allows us to enjoy this. Therefore, we would like to express our gratitude personally. 
Felix added, We enjoyed the food and alcohol to our heart's content, and we are curious why the mayor is not with us now. I wouldn't mind having a couple of drinks with him. The musician chuckled. When strangers come, this happens too. What's wrong with us wanting to have a drink with him? Do you think he'll be interested in you if you have a drink with him? Rin replied in shock. I didn't mean it that way at all. Suddenly, a commanding voice was heard. What's all the fuss? A stately, long-haired man was walking towards them. What's the interest? He began to carefully examine the new noisy guests. As he approached, he began to ask menacingly, What is this? Demonic spawn? How dare you crawl here? Irene thought. We used magic that blurred the appearance. How could he recognize Felix and also see the demonic essence? I smelled a demonic smell and rushed here. If you came to my territory to die, I will gladly kill you. Felix didn't remain silent. I see you hate demons very much. I am of the same opinion. The guy tried not to make unnecessary movements. The green-haired man chuckled. Do you hate yourself? At that very moment, Chamberlain began to cast a spell. The surprised stranger asked, So demons can use magic? Felix smiled slightly. Depends on who's using it. I will personally check what you are capable of. Try to run away. I will pursue you until I destroy you. Suddenly there was an explosion, and something suddenly lifted Felix into the air. The sharp and loud sound deafened and frightened almost all people. The voice still tormented Chloe. Surrender. You've been wandering in the dark for too long. Don't waste your energy and wait for someone to save you. The aristocrat slowly raised her head and whispered, Shut up. Just as you watch me, I have been watching you for a long time. You want to parasitize on me, so you will never leave here. But no matter how much you pull me down, it won't change anything. There will come days when I will fall without strength, but I will still stubbornly climb to the heights, such as you have never dreamed of. How dare you underestimate me? The girl fell silent, waiting for an answer, but no one spoke. Then she closed her eyes, trying to figure out who to ask for help. I can't see anything in front of me. Can you lend me your light? I just heard the sound of the sea. You're here, aren't you, Nix? Sylphide, I felt a cool wind nearby. Earthworm, if you can hear me, could you at least show me the way a little? She tried to call the spirits. If there is anyone here, please answer. Of course, there can be no spirits in this illusory place. Suddenly there was a flash, quickly cutting through the darkness. Claudia noticed ancient stone walls around her. The girl immediately blossomed. Salamander, so you were here! She asked herself, was he always strong there? Suddenly, footsteps were heard approaching Chloe. A woman in a blue dress and blue hair was walking towards her. A beautiful stranger has spoken. I have come to your call, child, Chloe replied, taken aback. I've heard that voice before. Was that you calling me? The blue-haired woman replied. Yes, that's right. I called you here. Claudia was very surprised. Were you following me? I wanted you to get out on your own, so I waited until you called. Not understanding anything, the aristocrat asked. But why? I wanted to reach out to you when things got hard and lonely. You did well. Despair and hope will soon become your foundation. In all seriousness, Claudia asked, Are you an independent spirit? The stranger smiled at this question. And what if yes? Chloe pulled the woman's arm harder, pulling her closer. Then she screamed, Then make a contract with me! If you agree, I will try not to cause you any difficulties. I don't know what situation you're in, but you need me, right? If you sign a contract, I will do anything for you. The spirit laughed. It is not for a human child to speak of this. Sorry. Did I put pressure on you? But I really meant it. You communicate with spirits so easily, you can even summon the king? I'm here because I couldn't make a contract with any spirit. The woman asked. Did you come here on purpose? Chloe replied. Of course. I was very desperate. It was unexpected for the spirit. I didn't want to disturb you. If you sign a contract, I'll leave in a flash. Why do you want to sign a contract so badly? The aristocrat thought for a moment before answering sincerely. There is a person I want to protect. That's why I want to stand firmly on my feet. Hearing the answer, the spirit invited Claudia to follow her. When you sign a contract, you will not be alone. You will become a companion of the spirit until the end. I wanted to understand what kind of child you are, but I can trust you with my request. Chloe, surprised, asked, Have you been checking me out? I haven't seen people with such strong abilities for a long time. I'm sorry if I offended you and caused you a lot of trouble. I wanted to cope on my own but I have a child with whom I'm unable to cope. Both girls approached the exit, where the sun blinded them. Could you lend him a helping hand for me? Chloe looked at the pendant the woman held out. Smiling, the spirit added, This child will be useful to you. They approached a tall obelisk on which runes were carved. There was a small wooden chest next to the obelisk. At the same time, a battle was taking place on another part of the island. Felix, holding Irene, fought off the stranger's attacks, 
The green-haired man did not slow down and continued to attack. Suddenly, a bloody scratch appeared on his cheek. In one fell swoop, he healed her with magic. It's ridiculous. Felix was gradually running out of breath, casting a bunch of spells. He decided to send several shells at the enemy at once. One of them hit the man square in the arm, spraying blood. Worried Rin, hanging on the shoulder, said, We got it! The training dedicated to allowing me to cast spells again was not in vain. At that very second, the guy felt a sharp feeling of nausea, after which he coughed loudly, spitting out clots of blood. The brunette screamed, frightened. Felix, are you okay? It's okay. Hold on tight, otherwise you'll fall. The tired guy added, By the way, he's terribly persistent. His body may be somewhere on the island. We need to find it. It's a bit tiring. Now the hide-and-seek games are over. The stranger with the wooden hand rushed in pursuit again. Felix cried out desperately, Watch out! The branches were approaching them. For a demon, your magic is pretty weak. So you're a contractor? But for him, your magic is too pure and unsuitable. In principle, there is no difference. Irene stood between him and Felix. The green-haired man asked her to back off, but she refused. Rin flinched when he asked, Are you asking me to kill you first? The girl said, In general, I understand why you hate demons. Did you lose everything because of the canal that connects the island to the underworld? The man was losing his temper. Once you understand, get out of the way. Felix locked the demon inside himself to prevent something like this from happening again. He is a hero who saved many human lives. Then it can simply be destroyed along with the demon inside. If he dies, people will revere him as a true hero. After absorbing a demon, he will be considered the same demon. So if I kill him, people will really be happy. Irene had to protect Felix. She thought desperately, Has this happened to you? Or to someone dear to you? The man called out to the branches, answering, This is none of your business. There are people who summoned a demon and did it to Felix. If I tell you where they are, will you kill them? He refused, Rin asked. Then why do you want to kill Felix? The magician answered, Because together with him, I will get rid of the demon. Why do you want to kill him and not those who did this to him? It would be the same as if people were asked back then why a demon attacked them. At that very moment, tree branches wrapped around the girl's body. The man lifted the boy and the girl. The conversation dragged on for a long time. Last words? Rin said. Can I hit you on the head? Ignoring this taunt, he declared, Die. With one hand, he commanded the roots, wrapping them around his victims. Felix's limbs and neck were crushed by thick branches. With the next move, he did the same to Irene. Then he clenched his hand into a fist to finish what he started. The brunette closed her eyes, awaiting the inevitable end of her life. But nothing happened. A second later, she opened her eyes. Felix immediately grabbed her, tearing the roots apart with his bare hands. The guy held the trembling girl in his arms without saying a word. Rin wanted to thank him, but then she stopped. Looking at his face, she immediately understood. This is not Felix. Demonic spawn, you have finally shown your true colors. Without answering, Felix began to cast a demonic spell. He created a magical bow and immediately pulled the string. The man screamed. The pathetic demon lost his temper. How amazing! He couldn't finish speaking. The arrow that was sent tore off his arm. The stunned wood mage looked at the affected area. Then he screamed and fell to his knee, clutching the wound. Suddenly he felt danger approaching. Felix was already loading a new arrow from the demonic bow. The man smiled, admitting his sudden defeat. The red flame slowly engulfed the grinning mage. There was a powerful explosion, showering Felix and Irene with shrapnel. As the smoke cleared, Rin noticed only scorched earth around her. The guy slowly lowered his hands as soon as it was all over. Then his gaze darted sharply towards the brunette. The girl looked back awkwardly and fearfully. Felix? Seeing his eyes, which were different from blue, she asked again. No, Laraj? Finally we meet you in person, Irene Amber. Because of you, my heart hurts. Rin didn't understand what he was talking about. Suddenly, he grabbed her hand and pulled her sharply towards him. Make it stop suffering from pain. Smile less. No, better yet, don't smile at all. Looking at him with puppy eyes, Rin asked, What are you talking about? Leraj, in the guise of Felix, shuddered and froze, looking at the girl. Then he pushed her away sharply, asking, Why are you like this? The man sighed heavily, not finishing his sentence. However, Irene decided to find out. Why did you stop mid-sentence? Actually, I wanted to say that you are so tiny in real life. The brunette didn't like this answer. Are we done now? Wait a minute. What about Felix? You didn't absorb his soul completely? Don't touch me. He just fainted for a while. But until this moment, you never showed up. There's nothing special about it. We just made a deal. Shocked, Rin grabbed Liraj by the lapels. What deal? Isn't your attitude towards me and towards him too different? Just know that you are only whole because you are in Felix's body.
Now come on quick, what kind of deal is this? The contents of the deal with the demon must remain secret. At that very moment, Irene started crying. Is Felix in big trouble? The guy grabbed his chest. Don't make that face. Your heart hurts. The frozen brunette said, This is called remorse. What conscience? Where would a demon even have a conscience? Covering her ears, Rin screamed, Why are you angry? The irritated demon covered his face with his hand, sighing heavily. Suddenly his eyes lit up and he said, You cheeky little brat. I can finish off someone like you with just one finger. He threateningly pulled his hand towards the tearful Irene. However, the demon only wiped a tear from the frightened girl's cheek. What a stupid body this damn idiot has. Irene thought about it. For a moment, it seemed that it really was Felix in front of me. I was slowly absorbing his soul, and this time I got more. Rin asked with an uncertain tone, How much did you get? The answer stunned the girl. Third, she couldn't believe her ears. At that very moment, she began to sob loudly, sniffling. Laraj immediately said, No one dies from this, so don't cry. Suddenly, they heard a familiar voice nearby. Rin! Brother! A joyful Chloe ran towards them with a small chest in her hands. With a smile on her face, she shouted to the couple, You are both safe. Rin hugged her. What a blessing that you are also unharmed. Chloe asked, Why are you wearing such strange clothes? Let's not talk about clothes. Something incredible just happened. On the way here, everything suddenly started to collapse. Is this somehow connected? So everything we saw was fake. Now we have a real view of the island. In general, I understand. Then let's go make a contract with the spirit. Irene's mouth dropped open in surprise. With spirit? The brunette said in surprise. We just defeated him, didn't we? Then Claudia tilted her head questioningly. It can't be. After all, I have the heart of the spirit. Then she showed them the chest. Not understanding anything, Rin asked. Does a spirit have a body? If the spirit leaves the realm of nature, it needs a human body. Will it be clear if I say that the body is the price of freedom? Then, if we threaten to pierce his heart, he will crawl out himself. The aristocrat looked at her brother in bewilderment. Realizing it wasn't Felix, she asked, Who are you? The scarlet heart in the chest beat out a steady, loud rhythm. Chloe closed it, being in a dark space. Are you going to make a contract with the spirit that did this to your brother? You've finally gone crazy. The conclusion of the contract has taken up all your thoughts. Why did you destroy your brother? And you said you would protect him. Claudia shook her head. What's your problem? Thinking about what that spirit did to Irene and her brother, the girl was breathing heavily. My heart is burning with anger. He must have had his reasons. I'll meet him and find out everything. After all, I myself will choose the spirit with whom I will make a contract. Sometime later, the wood mage sat opposite the obelisk. The angry man turned his head towards the voice. What are you doing here? He saw Chloe. You look like that demon spawn. Be careful with your words. Because of you, the demon almost took your brother's soul. The dissatisfied spirit asked, So what? Have you come to take revenge on me? How did you guess? Have you lost something by any chance? The man rushed towards the girl holding the chest. Give it to me! Aren't you curious why I have it? Only you and the mayor know about this place. Don't you dare speak so stupidly and carelessly about her. Suddenly he froze and flinched. Stop! How did you get it? The pendant that the blue-haired woman had taken off now hung around Chloe's neck. Now do you understand? Let's get to know each other properly. I'm your new mistress. Ilithaya, I will make a contract with you and we will leave the island together. The man calmed down and reluctantly asked, Why me? Pinello, you were angry with them when they came to her grave. I will allow revenge, he answered. I can handle it myself. You're tied to this island and you don't know how the world has changed, right? I'll give you the trading group. What you do with it is up to you. Elethia looked away. If I leave, this island will fall. I can barely keep his appearance. He should have fallen 4,000 years ago. Claudia decided to ask. Is this for Arista? Yes, I did materialize her exactly, but then she disappeared. You don't know why she doesn't show herself to you? She wants you to let go of your regrets and leave this place. After all, it is death that fills life with high meaning. An artificial flower that imitates a living one will not bear fruit. You are a spirit, so you understand little about human lives. But he should know about the natural course of nature? Even if something turns to ashes, you must protect it to the end. She realized it was time for her to go and handed you over to me. And you must realize that it is time to keep it in your soul. This is called a man's duty. Elithia began to cry. A few hours later, everyone standing on the ship watched as the island sank. Looking at this picture, Laraj asked, What about the spirit? He probably doesn't want to see such a sight at all. Didn't I tell you to wrap your robe tightly around yourself because the magic had worn off? What? Don't tell me what to do and how to do it, little man. Don't argue, demon. You don't even know what's going on. 
Deciding not to take any risks, the man silently pulled the hood over his head. Then he said in a dissatisfied tone, I'm stuffy. I'll sit in the cabin. I hope that next time it will be a little brother. A demon in human form entered the cabin without removing his hood. Seeing him, Irene beamed and cried out joyfully, Felix! But the man said it wasn't him, and the girl's face immediately changed. Leiraj threw back his hood. Everyone is treating me so coldly, Rin replied, displeased. Of course. Bring Felix back, the demon said. Do you know the god Janus? It's you right now. What else should I do? Give me back my angel. I'll die without him. While she was crying, the guy asked, What if your angel remembers this conversation? Irene's face immediately froze in silent shock, after which she nervously fidgeted in place, under Laraja's grin. Don't worry, he won't remember. The brunette asked, Are you a hooligan? The demon asked a counter-question. Are you a two-faced person, then? Rin headed for the exit. I don't need to communicate with the demon. The man decided to stop her and reached out to grab her. The guy pulled the girl by the hood, lifting her off the floor. He asked, stuttering, Why are you giving in so easily? Should I resist until my clothes rip? Turning her head, Irene asked, Why did you grab me? Leiraj shuddered under her puppy-like and sweet gaze. He dumped the girl. Your angel will wake up soon, so just wait, Rin decided to ask. Come to think of it, you're not Leiraj? The man chuckled. I am part of Leiraj, so Leiraj, but I don't consider the dead skin that has separated from me to be a part of me. Then you can call me Dead Skin Laraj, Rin answered, getting up and shaking herself off. Too long. Then she smiled and said, For convenience, I will call you Larry. Not bad, Larry, the man thought. How strange. It was unclear who he was talking to. Was it because I had absorbed a quarter of the soul? You seem to like the owner of this body very much. Maybe I just need to wait. Why is it so hard? Irene looked at him questioningly. Holding his heart, the man suddenly turned bright red. Half an hour later, Felix slowly and hesitantly opened his eyes. Seeing that the guy had woken up, Irene decided to call out to him. Lying in bed, the man said, Rin, I want to look at the sea. Toward sunset, Irene walked alone along the beach. Everything worked out well in the end, so why don't I feel relieved? The island we bought sank. The people we hired turned out to be useless. I almost died of suffocation and almost lost Felix. I greatly underestimated Sarav and couldn't even imagine much. For example, that making a contract with a spirit would be so difficult. However, it was really lucky that none of us died. While the brunette was looking at the sunset, a familiar voice called out to her. Smiling Felix asked, What are you thinking about? He approached the girl. The sea is incredibly beautiful, isn't it? Did you know? The southern part of the sea is called the Mermaid's Tears. Is that why it's so beautiful? A lot has happened in such a short time. Eventually, Chloe found a spirit with whom she made a contract. I asked the spirit if he had the ability to cleanse magic. But he replied that only angels or God were capable of such a thing. The demon that lives inside you is quite unusual. Laraj may be a demon, but sometimes he shows his human side. He tells me that over time we will assimilate. Irene lowered her head and thought, Assimilated? Surely they will gradually become similar in the ways in which they differed. But still, Felix and the demon are completely different. Radically. Rin mumbled something, but the man didn't hear and asked again. She turned her head and screamed, Of course you and the demon are different! Felix smiled when he heard her. Maybe we should go into the sea? Rin was surprised. So suddenly? I can't even swim. The man reassured her. Don't worry, we won't go too deep. Suddenly he grabbed the brunette in his arms and went straight into the water. Giving my soul to a demon was the worst decision I ever made. Irene asked. What are you talking about? You had no choice. But if I just died, at least I wouldn't hurt you. The girl grabbed her chest. Felix asked. Do you want to leave? She put her arm around him, asking in return. Aren't you afraid of hell? I plan to hold on, but I don't want to show you my hell. You said you would take responsibility. The guy replied, I was deprived of this right from the very beginning. She pressed her face to his, saying, I can't let you go. Felix moved closer in response. What a bold statement. I told you, I have no right. After which they kissed. Irene was simply shocked by this turn of events. She blushed in a second. Felix was also blushing with embarrassment. Giving in to passion, Rin closed her eyes, enjoying the kiss. She was trembling and trying to call out to Felix through the kiss. Opening her eyes, she felt them begin to fall. They fell onto the shallow shore, without separating from each other. Despite the cool water, they continued their passionate kiss. In a fit of love, Irene unconsciously lifted her leg. Felix took advantage of this opportunity and grabbed her hip. To the girl's moan, he began to stroke the brunette's naked body. Their lips parted, and Rin whispered the boy's name. 
Instead of answering, the man lightly bit her lower lip. Suddenly the girl turned her head away, stopping him. Seriously, Felix asked, does it hurt or are you scared? She answered, that's not it. But the guy stood up abruptly. Your bold behavior made me think that you are not afraid of anything. Then he spoke in a cold tone. Don't hold me. If you do this again, I will consider it a sign of my readiness to go all the way, descending to the most primitive human instincts. After which he went deeper into the water and began to watch the sunset. Wait, you didn't even give me a chance to explain. If you leave when I can't even stop you. Left alone in the water, she asked. Are you really gone? Felix began to remember. When did I first meet Irene? Please don't tell anyone and study resistance magic. Felix, who was reading the book, was surprised by such an unexpected request. I wonder how long it's been since I heard the word magic. He looked at the girl. It's the first time I've seen her so close. She is more persistent than usual and wary of me. Am I scaring her? The man began to examine her face. A triangular mouth. And eyes that look up at me like a cat. A street cat that you want to take in and tame. Felix suddenly shuddered. And what am I thinking about? He turned to the girl, causing her to shudder sharply. Thank you for pointing out my weak point. No matter how much you study, there will always be shortcomings. They need to be corrected. That's what learning is all about. After a while, Felix sat quietly and read a book. Turning the page, he clicked on Irene, who started. Chloe has some things to do today, so she's gone out for a bit. What a pity, because you found free time on the weekend to see her. The girl answered sheepishly. Nothing. Everything is fine. It's my fault that I came without warning. I'll go. We have desserts ready. At least have some tea. Drooling, she still decided to refuse the offer. It's a pity, but I'm hungry. If we had tea together, I wouldn't be so lonely. The brunette couldn't refuse this and immediately took the place. For a street cat, there is no better and tastier food than homemade food. The guy asked, Do you like it? She immediately agreed. It's good that I bought everything in advance. They drank tea in silence. I thought she was a cat, but judging by the way she eats. With such chubby cheeks, she also looks like a chipmunk. Irene choked, asking, Why are you looking like that? I'm sorry, I just like watching you eat. Suddenly, Claudia's voice sounded nearby. Rin perked up. I came as soon as I heard about your arrival. Did you wait long? No, your brother took care of me. We were waiting for you together. Brother? He didn't say anything strange about me, did he? Felix thought. She's not a chipmunk or a cat, but a puppy? Rin answered happily. No, he was very kind to me. The guy continued to think. Or is she like this only with me? The girl noticed the man and shuddered. Chloe flushed. He had definitely said something. Rin assured her he hadn't. Just my cat. What was I just thinking about Chloe's friend? Felix blushed and awkwardly lowered his head, clearing his throat. He decided to ask Claudia about her, but a little later. Irene? I know everything about her in the world. When I talk about something sad, she listens to me calmly and doesn't even show that she doesn't want to. And she always says that I'm not guilty of anything. I love hearing these words so much that I want to see her every day. Felix replied, You've met a wonderful friend, Chloe. Unlike other vain people, she is a caring person. Thank you for talking to me at such a late hour. Good night. Suddenly the maid addressed him. Young master, you have a guest. Behind the maid stood a wet Irene with a bruise on her face. The girl sat down on the sofa. I apologize for such a late visit, Felix replied. It's okay. I couldn't sleep anyway because of work. It's raining heavily and we have many empty rooms. You can have a good rest. Thank you. I disturbed you. You can get back to work. Nothing. I was just about to take a little break from the routine. The man sat casually and smiled at the brunette. Irene felt slightly uncomfortable and began to fidget on the sofa. Then she touched her cheek and screamed, I just fell down the stairs. The guy decided to develop the topic. It seems like you often fall off it. The girl laughed as she answered, I'm just a little fussy. Suddenly Felix declared, I will heal you. The girl was surprised. No need, a regular potion is enough for such a bruise. The guy decided to convince her, Magic is better than potions. My soul aches terribly at the sight of the wounded Lady Amber. Would you allow me to heal Chloe's best friend? Irene immediately became embarrassed and fidgeted. If it helps. The man got up from the sofa. Thank you for letting me. He held out his hand to her as she answered. It is I who should thank you. Suddenly, the entire room glowed green from the spell. After a couple of seconds, Felix said, It's done. Does it hurt now? Yes. And I felt like I was feeling a lot more energetic. Irene beamed with happiness. You are very kind. Thank you. Taken aback by her reaction, the embarrassed guy replied, I'm glad. Did it start that day? Or from our first meeting? All of Irene's words seemed beautiful and sweet to me, as if I was going crazy. I confess that I want to stay together forever. Felix froze and looked at his sister in shock. 
Otherwise, Rin will have to continue living in that bastard's house. I think the idea is not bad, although a bit eccentric. If those fanatical Chloe freaks hear this, they will stretch out their little hands to Irene with the aim of harming her, considering the overall situation and what might happen in this house. Leaving her close and protecting her will be the most reliable thing. Then she won't get hurt anymore, and I'll be able to protect that smile. After some time, Irene arrived at the Chamberlain estate. Irene no longer felt uncomfortable around me, and I learned a lot about her. For example, she prefers grapefruit tart instead of macarons, and she loves almost everything from desserts, except lollipops. Just watching her made every day full of joy. I definitely felt joy no matter what she said. In my eyes and thoughts, it was beautiful and sweet. Whenever she told me something, I was so happy that my heart ached. Having experienced such sweetness that cannot be compared to anything in the world, when our eyes met, I became so greedy that just looking at her was no longer enough for me. It seemed like it was just a light rain that wet his collar, but at some point I was simply completely carried away by a wave. Before the cat was tamed, I was tamed. I tried desperately to protect Irene, but the hell inside me was seething more and more. Did I faint? Where am I, inside my mind? Now is not the time for this. Before, I wouldn't even lose consciousness. Are you saying that if it weren't for this demon, I would have figured everything out? Looking at the silhouette, Felix said, so this is what you look like. Any complaints about my appearance? Pull yourself together. You're a little out of it from fainting, but your loved one is about to die. Felix clicked his tongue. Is there no way to wake up from a faint? What, have you come to a dream? Maybe I should finally wake you up. In exchange, give me one-fifth of my soul. But you know what? Do you think the situation will change somehow when you wake up? Don't you get it? You lost a long time ago. Even if you wake up right now, only defeat awaits you. Just look at yourself. You'll never beat him. You can't even use your cool magic anymore. Even if you have a powerful force, you don't know how to control it well. You can't even control demonic power, right? Felix replied. So what? Time is of the essence. Get to the point. The demon smiled. You are smart. Give me your body. If you lend it to me, I'll sort it all out and save your woman. Of course, not for free. If you want to protect her, give a quarter of your soul. Felix replied. I agree, so get up already. Okay, you don't have to rush me. I was just getting ready. Okay, let's make a deal. I warn you, it will hurt a lot. It feels like not only my soul, but something else is leaving my body. But why do I go so far? It's their fault. They don't deserve a quiet life. I will give them a taste of the light of heaven by pretending to have opened the way to purgatory. And then I will take a breath and throw them into the depths of hell. Exactly. Morality, dignity, my convictions are disappearing. So what? I'm not a priest. What did I want to protect? What made me smile? What made me shed tears? What was I angry about? I don't remember. What do I have left? Suddenly, an image of a smiling Irene appeared in his mind. Love and desire. It was impossible to give him your soul. I said I wouldn't let anyone hurt her again, but I end up hurting her myself. So before I hurt her, I have to run. Just go. After all, I have to do everything to protect her. At this moment, the sun was slowly setting below the horizon. Claudia sat in front of the window, looking at the rooftops. Suddenly, the sound of a door creaking and drops falling on the floor was heard. Smiling, Chloe asked, Irene, are you back? Brother also went to the sea. Perhaps you met. The girl shuddered when she saw Rin wet. Did you fall into the sea? There was no answer. The brunette stood silently in the passage. The worried aristocrat also couldn't find anything to say. She jumped up sharply, grabbing her robe. Are you okay? First, cover yourself with this so you don't catch a cold. Unable to bear the silence, Chloe screamed. Who? Drops of water slowly fell to the floor in complete silence. Claudia tried to reach Irene. Are you crying? Rin suddenly turned to Chloe, who listened attentively. The girl said with a trembling voice, Felix is gone. Forever. This information struck the aristocrat to the depths of her soul. She froze and tried for a few seconds to digest what she had heard. Clutching her face, she couldn't hold back her tears. The two girls stood in the doorway, hugging and crying. The 32nd emperor died after a long illness. Lucas Darian Loxitian became the 33rd emperor. The newly minted emperor sat languidly on the throne. He lazily turned his attention to the guest who had walked up to him. How are you today, your majesty the emperor? The blonde was delighted. It seems you know a thing or two about manners. Of course. I congratulate you with all my heart on your ascension to the throne. It's natural, so I don't feel anything special. It would have been stranger if I had not ascended the throne. The duke agreed. Then they, together with Lemberg, glanced at the same place. If I weren't in this place, I would have already killed whoever took it. What scary words. What should you do to get rid of your mistrust? Cedric added, I'm not even interested in this role, Lucas said, displeased. What kind of you? 
Sit down normally. Since this is His Majesty's order, of course I will carry it out. It seems even you value life. You say you're not interested in this role? Warming up, Cedric replied. In fact, that's true. I don't like to give up fun for boring things. Lucas frowned at these words, not taking his eyes off his brother. He, in turn, looked questioningly at the emperor. Okay, simplicity is both your plus and minus. Suddenly, a priest listener flew into the throne room, bypassing the guards. A dissatisfied Constantine greeted the emperor. What impudence! Is this how you congratulate me on my ascension to the throne? He replied, I apologize, but that is not important now. The long-haired man continued. Claudia returned. She finally left Irene Amber and came to me? Constantine answered. No, she is with her, and what is more important? It's okay. If Claudia comes back to me, Amber can be dealt with. Your Majesty, you should listen to Sir Constantine to the end. I don't think she had any other reasons. I forgive you, so speak. It seems Claudia and Irene infiltrated the island using a trading group. The problem is that a great spirit also appeared with them. He can be considered to have the power of a spirit king. Or rather, now he is that very king of spirits. You said it would be hard for Claudia to sign a contract. It seems that she managed to do this by some trick. The duke chuckled. Well, well, amazing, Irene Amber. It's only a matter of time before Claudia makes history. Although this was beyond my expectations, the day will come, when she belongs to me entirely and completely. There is plenty of time. It's not scary if it's not now. However, for the sake of this day, we need to rise even higher. Lucas raised his hand. Well then, let the war of conquest begin. It's been three and a half years since Felix left. In one of the offices, potions were arranged on a shelf. The girl was writing something on a piece of paper when she suddenly heard a voice. Irene, are you awake? The brunette immediately froze, stopping her pen. Turning around, she noticed Chloe. Long time no see. I saw the light. Are you up late researching again? You also worked until late at night today. Although if you continue to live on stimulants, you will definitely die prematurely, Claudia asked. Can I take a look? Irene gave the go-ahead. Three and a half years had passed since Felix left. Chloe agreed. Too much has changed in that time, hasn't it? Lucas is the emperor, Benjamin is his right hand, and Constantine is his left. Aristocracy, royalty, and religion became one. And that's not all. Together with Alithia, I rose to a high position. And now Irene can create absolutely any mixture. And you seem to have a great talent for art. Rin winced as she replied, That's not my real power. But the fact that things have gone this far means that no one will back down. This fight will only end if someone dies. Rin screamed. Just a few more things to add, and the potion is ready. A drop of purple liquid slowly fell into the flask with orange. The potion took on a blue tint, and energy began to swirl around it. The girls watched the reaction with surprise. Suddenly, the liquid turned purple and began to boil. Chloe was surprised, and Rin was scared, shouting, Dodge! At that very second, there was a large and deafening explosion. Two girls, covered in soot, tried to recover from the shock. Smiling, Claudia asked, Rin, maybe we should take a rest? The brunette, offended by the unsuccessful experiment, agreed. The next day, Irene was handed an envelope. Come here, Rin asked, puzzled. Where is it? You came so suddenly. The guy answered. They're organizing a reception in honor of our victory. The brunette bowed her head. And why should I go to the invaders' banquet? Cedric replied. Isn't it too obvious? Someone is bothering me. Not understanding anything, the girl tried to figure out who they were talking about. After the reception, he will receive the title of Count of Lacatane and Duke of Rix. War hero. Irene didn't know who got that nickname. Besides, he is an orphan, but he won all the wars without support. The brunette still had doubts about such an undertaking. A hero, then. Someone comes to mind. Only Constantine. Don't refuse. Think about it. This person might be useful to us. It may be so, but it can also be poisonous. You said you were missing the last piece of the puzzle? I think the remaining piece is this guy, Irene thought. Your words are not without meaning, but... Cedric interrupted her, so try to seduce him. Rin was stunned by this phrase, her eyes wide open. You have a talent for charming and attracting people, the irritated brunette asked. Is that hero a girl? Still haven't corrected that habit? You talk to me normally, and you got me into it. The first time is always hard. The second time is easier. Of course I'm not asking you to mindlessly drag him into this matter. You are good at judging people. Watch him and decide. The girl gave in. Nothing to be done. Good. A war hero, then. Seeing how freely he moves around the battlefield with swords in his hands, you start to thank heaven that he is not an enemy. The sword of the merciless killer pierces enemies and cuts their bodies. Where it passes, there are mountains of bodies left behind, as if people had died in an explosion. If the god of war and victory descended to earth, this is what he would look like. 
Lucas asked in shock. Who hired a novelist as a secretary? Judging by how many words were spoken in his direction, he leaves quite a deep impression of himself. The emperor asked with distrust. Can the report really be trusted? Of course. If you send him to the battlefield, he will definitely bring victory. Your majesty just faced the facts. He is invincible and has two swords. Isn't he an outstanding person? This beautiful stone is too precious to be left to a common hound. True. But perhaps you could hide such a disgusting expression from me? And yet, if you use a person who has nothing, by pretending to show him mercy, Claudia can come straight to me. In the evening, Irene arrived at the bar. The bartender immediately greeted her. He handed her a glass. Help yourself. A compliment from the establishment, Rin said. What a beautiful color. What is the name of this drink? Without removing his sweet smile, he answered, dog hair. This drink allows you to cure a hangover from alcohol with alcohol. This name comes from a proverb about the hair of a dog. I believe that wounds inflicted by man are best healed by other people. This drink suits you, Irene asked again in delight. It's just a gift from the establishment. Seriously, stop talking nonsense. Come to us more often and give strength to Mrs. Martina. She was often bitten by people, and I was hoping you would let her pet you. Suddenly, the girl realized something, looking at the bartender. I renounce my senseless interference. I will support you from the side, so I wish you beautiful love. The dumbfounded boy screamed, That's not the point! Suddenly, a bell was heard. The worker flinched. The bartender bowed politely, saying, Welcome. Surprised, Irene heard a voice. How many years? How many winters? The brunette answered happily, Martina, almost half a year has passed? That's right. I've been waiting for you. I was wondering when you would come yourself. Sorry. To be honest, my supernatural power has completely dried up. We've already moved away from the original content, so I don't know what's popular. How can I appear before Martina without information? Are you still worried about it? If you need anything, come. If you ask the question, I am ready to tell you anything. Okay, I'll definitely do that. Thank you, Martina. I thought for some time about what to present to you. Although it is not exact, I have information that may be useful to you. This time, even the smallest amount will do because I must repay. Because thanks to you, I made a lot of money. Walter, war and victory, warrior of judgment and destruction, murderer, blue-eyed demon. There is no end to the names of this mercenary. He is not even a priest, but people use the word judge in his nickname. From the description, he's a sword master who controls sword energy. The original story is over, and now even such people are coming out. Apart from military records, there is little personal data and character. Based on this information alone, he already seems dangerous. This is not enough. First, you need to prepare for the appointment. I need to look good at the banquet. I'll dress nicer. While sorting through the dresses, Irene suddenly froze, turning her head. She understood what she needed and chose a specific dress. A day later, the long-awaited day of the gala reception arrived. Arriving at the Imperial Palace, Rin heard a call. A beautifully dressed Irene turned around. Who are you? Liam? Sister, who else but me would call you sister? The stunned girl replied, Why are you so big? I told you I was just growing up. Irene's younger brother was reliable and harmless. You've grown so much. Where is my height? Give me back what you borrowed. Just kidding. But more importantly, what's wrong with your eyes, brother? Scratching his cheek, the guy replied, I didn't sleep all night yesterday. They went out into the garden. I shouldn't have called you. I'm sorry. No, it's my fault for acting recklessly. Why did you ask to accompany you? What about Lady Chamberlain? Chloe is busy. And you're having a hard time too, so I decided to invite you over for a little fun. You were already very tired, but you still came. I'm touched. I was just curious to know what kind of person this hero is. Enjoys the carnage, blinded by success, too many rumors. That's why I'm looking forward to his appearance at the reception. The brunette was amazed by his revelations and simply suggested going to the gym. Inside, there were already a lot of people who were fully immersed in the atmosphere. Irene felt uncomfortable. And here I am again in a similar place. Suddenly, someone called out to Rin. She answered, Lady Defolation, what brings you here? I'm surprised you decided to come to such a place. Liam just really wanted to meet the hero from the rumors. Actually, I want to see it with my own eyes, too. They say that his appearance is as if he has overcome the category of people and was gifted by the gods. Not counting his cruel nature. Isn't that the biggest problem? By the way, he's late. Maybe he postponed the reception because he was preparing for the next war. Let's be honest. Would a murderer be interested in banquets? Perhaps he simply knows his place, not forgetting his low status. Irene thought. Ladies are always too honest in their words. Suddenly, a voice announced, The hero has arrived, Mr. Walter. All the ladies of the court froze, looking at the warrior in surprise. A dark-skinned guy with a scar on his face walked forward menacingly. 
Irene caught her breath. She saw a little more than the others. The man was shrouded in a poisonous and dark aura of death. All that was bright about him was his bright blue eyes. Irene couldn't believe her eyes and inner feelings. The name just came out of her mouth, causing the guy to freeze. Felix? The brunette who stopped turned his gaze towards the brown-haired girl. At that moment, the world stopped as they looked at each other. After the reception, Rin and Liam headed to the room. The girl fell onto the bed. The brother, who sat down next to the bed, decided to call out to the brunette. However, Irene was as if in a trance, not paying attention to anything. Then he screamed and Rin jumped. What? What's wrong? Do you know that hero? Although you don't look familiar. But as soon as you saw him, you became somehow strange. The girl plopped down on the bed again. He's not familiar. The guy continued to question. Then what's wrong with you? Looking at his sister, Liam concluded. She had completely lost her mind. You're not feeling well, so I'll go to my room. If anything, you can tell me. I'm really leaving. Oh well. Having grieved over her brother's departure, Rin continued to lie face down. Then she turned over, thinking, I don't understand anything. How can a person change so much in just three and a half years? What is it? Is it magic or demonic power that has changed him so? The one who valued life more than anyone else suddenly became a murderer. The one who brutally ended countless lives in the war. It just can't be, Felix. It just can't be. The brunette immediately imagined Walter's appearance in front of her. She thought, how can these eyes not belong to him? Felix left to protect me and came back to protect me. They said that the reception in honor of the victory would last three days. Upon completion, Walter will receive a title, reward, and land, after which he will return to the war again to do his duty. And as soon as this war of conquest ends, he will serve Lucas, and then it will be the end for us. The second day of the celebration arrived. Irene took a glass of alcohol. I don't have any hard evidence, but I've thought about it many times. And I came to the conclusion that Walter is definitely Felix. Concerned, Liam asked, Sister, what kind of glass is this? A tipsy Irene answered happily, Probably the third. If you lie, can you at least do it sincerely? Why do you get so drunk if you can't handle alcohol? The girl glared at her brother. I've grown up. I'm not the same as before. He looked at the behavior of his drunk relative in bewilderment. Liam then grabbed his sister and dragged her into her room while she struggled unsuccessfully. They entered the room, and the guy immediately laid the girl on the bed. Rin said in high spirits, How soft. Is this heaven? Liam, sweating, was silent for a few seconds, trying to catch his breath. What other heaven? This is hell. You invited me to behave like this at a banquet? What's wrong with you since yesterday? Irene didn't answer, falling asleep. Liam winced at the sound of her snoring. Okay. My sister probably has her own worries, too. He said goodbye to his sister, although she didn't hear him. When the guy left, the brunette began to toss and turn in her sleep. The girl moaned, clearly seeing some kind of unpleasant dream. Suddenly, she jumped up, raising her hand and screaming, It hurts! It felt like someone was piercing my heart. It was a pendant that was painfully embedded in the girl's chest. A gem that will let me know your location. If something happens to you, I won't be able to forgive myself. The girl carefully examined the pendant given to her by Felix. The stone began to shine brightly. Now it is probably no longer effective. The brunette grabbed the stone tightly, raising her hand up. Then she opened her palm, letting him fall freely. With a quiet crack, the dragon stone shattered into pieces. Rin sat silently and looked at the shining fragments of stone. For a few seconds she did not move, waiting for something. Then the girl laughed. As expected, nothing happened. But suddenly someone's foot appeared on the windowsill. Irene looked towards the window in shock, not believing her eyes. Opposite her stood Walter, who had come at the first call of the stone. The guy looked worried and looked at the girl. The brunette slowly walked towards him, confirming her suspicions. Without blinking, afraid that he would disappear, she reached out her hand to him. The man flinched as Irene approached him, but suddenly the girl rushed at the guy, hugging him. Holding him tightly, she smiled and said, I got it. With an awkward movement, Walter also hugged the brunette, after which he slowly leaned back and they flew out of the window. After you left, I followed you diligently and finally caught up. When things were hard, I rested, sometimes wandering and getting lost. If you can't stand being together, I'll follow you anywhere. Angel, since you have returned to me, don't go anywhere now. The man looked away, saying only one word. Come back. It seemed to me that only the eyes were similar, but the voice was the same. She took him by the cheeks, speaking, and the sound of breathing was the same. The girl came closer to his face and whispered his name. The guy waved it off, replying rudely, Don't call me that. Why? Am I boring you? Have I really become hateful? The guy lowered his head and distantly confirmed her fears. Despite his words, Irene grabbed Felix by the chest. Lies! 
because while I was falling, you didn't let me go until the very end. Don't do this to me again. If you do it in the future, you hurt me so much. Do you really want to hurt me? At these words, Felix clenched his jaw, trying to restrain himself. However, this was the last straw. Walter pushed the girl away. Rin fell to the ground as she listened to the man's answer. It wasn't a lie. Irene screamed, You like me, he replied. That never happened. But the brunette decided not to back down. You love me, Felix said in an indifferent tone. I forgot about such feelings. Rin was not satisfied with this answer. She ran up to the guy and hugged him. Blushing, she said, This means that they loved before. With a confident movement, the man wanted to unclasp the girl's hands. But he froze when Rin said, If you push me away again, I'll kiss you. Felix dropped his hands and said, Enough. I don't love you, so go away. If you say so, then you want me to make Walter fall in love with me? The man turned around as Rin spoke. Surely he couldn't help but fall in love. I will try harder. I will give you my soul. Stay close. Suddenly, a loud laugh was heard somewhere nearby. Walter grabbed Rin as she screamed. If anyone sees us! But she didn't have time to finish. The guy dragged her deeper into the trees. Despite the alarm, only two guys walked past them, chatting with each other. There is not a drop of humanity in him, so he does not look like a human being. Exactly. He has this aura about him that makes you not even get close. I'm not sure if this murderer should be allowed into the Imperial Palace. What guarantees are there that he won't lose his mind and cause a stir? He has killed so many people that he no longer sees the value of human life. I don't know for what purpose His Majesty let me into the palace. He also awarded me a title and allowed me to serve. Are things that bad with people? Irene, whose mouth Felix covered with his hand to keep her quiet, could not stand it. She opened her mouth and licked the guy's palm, causing him to shudder. He immediately removed his hand, awkwardly examining his wrist. Irene, meanwhile, smiled awkwardly and innocently. Suddenly she put her hands on his cheek. You know, Fell, they touched foreheads. People are afraid to evaluate the result. But you are a wonderful person who silently protected us. I want to whisper to you every day how wonderful you are. So please tell me you won't leave again. You have become silent. It seems that only extreme measures will help you open your mouth. If you don't answer within ten seconds, I'll have to kiss you. The girl started the countdown. Walter immediately tensed up. Rin continued counting, slowly moving her head closer to Felix. She didn't have time to count to three before the man kissed her first. Their kiss lasted for several seconds, plunging them into memories of separation. Then their lips parted. They felt each other's breath. Suddenly, the guy fell on his back, pulling Irene down on top of him, after which he grabbed her by the shoulders and asked, Why are you doing this? The girl made a guilty face and called out to Felix, but he decided to ask one more question. How did you recognize me? Irene thought. If we hadn't met, maybe I wouldn't have known, but as soon as you passed by, I couldn't help but recognize you. The brunette smiled and extended her hands to her beloved man. Felix swallowed, unsure of what to do. But still, he slowly and hesitantly extended his hand. The next second, he hugged Irene, pressing himself against her body. Closing his eyes, he said, How could I forget you? The girl replied, Now you don't have to forget me. Walter thought for a few seconds. It was already late. Then he closed his eyes and leaned on the brunette's shoulder. The bells rang. The man lowered his arms in Rin's embrace. The girl was surprised by this behavior, but did not let him go, after which she hesitantly called out to the guy, waiting for an answer. However, the guy seemed to have unconsciously fallen asleep. Then he slowly opened his eyes, trying to figure out where he was. The man jumped up, asking, What's going on here? A dumbfounded Irene asked, looking at the guy. Larry? The demon shuddered and asked in response, Irene, why are you here? The brunette immediately recognized who was currently controlling the body. I should be asking you this. Where is Felix? Why did you appear so suddenly? Looking at her face, Laraj asked a question. Are you crying? She wiped away her tears. I'm not crying, so answer quickly. It's just that now is the time to exchange consciousness with him. We decided to divide the time into twelve hours each. Irene suddenly introduced herself to the man as Cinderella. Then you won't just have to explain this to me, will you? Even the demon was scared by such pressure. I'll tell you everything. Calm down. Felix has lost his senses and looks like Laraj's true form. And the true purpose of his life is only love for me. And hatred for that damn trinity sitting in power? After listening to the girl's conclusions and telling her story, the man agreed. And how am I supposed to believe all this? Demon idiot! Laraj tried to justify himself. It's true, I wouldn't lie to you! Rin asked. How many soul parts have you taken for yourself already? The man was in no hurry to answer. Irene decided to hurry him. The guy hesitated and stuttered. A bit too much. Half. 
Where is it a bit too much? You're a pig. The demon made excuses, but he wanted it himself. It's true. Irene decided to calm down. Oh my God, my poor little head. Is there a way to return Felix to his previous state? Do you want me to tell you about it? Rin nodded. Then she added, You yourself said that you can't lie to me. The man sighed. If I die, the angel you knew will return, Irene clarified. The whole thing? The demon confirmed the guess. Then the brunette called out to Walter in an innocent voice. I wish you would die. Could you please die? Then she asked, Why are you crying in Felix's body? The demon was no less surprised. I don't know what came over me. I've never experienced a feeling like this before. Remember how you once asked me not to smile? And did you like it when I decided to name you Larry? The boy nodded. I almost regretted giving you a name, but there must be at least some trace of your existence left in the world. However, you cannot take life from something that does not exist. Soon I will have to kill you, but until then, continue to live. Stars shine brightest just before they disappear, so I hope you shine brighter than anyone else. That way there will be some meaning to your murder. Unable to bear it, Larry threw her to the ground and shouted, Stop it! The girl looked at the trembling hands of the man next to her. Then she touched his shoulder, addressing Felix. With a smile on her face, Irene said, I will definitely save you, so prepare to die, Larry. The demon began to cry again. First, we need to take Larry away from the Imperial Palace. Come to think of it, it was because of Felix that I couldn't tell Liam anything. Morning slowly came, but Irene and Larry did not sleep. While in the girls' room, the demon was surrounded by plush toys. I guess if I buried you in a pile of toys, no one would know. The man replied, Do you think demons have no dignity? Then he blushed and added, They all smell like you. Irene replied, Of course, I sleep with these guys. The guy blushed even more. Do you sleep with these things? Don't forget that if you are discovered, you will have to pay with your life. Larry commented nervously, What a harsh price. Thief of feelings, how to kill you without harming Felix. The demon answered calmly, I won't tell you that, even to you. Too bad. Then can you at least return his feelings? Everything is mixed up. How can I get them back? And anyway, this is the first time I've captured a human body. Rin was surprised. So you haven't done this before? I meant that it was the first time I had captured a body so deeply and for so long. I didn't expect that our feelings would be so assimilated. The soul can be compared to water. To make water dirty, you need to mix it with something. But Felix has so much pure water that I can't mix it all. Did you feel human morality and convictions? Have you formed an opinion about the feelings you trampled on? This assimilation is not enough to change the essence of the demon. Do you react this way to the feeling of love because you are a love demon? The man froze when he heard such words from the girl. He asked Irene in surprise, So you knew? The brunette sadly lowered her head, giving a negative answer. More importantly, pure Felix has turned into dirty water, so dilute it. The bewildered demon replied, Actually, I don't know how but you can't absorb it either, so at least try. Larry chuckled and closed his eyes. I won't move without payment. Irene looked at the peacefully lying demon with puzzlement. Then she asked in a sweet voice, Maybe I should kiss you? Hearing this, the man immediately blushed and asked again. But a second later, Rin calmed down. Although I can't. I have no idea what you were thinking when you did that. You said you did it to survive, but you can live without touching your soul. Did you think that even though I hate you to death, I could endure it? At the same time, a lonely figure stood at the window, watching the birds. Looking down, the man saw a lonely fountain in the middle of the square. When Rin entered the room, Elithia asked, What happened? The brunette smiled and said in a casual voice, Lend me your strength. The man refused. Can't you just think for a second? Without thinking, Elithia answered in a calm tone, I can't. Irene swung the knife. I didn't want to come to this. You won't agree even if I ask you sincerely? The spirit turned around, asking, why do you have the heart again? Chloe herself gave it to me so that I could use you more usefully. The man replied, I'm sorry, but it doesn't affect me anymore. Rin froze, flustered. What? No way! Elithia added. I'm tired of your constant threats. She spoke guiltily. Elithia, look at me! The spirit turned around and said irritably, Don't bother me and go away. He stopped mid-sentence when he saw Rin hand him the chest. Surprised by such an action, the guy asked, What are you planning? Irene's guaranteed 108 ways to win Chloe's heart. After some time, Alethea dove into the mountain of toys, discovering a demon there. Surprised by the find, the spirit grimaced questioningly, looking at Walter. Felix's protruding head stared back silently, saying nothing. The spirit returned to the room, saying, What did I just see? Aren't you overreacting? Personal tastes must be respected. You put it there yourself. What are you even talking about? 
The girl picked up the toys, answering, Okay, sorry, can you make a doll that looks exactly like this man? He will receive a title and go to war, so make the doll indistinguishable from the original. This, of course, is not important, but is this really a person in front of us? Irene laughed awkwardly and replied, Half demon. It will be difficult to recreate the demon exactly, but it is possible in general terms. But his entourage may still notice a catch. I won't vouch for it. There is no environment, so it doesn't matter. But aren't you angry? The spirit sighed, looking away. I've been through this for a long time. Our Ilithia has grown so much! Then I beg you! In general, use all your abilities and recreate it. If he ends up out of reach of my forces, he will last a month at most. He's a killer, so that'll be enough time. Suddenly Walter smiled and said, Half a month will be enough. Then Rin gave the order, Win the war and return safely. The man accepted the instructions, reaching for the toy on his head. However, Ilithia took off the toy, asking, Who is this anyway? Irene answered uncertainly. This is Chloe's older brother. Even the spirit was surprised. So that's why everything has to be kept secret? It's not a secret, just keep quiet for now. I'm not the only one making the decision, so I need to ask Fel what he thinks. Got it. Until Chloe gets back, I'll stay out of it. Elethea began to cast a spell, adding, Afterwards, deal with everything yourself. After all, you are the one who will be able to tell Chloe everything without hurting her. A copy of Walter slowly began to emerge from the tree. Elethea said to Rin, Keep your promise. She agreed. I've finished the base. There's some meticulous work left, so I'll do it myself. The spirit said it could take at least one day. After a while, Walter and Rin were walking down the corridor. Where are we going? The girl answered. To where you can talk to Fell. The guy didn't calm down. What conversation required so many things? The satisfied brunette replied. You don't need to know. Once this one falls asleep, can we talk to Felix alone in peace? The man looked at Irene suspiciously as he carried the box. He was getting more and more worried. I have a bad feeling about this. Twenty minutes later, the man was lying in a bed strewn with rose petals. Suddenly the demon jumped up. Are you going to sleep with him? Actually, no. I just created a pleasant atmosphere for conversation. Where is this a pleasant atmosphere for conversation? Anyone will say that this is a good atmosphere for a physical conversation. If Felix agrees, then nothing is impossible. This is your first time. How are you going to cope with the demon's passion? Rin said. Are you having memory lapses? It was you who ignited Fell's passion, which he controlled and made him leave. You have no right to speak. And wouldn't you be better off if you gave in to temptation, Felix? I've already absorbed half of his soul, so it makes no difference. Irene smiled and said, Really? Then I'm lucky. She touched his shoulder. Can you shut up and lie down quietly? I have a lot to tell you besides this question. I'll ask about Fell's plans, tell him about our plans, and also about how I'll tell my family. Suddenly the guy pushed Rin's hand away. The brunette asked discontentedly, What's wrong again? The man tensed and froze, trying to find the words. Suddenly he looked frightened and declared, He is dangerous. The guy looked at Irene with alarm, repeating, The truth is dangerous. Not understanding anything, she asked again. Are you talking about yourself now? The tense demon answered sternly, I'm not joking at all. Then it's not really dangerous? I told you I could handle it. Walter screamed, This is not something you can stand. This is better than burning in hellfire. Stop worrying about me. It's time to understand that you have no right to say anything. It means speaking with your hand on your heart. She put the demon's hand on her heart. Let's think honestly. Who made Felix's passion so dangerous? After a pause, Walter said, I understand. Let go already. But Irene didn't stop asking. So who did it? Larry answered, his face downcast. I. Rin asked again. The man, sweating, clutched his heart as he answered. It was me. He lowered his head and trembled. Why did I do this? He said that assimilation was not enough, but now he regrets it. Maybe because his regrets are related to love? The demon called out to the girl. She slowly turned in his direction. My chest feels very tight. It feels like it's being torn apart. I feel like I'm burning in hellfire. The man asked fearfully. What is this feeling? The brunette answered. Usually people call it jealousy. It makes me want to grab you and run away, swallowing the remaining soul. If you do this, I will make you experience suffering worse than death. Larry, it's time to take responsibility for your choices, Rin thought. His expression changes so quickly. Then I couldn't hold Felix back, and because of that he lost his moral principles. So even if Felix makes me suffer, I will endure and accept it, Larry asked. Why, Irene answered. Because I love him, and you took away Felix, whom I loved without a trace. So be patient, whether it be suffering or pleasure. The demon asked again. Why? 
to which the girl smiled. Then she took the guy by the chin and answered, Because you love me. The brunette began to slowly remove her hand from his face. She sped up. The guy didn't understand the meaning of her actions. Then the girl patted the pillow, inviting the man to lie down. Irene smiled and asked, Are you ready to take responsibility? For a few seconds, Walter simply looked at her in silence, after which he abruptly turned his head away, not wanting to answer. A minute later, Rin asked a question. How does it feel? Covering himself with a blanket, the demon replied, I feel like I'm in hell. The man tucked his legs under himself and added, It's unbearably sad. Half an hour later, Walter was fast asleep in Rin's bed. Irene stood with her robe in her hands, looking at the man. Standing in her nightgown, she thought, So exciting. When will he wake up? Do it like that? She imagined herself crying, saying, Fell, I missed you so much. Or clear the air by saying this? Wake up, oh my hero. Rin grabbed her head. Her heart felt like it was breaking into pieces. She stopped. There's nothing to be done. I'll choose the last resort. The girl grabbed a bottle of wine standing nearby and began to drink. Having drunk too much, Irene began to cough. Too bitter. Suddenly the girl stopped, feeling someone's gaze on her. Blushing, Irene turned around slowly, knowing what awaited her. Rin froze. Felix, who had come to his senses, looked at her silently. The girl thought, How much did he see? And she asked herself, Shall we continue? She shuddered when the guy said, I thought it was a dream. The man sighed, adding sternly, You still haven't run away. Suddenly Felix closed his eyes, screaming slightly. He touched his face. His eyes stung a little. Was the demon really crying? The brunette laughed, answering the question. It was I who drove him to it. The demon's feelings united with yours, and he fell in love with me. But I cruelly rejected him. Felix grabbed his head and grinned, saying, Love! He stole all feelings except love. However, it seems that he is now able to experience this feeling as well. But why did you reject him? He took my feelings. So I'm more like the old me, and less dangerous. Irene decided to ask carefully. Are you telling the truth? She grabbed his hand. Why do you think so? Let him take your feelings and become similar in appearance. One way or another, he is still a demon, not Felix. Rin asked. Are you sad? Fell answered. I forgot what sadness is. It's just that feeling of loss inside that really irritates me. Rather, I'm scared. It seems as if I've become completely empty. Felix, thank you for being honest with me about this. Then Irene added, I have prepared something for you. She showed the man a bottle of potion. The brunette handed the bottle to Felix. He was surprised. This is the first time I've seen a potion like this, and one of such high quality. Have you continued studying potion making since then? Irene laughed sweetly, answering happily. Of course. Then there was a pause. The man asked, What are you waiting for? With a naive look, the girl asked in response, Won't you praise me? Putting the bottle on the nightstand, Felix said, Should I? Rin fell on his lap and replied, Yes, it is a must! Felix slowly began to reach his hand towards Irene's head. The girl said, Praise me quickly. The guy didn't answer at first. The guy said awkwardly, You're a good boy. The brunette was pleased. However, he was tormented by another question. So what is this potion? Felix, its effect does not last long, and the volume I got was small. But if you drink it, memories and feelings of the moment when you were happy will come flooding back. You told me you were afraid of becoming an empty shell. If you feel that there is nothing left, come to me. Whatever it takes, I will fill you until you are full. The man forced a laugh. You've become reckless. Irene had a different opinion. No, I just became honest. Felix leaned over to Rin, asking, Did you bring the scented oil? And you are really reckless. You decided to get hurt. Irene immediately retorted, But I brought a healing potion. The man blushed, warning in advance. It would hurt. Irene had waited too long for this moment, no matter. Felix added, Even if you cry, I will not back down. However, it is sweeter than shedding tears in complete solitude. Then she asked Felix, Will you drink the potion? I think even if I don't do it, I already know what I'll see. The guy approached the girl, looking her straight in the eyes. Then they closed their eyes at the same time, giving rise to love. Now they couldn't think of anything but each other. The next morning, Felix was sleeping next to Rin, surrounded by empty vials. Waking up from sleep, the man slowly opened his eyes. To the sound of empty bottles, he rose up, rubbing the back of his head. The guy screamed in shock when he saw the bottles. What the hell is this? Taking one of them, he began to examine its contents. This is a highly concentrated restorative potion. Did you drink that much? There were several more bottles lying on the floor. Felix started shaking the girl. Irene, you're not dead, are you? She answered discontentedly. She's not dead, so don't overdo it. How many bottles of potion did you use today? 
Is there any point in counting bottles? The important thing is that I wasn't hurt. Of course you weren't hurt. You drank a healing potion. You don't look well. You see, I told you that you were in danger. I know my own strength better. Shut up. Instead of wasting time on idle talk, take me to the doctor. Felix winced. To the doctor? Does it hurt somewhere? He reached out to the girl. First, I'll lift you up. Apparently, the potion won't heal bones quickly. Even bones broken? Which ones exactly? Rin replied. Don't get carried away. The guy couldn't stand it and screamed. Do you think I'm not worried about you? Demon, do you know the expression, what goes around comes around? I know it's my fault, and I'm really sorry. Let me at least worry. You even know how to apologize. You should apologize to Felix, not me. Without answering, Larry sullenly lowered his head. The girl spoke up again. But I have something to apologize for, too. I'm sorry. My words sounded too cruel then. I thought Fell could only go back to normal if you died. But after meeting him, I had the opportunity to find another way. He doesn't seem to have changed much, but it would be nice to arrange a meeting between him and Chloe. If you help me, I will help you and find a way. You will be able to leave this body and not disappear. Entering the other room, Larry thanked her for such words. Enough about that. What's more interesting? Did you enjoy it? If you want to hear abuse directed at you, just say so. Sorry. It's just that I passed this skill on to him. That's why I asked. What are you, an intimate affairs advisor? I give you top marks. And you got it wrong. I didn't use the potion because I was hurt. Pleased with what he heard, the demon raised his head, smiling. He answered briefly. Then okay. And he went with Rin to the doctor. After some time, Irene examined her bandaged leg. Chloe will go crazy if she sees this. Should I say I fell down the stairs? Larry had a different opinion. Come up with a more reasonable excuse. What if I said that it was dislocated? The demon didn't accept this version either. The brunette sighed sadly. But she used to believe. Don't you think she was just being nice to you? There was a short pause. The couple looked at each other in silence. After waiting a couple of minutes, Irene asked, What are you thinking about? The man replied, I thought that I also want to have my own body. The brunette was surprised by such a sincere answer from the demon. Then she asked, How about a dog? Larry answered in shock. No way. Why? Dogs are so cute. She imagined Larry as a dog. I would feed you, take you for walks, play with you every day, and cherish you. Isn't it great? The girl winked coquettishly at the man. Listening to her speech, the demon blushed deeply and lowered his gaze. Suddenly he cried out, No! I still want to be a man! The body of a young man of about 17 to 20 years old would suit you. This is too young. I'll take the body of a man more handsome than Felix. You want a lot. However, the guy did not finish. Whatever the outcome, I don't want to lose the feeling of how beautiful you are. It was lunchtime. Irene and Larry were sitting in the dining room. Elethea entered and said, Claudia will be here soon. Right at dawn? She said she'd arrive in the evening. If she arrives at dawn, she will come face to face with the demon. Could you please stop pointing your finger at me? I told you when, according to my calculations, she would arrive. She said she would come earlier because she misses you. How could I stop her? But Chloe will destroy this demon. Fell's body cannot be harmed even a little. If she meets the demon first and not Fell, it will shock her. In such a confusing situation, you think slowly and need help. Suddenly the girl blossomed, having come up with something worthwhile. Meanwhile, a tired Chloe entered the living room and sat down on the sofa. Suddenly the aristocrat heard a call in her direction. Irene ran up to her and began to fuss around Claudia. Chloe screamed, Did our Rin miss me that much? I was incredibly lonely because Chloe and I hadn't seen each other for a long time. If I had known this would happen, I would have stayed away. However, I don't think I could stand it. But Irene, why did you invite this to our estate? Cedric replied, This you say? I'm actually an archduke. The guy asked sadly, What did I do to deserve such hatred? Archduke, but you are disturbing our time together. You invited me here, so do something. The emperor's brother glared at the awkwardly smiling Irene. Did you think I wouldn't notice you waiting for the right moment to take Rin away? The brunette spoke guiltily. You shouldn't be so wary of me. I value and respect Irene solely as a life teacher. Do you appreciate and respect? Such feelings can develop into love. I'll repeat myself again. Your grace is completely unsuitable for Rin. Why are you blaming a man who isn't even interested in love? Right, Erica? Don't call me by my name and don't look in Irene's direction. And also correct your hooligan posture. It's unpleasant to look at. So there's no one on my side? Why did you ask me to come? Irene replied awkwardly. Just have lunch with us and go. So you invited me to dinner at dawn. Cedric glared at Rin again. Can't you answer normally? Irina began to mumble something incoherently, trying to answer. If a person is hungry, he may start thinking about lunch already at dawn. What? 
but who would suggest having lunch with someone right at dawn? She is one of those people who thinks about snacks even while eating. Cedric, taken aback, said, Seriously, I can't be here, Erica replied, calmly sipping her tea. Then go away. Rin, you're moving your leg strangely. Does something hurt? The brunette shuddered nervously and answered her, Not at all. You usually prefer dresses above the ankles, and this one resembles a curtain. While Chloe was looking at the dress, Rin screamed, There are people sitting here! A shocked Claudia stared at her friend's leg. The bandaged leg immediately attracted attention. The aristocrat immediately grabbed Rin. What is this? You're hurt! Concerned, Chloe pinned her friend to the couch. How did this happen? Irene replied. I dislocated it. And I thought to myself, so strong. Don't lie to me! How can you dislocate your ankle so badly? If you asked Liam, he would tell you that I fell off the terrace. The spirit enchanter did not calm down. But how did you manage to fall? You tell me that I am an angel without wings, and I became curious if I can fly. Cedric spoke up. Stop talking nonsense and tell it like it is. Suddenly, Chloe glared at the guy. What's this? Did you secretly give Rin some strange assignment? Because she certainly wouldn't go to the appointment alone. I just heard how amazing the hero was, so I asked her to check him out. Claudia asked, Do you mean Walter, the killer? And you dared to allow her to meet such a person? How can you give her dangerous work without telling me? If he took an infinite number of lives, then he is immediately a hero? You yourself said that until you meet a person, you won't know. Despite everything, he did take many lives. Fortunately, after receiving the title, he will return to war again. But what would you do if he fell in love with our Irene? So you hurt yourself at the reception? Wasn't it Walter who did this to your ankle? Cedric lowered his face guiltily, and the brunette began to pull Chloe by the sleeve. If I killed a lot of people, what would you do? After thinking, Claudia answered. So these people were guilty? Rin asked again. What if they were innocent? The aristocrat sighed. I don't blame Walter for the murders. Chloe sat down on the couch. I don't care how many people he killed. I'm just worried that you might get hurt by contacting him. She took the brunette by the hands. For me, Rin is more valuable than anyone else. Like a scarf you gave me, which is more precious to me than anything else. The aristocrat looked at her friend with admiration. I am incredibly grateful to you, but throw away this stupid scarf already. Suddenly, a man entered the room as Rin called out to Chloe. She spoke. I will tell you what I tried to hide. Felix returned. At that moment, Claudia turned her head. The aristocrat's eyes widened and she froze, looking at Walter. But because of the demon's curse, he only regains consciousness at dawn. At this time in the Emperor's palace, I didn't think you had such talent. Building houses of cards is not a talent. Who do you take me for? Smoking a cigar, Lemberg replied. For who you are. He pointed to the fallen maps. You build them to destroy them, don't you? After all, there's nothing more pleasant than destroying something that someone else has built. Lucas replied, You seem very happy when you break something. The joyful duke advised, Try it sometime. Lemberg took the papers. The house of cards is not important now. Leaning on the table, he handed several sheets of paper to the emperor. Lucas grimaced. Don't do that pose. It makes me uncomfortable. The blonde began to look at the documents with photographs. The documents listed Claudia, Irene, Erica, and Felix. Lemberg set fire to the papers. This is falsified information. Do not read. Lucas cried out in shock. It's hot! Explain it in words! The fire reached his hand, and the emperor threw away the sheets due to pain. Then, with a sharp movement, he grabbed the duke by the chest. The blonde screamed in a menacing tone. Were you going to burn my hand? I was just afraid that you would see unwanted information. You will draw the wrong conclusions, so I hastily burned them. Before he could finish speaking, Benjamin received a punch to the face. Lemberg took the blow in silence, tensing, and wiped the smile from his face. Having calmed down, Lucas asked, So the information was falsified? The Duke, returning to his former smile, gave an affirmative answer. You know how much this area is subject to rumors. However, the Salentium did do something very stupid. The Emperor replied, But we have no way to prove it. The Duke smiled slyly. You are right, but for how long? Lucas asked again. How long have you known this? Until now, the head of the Salentium had hidden behind a dark veil. I never saw him in person, because he sent his representatives. But I received information that the current head of the Salentium is a woman. I bought this information as a test and was convinced of some things. Irene Amber has charmed this woman. Salentium is already in Lady Amber's power. So you mean to say that you showed me the information? Which you bought as a test, after which you were going to burn my hand. I thought Lady Amber relied only on the Chamberlain family. Who would have thought that she was weaving ropes from Silencium? This lady is the first person who made me regret my choice. Lucas was getting furious. Are you trying to change the subject now? 
Once you get in touch with her, people start to lose their minds. I'm even very curious. Would it happen to me too? If you clean everything up, I'll forgive you for trying to set me on fire. You show more interest in her than in Claudia. Have your tastes changed? A smart person is much more useful than this furniture. All you can do is talk. What have you really achieved? More importantly, don't you think this Walter is a little weird? Lemberg put his word in. I also noticed one inconsistency. His aura has changed since the last time we met, don't you think? Lucas began to carefully study the war hero from head to toe. The blonde raised his index finger, saying, I don't know. It's your own fault for expecting something from you. Did you put your instincts into laying out the cards? Maybe you're just too sensitive? What's changed? I guess you could say there's less malice in him than there used to be. I had previously felt a vague sense of magic from him, but today I felt nothing. Rather, on the contrary, I wondered whether the person in front of me was alive. The emperor put his hand to his chin, saying, That's how it is. Then he raised his index finger again, saying, I don't know exactly. Irritated, Lemberg and Constantine tried to maintain their composure. You are bothering the emperor, so go away and do your favorite killing. Lately, many young people have been wishing to die. The heroic story of Walter returning to war continued. No one knew that a doll had gone to the battlefield. At this time, Felix returned, transformed into Cinderella, tearfully reunited with his family. Peace reigned in the house again. A week later, Irene decided to drop by the library. Felix, wearing glasses, sat and calmly read a book. Suddenly a girl snuck up on him. What are you doing? The man answered. I'm reading a book. And then suddenly he shook his hand. Hearing a quiet crack, Felix and Irene looked down. The guy tore the page. It seems the paper was too thin. Suddenly, the brunette had an idea. She smiled sweetly. Walking around the sofa, she took the book from the man with a sharp movement after which Rin plopped down on his lap, not removing her smile. Surprised Felix asked, What are you going to do? Irene responded immediately, I'll be turning the pages. Unexpectedly for the girl, the guy began to touch her. Then he became more insistent and lightly bit her ear. Felix said, Sitting in this position is a little dangerous for you. Rin, stunned by his actions, tried to stop the guy. I wonder what happened next. Turn the page. Irene answered nervously, You're not looking at the book! I think you said you wanted to create a soul-splitting potion. This book talks about the fact that the most important thing is time. And in order to personally intervene in the soul, a mediator and holy power are needed. Rin began to leaf through the book, comparing the information given. And really, you know everything, so why read this? The man answered awkwardly. I thought that perhaps I would remember the past. I can't experience the same feelings, but I still remember something. Irene became interested, Felix said different altruistic thoughts. It is difficult to find a way to separate the souls of a demon and a human. Rin pressed the book to her mouth and replied. It was expected. It would be great if, thanks to the holy power, both of you don't disappear when you collide. Felix said, I think I can handle anything with Rin. You are as kind as always. And have you tried the potion I gave you that time? The man replied, If you mean Felix, then yes, I accepted him. The brunette smiled, asking again, And what did you see? The guy thought for a few seconds, trying to find the words. He took a strand of the girl's hair, running his fingers through it. Without answering, he placed Rin's hair on his mouth. He stared at Irene, not letting go of her lock of hair. Then Felix said, I think I caught a glimpse of a cat. Not understanding anything, the brunette asked again about such a strange vision. How did you make that potion? I've never seen it before. I added sunset cherry seeds. But they should be seeds, not roots or leaves. In the language of flowers, this means anticipation, longing, and sadness, Rin said with sadness in her voice. I was constantly thinking about you. Suddenly, Felix said seriously, I want to hug you. The girl shuddered and then smiled. So hug. But the guy ruined all the romance. Then the ribs will crumble. At first, the brunette felt sad, but then she hugged the man herself. Felix turned his head away. At such moments, I don't know what to do. Irene looked at him and smiled slightly, having found a solution. She grabbed his hand. The guy didn't resist. At times like these, you can just say I'm beautiful. The man's eyes widened as he watched the brunette's actions. Then he hugged her back slightly, repeating, Beautiful. A day later, Felix said, I found it in the lab and wanted to throw it away. Rin asked again to clarify, That is, let go. But the man immediately said, Wouldn't it be better to just kill her? He told the stunned girl. Her paw is injured. Even if we treat her, she will still die soon. We will only prolong the suffering. It is better to send her to the next world so that she does not suffer. I respect your choice, but are you sure you won't regret it? You mean if I have feelings, I'll regret it because of the rat? I remember that I always refrained from such things before. Irene waved her hand and showed the bottle. 
Then shall we treat her? Without letting go of the rat, Felix said, She won't live long. Mayflies don't live long either, so why do they exist? You said that we cannot decide who will live and who will not. Although I don't understand, but if I thought so, then when will my feelings return to me? The souls of the countless people I have killed will torment me. While working on the rat, Irene asked, What do you think it will be like? The man thought. I don't know. Probably very painfully. It would be different from a cut. Maybe it would be like a feeling of emptiness in the soul? Rin thought differently. An empty life without feelings, and a life full of feelings and regrets about the past. If you had to make such a choice, what would you choose? Felix replied. Compared to losing feelings, the second is better, even with regrets. You may have nightmares and want to scream and cry. You will probably try to bear all this suffering alone. But if you do that again, I'll scold you very much. The guy asked calmly. How? Irene chuckled and thought. Every time you are in pain, I will reach out to you and hug you tightly. You want to appear strong in front of me, but when you are weak, I will not leave you alone. The surprised man said, then swear as much as you like. The brunette put out her little finger and said sweetly, deal. Without answering, Felix slowly brought his little finger towards her. I think something like this has happened before. Irene smiled innocently, linking their fingers together. Suddenly someone knocked on the door. The brunette shuddered. Since you came back after a long time, I decided to show my concern. Letting you spend time with Rin, but what kind of nonsense is that? Brother, did you brutally kill innocent people? If you are going to war, you must be prepared to kill and be killed. Feeling guilty for killing your enemies is like degrading their honor. The brother I know would go to the families of the dead and offer them comfort and payment. You are not the kind of person who is tossed about with guilt. So I have to sacrifice that trinity and the demon. Irene tried to calm Claudia. You're going to explode. Anyway, Rin is supposed to enjoy my beauty. And not your pampering, so could you please get out of the way? But the man didn't listen. Chloe asked, Why did you block the way? Felix said in a firm voice. Because I want it that way. And thanks to whom do you spend time alone with Irene? I don't remember asking you to help me with this. If so, I will make sure that you cannot touch a hair of her. Felix thought for a second, looking at his angry sister. Then he turned silently, turning his gaze to the brunette. The man demonstratively began to hug the girl and touch her hair. Holding a strand of brown hair to his mouth, he said, Try it. Chloe was shocked by such impudence. Are you nuts? It's annoying. Why did you become so unbearable while we weren't seeing each other? Felix answered lazily. It's noisy and it doesn't even hurt me. Claudia wanted to call Alethea, but Rin tried to calm them down. While the man was rejoicing over his victory, Chloe was yelling at him. A couple of hours later, Cedric and Erica came to visit them. The late and famous Felix Chamberlain became Irene's lover? Chloe and Erica answered at the same time. Well, actually no, but they like each other. So do you have the right to resist? If my brother had remained the same, I would have given my consent in ten years. Cedric asked again, but immediately flinched when he saw Chloe's face. But at this point in time, this is simply unacceptable. If you want to stay with Irene, think about how to get back to your previous state. When you see that animalistic look, it becomes clear that he has no self-control. That's right. It's like he's thinking about how to grab and devour Rin. While the brunette was eating, Cedric doubted the girl's words. In the middle of the conversation, Irene suddenly dropped the cake and froze. That's right. I completely forgot to propose to Felix, the Archduke asked. What are you even talking about? Catch the atmosphere. They turned their attention to the enraged and burning Claudia. We'll think about getting married in 30 years, once my brother becomes his old self. Suddenly, Walter grabbed Cedric's hand, which he had touched Rin with. He twisted his arm, warning him sternly. Don't touch. The stunned blonde screamed. You broke my bones! Cedric turned around angrily. You don't break people's arms? But the guy fell silent, meeting Felix's cold gaze. Irene quickly stopped the man. Fell, you can't do this! He immediately let go of his bruised hand, answering, I understand. The man hugged Irene, who happily praised him. Erica and Chloe were talking. A real savage. Even ten years is not enough for a brother. Calm down. We can't even publicly announce our marriage right now anyway. Suddenly, Rin raised her index finger up, hinting at an idea. Then she thought about it, chuckling and repeating the word publicly. With a sharp movement, she slammed her hand on the table, attracting attention. Irene asked, Maybe we should adjust our plans a little? Sunset was approaching. Conversation was taking place in the Emperor's palace. I didn't think that instilled fear and submission would make people obey so much. Constantine was answered. What a pity that you realize this only now. Lemberg said, After all, you and I, we are birds of a feather. We've fought enough, so it's time to establish a clear system. Some have already set the boundaries. You don't understand, so I'll explain. 
Smoking a cigar, Benjamin smiled slyly as he looked at the emperor. Lucas looked at the duke with distrust, trying to understand what he was planning. Lemberg turned sharply and waved his hand. And here it is. Now do you feel afraid of a lit cigarette? The emperor, unable to contain his rage, cried out. Who is this? Somebody take this damn demon to hell. The duke laughed. People like me aren't particularly welcome even in hell. Your majesty is the model of the emperor I have dreamed of all my life. You always make fun of me. If you don't tell me straight out, I'll kill you. You are sensitive and impulsive. No one knows how you will react. You relaxed when I put out that cigarette, didn't you? This is the basis of the policy of intimidation. If you follow it, people will become obedient. Are you saying that I can control my subjects as I wish? I like it, Lemberg replied. Then continue living like this. Stay capricious, show your cruel nature, and punish all people, regardless of their victory or defeat. How about increasing the amount of entertainment? Organize fencing tournaments, sponsor playwrights and actors. Increase the number of brothels near poor areas. The duke was pleased with the train of thought, killing two birds with one stone. But Lucas noticed something. This would drive everyone crazy. Lemberg waved his hand. Although, of course, sometimes this is not enough. Constantine caught the papers that Benjamin threw to him. Food stamps. Because of the war, the subjects suffer from hunger. The priest replied, Of course, nothing in the world is free. Give them only to those who swear to believe in your God, Deseo. So, are you suggesting to use the oaths of believers? You dreamed that you would become a savior. So what are you unhappy about? Or are you still bound by useless church dogmas? Full stomachs are not enough to become a savior. So to begin with, decorate the temple as majestically and luxuriously as possible. It is instinctive to be easily swayed by the charm of the outer shell. You probably want to ask, where will the money come from? However, it is possible to sell indulgences to believers. I'm talking about a stupid certificate that forgives sins and frees you from hell. Don't be disingenuous and you will deal with everything else as it should be. After all, you are much more capable than I am, so you clutch food stamps. I expect a lot from you, dear Sir Constantine. Now Dukas spoke up. If you're done, then get lost. With an unchanging smile, the duke said goodbye to the emperor. The priest looked at the coupons he was holding in his hand. The next day, Irene went into town for a meeting. Lately, this sick degenerate Benjamin has been showing up. Constantly asks about you, pushing Lady Chamberlain into the background. Rin was surprised. Is he going to use me? Meanwhile, Sir Constantine arrived at the main temple. The man took a deep breath and then exhaled heavily. He was approached. Did you convey my words to his majesty? Are you talking about the end of the war? I told him, but he didn't even listen. I will try to make sure that one day your request reaches him. The church attendant replied, You are doing your best. That is enough. Do you really think I'm giving it my all? Of course not. If you try even harder, I will be grateful. If the temple's power increases, the emperor will begin to listen to your words. The frightened and surprised man asked, What are you talking about? I propose that we work together to increase the power of the temple. I hope you realize the situation and listen to our Lord Deseo. If you want peace, then listen to me carefully. Remember the previous archbishop. You know what happened to him? I don't want to go through this again unnecessarily. Please have mercy. I have misinterpreted the will of our Lord. You seem to be an archbishop, but you cannot understand the will of the Lord. No one will say a word if you die right now. The current archbishop knew this and immediately became agitated. Turning pale and hanging his head, he replied, I'll try. Constantine answered the trembling man briefly. Good. Then let us first prepare to meet our lord. In the imperial palace, Cedric noticed, you have a displeased face, and you seem to have perked up. Has everything been going well in your life lately? The guy asked again in bewilderment, and then shuddered. I just got my hands on a pretty good thing. Would you like to enjoy it? I don't take drugs. More importantly, where did you get them from? The duke gave it to me. He has a knack for finding unusual things. Lucas clicked his tongue in displeasure and said, like this one, like that one. Did Lemberg cause you displeasure? Aren't you on good terms with him? The emperor thought and sighed. Good ones, perhaps. Seeing his reaction to the question, Cedric smiled and chuckled. Then he suddenly jumped up from the sofa, surprising his brother. He silently walked up to the table, took a bottle of wine and two glasses. When you want to erase bad memories, there is nothing better than alcohol. Lucas got angry. Don't walk while you're pouring, you'll spill it. If you don't accept it, I'll really spill it all. You'll take it, right? While clinking glasses, the emperor asked, Why did you pour so much? Cedric smiled. Sorry I didn't check that. The younger brother watched as the emperor slowly drank the wine. The duke proposed opening a circus for his subjects tired of war. But don't you think the duke has become too energetic? The idea is not bad, but it is his hobby to do some business. As long as he doesn't cause problems, 
I'll let him do what he wants. Although it does get on my nerves a little. Taking a sip, Cedric thought, asking, really? Usually people who have been given an order feel a sense of resistance. If your rights are limited, you will still obey from the outside. However, inside you will feel only threat and irritation. Cedric, you must understand this better than anyone. Enjoying everything I have passionately desired since childhood. The emperor put himself in chains by making an unwise choice. He was born a noble tiger, but he can only live like a dog. If he has a feeling of resistance, he will not get rid of it. You can give him a sweet right of choice, which can easily be confused with a flower road. If the trap makes him think that this is an acquired freedom, he will fall for it. There is definitely a crack in the relationship between these three. We need to aim for it. Sometimes I think, how good it is that I took her side. Your Majesty, what do you think about leading the circus? The Emperor watched silently as the wine was spilled. You ended up spilling it! A stunned Cedric begged for forgiveness. This was followed by the loud sound of a glass breaking. Lucas smiled and said, Let the servants clean this up. An interesting matter has come up, so I'll be busy. Cedric, with a stain on his shirt, said goodbye to his older brother. Then a sly grin lit up his face. Everything was going according to plan. There is one young playwright whose reputation is growing day by day. He appeared three months ago, literally out of nowhere. And with each new script, I received more and more positive feedback. He became famous as the chief playwright of the finesse troupe. Even though he was a newbie, his talent was recognized quite quickly, and all the theaters in the capital began to fight to stage his works. He became famous in such a short time that it was an exceptional event. He had sponsors, but without talent he wouldn't have succeeded. Many troops were eager to acquire his talent and abilities. And this incredible man's name is Shane Peer? I never heard of him before, and I've never heard of a Midsummer Night's Feast or an omelet either. Although, it's not surprising, since I haven't visited the theater for a long time. Why are you Oreo? Leave your father and renounce your family name forever. I understand the feelings of Jelena, who asks to renounce this name. In the feast on a midsummer night, there is not a word about feasting. Wouldn't it be better to replace it with sleep? I made suggestions regarding this part too, but Shane said otherwise. That by giving characters unusual names, he preserves the conscience of a playwright. A playwright's conscience? What does that mean? The man couldn't find an answer. Geniuses who live in the world of dreams often say strange things. Besides, an unusual name can attract a lot of attention. It's still impressive. Troop Phineas. Okay, I'll sponsor them. Besides, the omelet was good. The guest immediately beamed and agreed. Lucas rose from his throne. I want to meet this playwright. If such is your majesty's order, I will arrange everything immediately. The emperor was pleased, and therefore let the man go to do this work. Lucas's eyes lit up and he said to himself, and it's pretty funny. He touched the sheets of paper with the plays that were being read and began to wait. An hour passed when a voice announced, Your Majesty, the playwright has arrived. Smiling, Lucas spoke. Well, have you finally arrived? Thank you for inviting me to your noble abode. The gray-haired man with the pigtail said, My name is Mozzarella. The emperor was slightly shocked. Is this a real name? The guy answered. A nickname. I dropped the old regular name. Then let's listen and find out what your skills as a performer are. Thin fingers slowly approached the piano keys. With awkward movements, Irene began to play a melody. A voice was heard. Do you know how to play the piano? The girl became embarrassed, nervously examining her fingers. Then I decided to answer the question with a question. Do you know how? Felix answered with an indifferent look. I studied before. Rin smiled and said, A rather vague answer. I didn't have any particular talent, but I really enjoyed playing. Is there really anything you can't do? The man replied, I had no other talents except magic. I heard you wrote a sonata this time. Everyone praises it very much. Rin was embarrassed. My new stage name is Beethoven. But why don't you use your real name? I think because I still have a bit of conscience left. If I destroy these three, I need to get rid of everything I copied. Like a flame, as if it never existed. Suddenly Rin asked, Why did you like the piano? I guess I felt like I was getting some comfort from touching him. The girl listened attentively, thinking about what she heard. When the guy touched the instrument, he shuddered. Irene touched his hand. Do you need comfort? Felix didn't know if he really needed it now. Lately, due to plans, we haven't been able to see each other properly. It's so lonely at night without you that I feel terribly sad. I think I'm the one who needs comfort right now. Felix froze, trying to correctly interpret Rin's words. He slowly reached out his hand to the embarrassed girl's cheek. Following her hand, he brought his face closer with the desire to kiss her. Irene closed her eye as she felt a gentle kiss on her cheek. Felix pulled back slightly and asked, Should I comfort you? I wasn't talking about that kind of consolation. Although that would have been nice too. The demon will wake up soon, so now is probably not the time. 
The girl patted the chair with her hand, inviting the guy to sit down. They sat in silence for about a minute, looking at the piano keys. Suddenly the man lowered his head and turned to the brunette. If possible, I would like to tear this demon out of myself. Anything is possible. You just need to find a way to safely separate your souls. Even though the demon says he loves me, I will not reciprocate his feelings. However, it takes up half of your body, and I can't avoid it. Sometimes when I'm having a hard time, I say something cruel. Since he is in love with me, this could bring him great pain. Then a soul-tearing weapon. Could I console you even a little? Felix looked at his reflection. I don't know. It's not very pleasant. It is better to make the demon disappear so that he forgets everything and finds peace. Suddenly, the girl saw in him the image of Felix's past. To be honest, I also wasn't pleased to see him cry for my words. When you lose something dear, you feel a sense of loss. They say that sadness is a manifestation of this feeling. Musical instruments are also great for expressing feelings. You said you love the piano. Maybe we can play together? The man spoke. You'll get hurt. Just put your hands down. He placed his hands on top of the girl's hands, adjusting himself to the keys. They began to play a simple melody, increasing the tempo. Their fingers became one, and the melody became more and more complex. The notes were beating out in Felix's head. What kind of composition was this? Irene smiled slightly and replied, Tears and comfort. The music filled the entire room, not allowing other sounds to interfere. Irene played each note carefully, adding tenderness to the composition. Suddenly, Felix's tear fell on one of the keys. He lightly pressed the girl's hand, stopping her play. Then he said, I feel a little heavy, Rin asked. Why? When you do this, I don't know what I should do. The brunette asked again, Does this bother you? He shook his head. His hand shook. Not at all. I'm just confused. Irene replied. Then do only what you want. Suddenly, they both turned their heads and stared out the window. I don't think so. We need to deal with the demon first. The brunette thought for a moment and then said, Then call me Rin. Your words may not always be the solution. Now I feel strange. The girl replied, Really? Then can you say I'm cute? The next morning, the emperor reread the letter several times. It spoke of the impossibility of a meeting and was supported by apologies. Having memorized every word, Lucas angrily clenched the piece of paper. His eyes were bloodshot and he said, How dare he? The emperor turned to Walter's clone. Bring him here now. The warrior only glanced towards the emperor, but did not move from his place. His gaze turned forward again, without any action. Lucas got even angrier, asking, Why are you standing there? Are you deaf? He crumpled the letter and aimed it at Walter. With a quiet rustle, the piece of paper reached the war hero's head. The doll lowered her head, lazily looking at the abandoned lump. Then he heard a short order from the emperor. Pick it up, Lucas seethed. I said pick it up. I was kind to you, because you behaved like an obedient dog. And now you dare to show your teeth? Apparently, it is impossible to hide your origins, right? Suddenly, in a fit of panic, Cedric jumped up, screaming, Right! After which he froze awkwardly. Lucas looked at him. I allow you to do whatever you want, but you don't know when to stop. Don't be angry. I forgot, and then suddenly remembered what I wanted to tell you. Covering his face with his hand, the emperor said, You can tell me later. Cedric did not retreat, but it would be better to do it now. If this all turns out to be useless nonsense, I won't let you get away with it. You won't regret it. I heard about Shane's Pier in the alleys one day. I met a man from the theater there who wanted to enjoy a secret hobby. He revealed that Shane secretly receives huge financial support. If you know who the benefactor is, you will understand Shane's better. So he hides behind his sponsor and ignores me, the Emperor? Whether he is hiding behind it or receiving threats from it, I don't know either. Listening to his brother's story, Lucas calmed down a little. But then he asked the most important question. Who is the sponsor? The performance began towards evening. Two actors performed on stage. A guy watched the performance from the audience through binoculars. Everything is going like clockwork. I would like to delay the meeting as long as possible. But who would have thought that we would meet exactly like this? You harmful degenerate, don't look at me. Look at the performance. Or is it because I'm just incredibly handsome? At the same time, Chloe spoke up. Rin, aren't you too tall? The girl disguised as a guy replied. It's embarrassing to be short. So I thought that if I become completely different from myself, I won't get caught. I made Shane's peer a man so that I could disguise myself as him. And I thought that after this you would be more formal with me. Claudia replied, I really don't like your new look. But inside you are still the same Rin. How should I behave formally with you? Chloe broke the handle of the binoculars. If the crown prince insults you, I will hit him. Irene responded, frightened. We must not forget the essence of our plan. I don't really want this either, so I'll try hard. An hour later. So you are Shane's peer? It's not easy to meet you. 
It is an honor for me to greet the never-setting sun of the Empire. My name is Shane Spear. Please forgive my rudeness. I have had almost no lucky breaks in my life. So I can think about giving back to the people who believed in me. I want to repay Your Majesty's undeserved interest. Did you like the show? You decided to sponsor me. That's why I wanted to show with my skills that I'm worthy of it. Lucas replied with a straight face. Well, we can look. He lies and doesn't blush. He was staring at us the whole time. I watched the performance with great pleasure. The production was wonderful, but the acting and orchestra were top-notch, disguised Rin replied. Glad you liked it. And suddenly she froze. Stop! Chloe, you can't make that face! We must watch our facial expressions. We must not be exposed. They turned away from each other. They needed to look at something else. At that moment, the Emperor looked at them with an indifferent expression. Rin and Chloe decided to make the exact same expression. I enjoyed the show, but I have things to do, so please excuse me. Slightly nervously, Shane Pear replied, Okay, see you later. They watched with the Emperor as Claudia walked away. So you get support from the Chamberlain family? Rubbing her neck, Irene answered awkwardly, Yes, that's right. Do you have anything personal between you other than this? What do you mean, of course not? The Count is just busy, so his daughter came. To look at the troop, what kind of relationship can we talk about? Are you saying that even though you were with Claudia, you weren't interested in her? I don't know why you thought that, but I'm not interested in the opposite sex. I don't think Claudia can be included in the concept of the opposite sex. So does that mean you don't like any girls at all? So he wants to ask me to switch sides? Fraudster. To be more precise, I would like there to be no interest. Since I'm focused on creativity, this will cause inconvenience to my interest. Even now my head is filled with thoughts only about the next performance. The Emperor was shocked by such a statement. What a pervert. Then he smiled. This arrangement was to his advantage. Lucas turned and said, I'll come more often. As the evening wore on, Elithia was left in the Chamberlain estate uneasy. He received another slap on the shoulder. Work spirit. His patience snapped. He angrily grabbed the grass whip. What do you want? If you're bored, ask the maids to play with you. I'm like your niece who pesters you on holidays. Not understanding anything, the spirit began to ask again what she was talking about. Irene sat down on a chair and said, Chloe asked me to keep an eye on you. Suddenly the man began to cast a spell to create a doll. Rin asked excitedly, Are you doing Chloe now? Elithia confirmed. A copy of Claudia began to slowly emerge from the tree. The brunette asked, Isn't the difference in quality too great? Elithia replied, I like it so much, Rin said. I miss Fell. The spirit said, when I'm done, I'll make a replacement doll again, so be patient. The girl beamed and jumped up. Why all of a sudden such concern? He replied, It's not for you. I'm just following Chloe's orders. And even without any supervision, I diligently carry out the contractor's orders. I taught you a secret way to win Chloe's heart, but you don't use it. Ilithia flinched. Rogue. So it was you from the start. Suddenly Irene was called. She jumped. What is it? The maid answered quickly. What? The master is calling you. The brunette decided to quickly get away. It's serious! We need to hurry! The girl headed towards the office to meet him. Hugo Chamberlain turned to Irene gravely. Child. For a few seconds, Irene froze in stupor upon hearing such an address. She cleared her ears. The man said, Did you hear right? Then Rin pinched herself. Hugo added, And it wasn't a dream. Stop it. Then the girl screamed in shock. What did you say? The man asked, Are you trying to act like a child? Rin took a defensive stance. Are you sure you are Mr. Hugo? Exactly. So stop playing the one-man show. The brunette decided to take his temperature. There didn't seem to be a fever. Yes, we need to call a doctor. Hugo flinched in irritation. He shouted. Rin answered. I'm sorry, it was just so unexpected. Over a cup of tea, the girl asked. So why did you call me? The man lowered his head, answering sullenly. I'm worried. An excited Irene looked at Hugo and said, It's noticeable. I have absolutely no idea how to treat my children. The brunette shuddered when she heard the reason for the concern, she thought. He seemed shocked to see Fell, but he still remained calm and was glad of his return. Could it really have been anything other than that? Of course it wasn't easy for him. Sometimes I miss the old Fell, too. I never expected you to tell me about this. He asked in a downcast voice, Who else should I tell this to? I'm sorry, but no one else came to my mind except you. Fell shouldered this burden alone, and when it hurt him the most. My father couldn't be there. He must feel guilty. So do I. You know that winter will soon come to an end, right? The snow has already melted. Flowers will bloom soon. And the long-awaited spring will come. The time will come when the flowers of the vanished winter will bloom. Hugo said philosophically, My son is a blossoming flower. We are welcoming this spring together with Fell. It will not be the same as last year. 
so greet your son as you would a new spring. The man smiled. And you like to choose sensitive words, Irene asked. Can you say that I speak beautifully? Hugo looked at Rin in bewilderment. Are you out of your mind? The brunette pouted. How cruelly you treat the child. Suddenly the girl looked at the father of the family with delight. The man looked at the innocent face with displeasure. You seemed a little cute to me, and I did it involuntarily. Hugo sighed. Well, you've filled your son's empty space. So, you are annoyed that you did not accept expressions of love from your son. He replied, You are a couple made for each other. Move out already. Rin screamed in shock. Why are you driving us away? Hugo answered with a displeased face. I can't stand too.